Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anajar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau. Hey, what's happening here on a Monday in Jacksonville? I'll tell you what's happening. The 53-man roster is being set inside Jags headquarters. That is the big story coming off the final preseason game. Back in Jacksonville this week, and you now it hit me. I won't be on the road for like more than 48 hours until probably December. That's nice. That bum, no, I was going to say, is that bumming you out? No. It doesn't sound like it. No, it doesn't. Um, I like. I don't mind being on the road either, but, man, you don't know, exercise on the road. You eat bad on the road. You drink beer on the road. Sounds like I live my life on the road. It's yeah. <laughs> Sounds like the road's pretty good, actually, doesn't say. it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a those pesky four miles. Let mile me go walks. back to the road. <laughs> Brent Martin, Aaron Schachter, Casey Kurtz. How's the weekend, boys? Man, I had let me tell you, let me tell you how wonderful my wife is. She got a call from her mother on like uh Friday, Thursday, Friday. She's like, uh, hey, I got this company party at a beach club, and I want you and the kids to go. And my wife knows me. She knows uh, it's real hard to get me out to the beach. I grew up by a beach. You look good in a Speedo, man. (laughs) I I can't believe why. You're not wrong. (laughs) I'm not going to fight you on it. (laughs) But it's it's hot outside. It gets sweaty. It's awful. So uh, without even asking me, she just goes, all right, I'm just going to take the kids. We're going to go to the beach. Aaron, you get a day to just hang at the house. And boy, did I. I spent a good 14 hours just lounging around doing legit nothing in that house. (laughs) It was fantastic. It was so glorious. That's that doesn't drive you nuts. Well, I had so much Netflix to catch up on. <laughs> I had a little bit of PUBG I had to play. There was stuff to do, Brent. It wasn't just about laying down. You had to move that, a little bit. That's good. Casey Kurtz just roaming around here looking for something. Can't even get him on the mic. I don't know what he lost. Something fishing show His guys spirits. took something. <laughs> I always say this, by the way, just did a pet peeve. I'm not like a big fan of, hey, how was your weekend, guy? Yeah, okay. To start the show, and I just did it. Well, you are curious. I understand. You wonder, hey, how exciting could Aaron's life possibly be? Yeah, I'm still learning about you, So, and so is everybody else. I did have a date this weekend. A date night and a day by yourself. Well, did so, that all happen together at the yeah, same time? Yeah, so like on the day by itself, <laughs> I'm look, I'm texting with my wife. I'm like, hey, you know, not for nothing. I know I'm supposed to be this uh, this this bad boy of radio. I know you call me that all the time, Brent, <laughs> the bad boy of radio. Yes. I was like, I miss you. I want to see you. I love you. And uh, she goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell my mom. I'm going to take the kids, and we're going to go. And then I get a text a couple of minutes later. She's like, hey, my mom says she'll take the kids for babysitting. Let's figure out where we're going. So immediately, right to the phone, set up two reservations at the uh, fondue spot on the south side. We did that. We were going to go see a movie, but then it's like, you know, that would require us to stay up to like 1030. Yeah, it's Ain't gonna tough. Do it. That's tough. Ain't gonna do it. So we went Mom's home. coming up big this weekend. Oh, though. my God, yes. My goodness. Shout out to Gigi. Bring it. Come By on, the way, lady. don't raise the standards for Casey and I and how we're <laughs> supposed to, like, take our wives out. Well, I'm sitting here. Casey's complaining about not making money. He can babysit my kids. I don't really care who watches them. As long as I got an adult in the house, I can tell the cops I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> and Casey might be just trying. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to try. Maybe you need some practice try. babysitting. You ever babysat before, Casey? There's no way this guy has ever been in charge of children in his entire. Is he even in there? I don't know. Maybe he left already. He's in there. He's yeah. done. There we go. <laughs> he retired. Uh, he's a goner. Uh, who else is a goner for the Jacksonville Jaguars? It sounds like Rudy Ford. It sounds yeah, like Brett, that is a really professional segue you just did. Thank you you look much. at you. You're really learning. Yeah. <laughs> really learning. All right. uh, Laquan Treadwell. Is that a surprise mm. uh, that he's going to not be on the 53-man roster? Trevor's guy, that's his buddy, is, is, uh, he obviously has grown to um, uh, be friendly with him, and I think their wives are friendly, and so it's part of the business. But I, I don't know if I saw Laquan Treadwell a week and a half ago being cut from this football team, and, and maybe that was something that all along it was happening. Uh, but he did some good things for the Jags last year. Obviously a former first-round pick, and... I mean, I don't know if he offers you anything like that nobody can give you in a receiving core, and maybe that's why he's let go. Uh, And who knows? Maybe he'll be on speed dial and be back at some point. But Laquan Treadwell, probably uh, the biggest move yet. Rudy Ford, I think most fans aren't going to pay that much attention to it from from a special team standpoint now. There will be more people lining up to get Rudy Ford than there will be for Laquan Treadwell, believe it or not. Yeah, it makes sense, yeah. uh, Special teams-wise, he was like, he was one of the first signings, uh, him and Agnew, last year for the Urban Buyer Trent Balky era. 
Yeah, and, and, and they played well. Yeah, I was going to say he did not disappoint out there on special. Teams. No, because then he also played safety and came up with some big plays. And Agnew obviously did so on the receiving. End. It did seem like though that the uh, the coaching staff, for whatever reason, didn't really feel like Rudy fit in that secondary this season. Yeah, and there's some, uh, you know, it can be a varying of reports. He's not. He's going to be more special teams if he's playing safety for you. You're probably a little thin, and the Jags are a little thin there. And so uh, I think his value really comes as a special teams guy. He did have a couple of uh, penalties a couple weeks back, and I kind of was like, oh, wait a minute now. And so uh, we'll see when official word comes out. Jacks have until tomorrow at 4 o'clock. I think uh, I anticipate some moves being announced here uh, this afternoon, so we may have some of that. But Treadwell, does that mean Tim Jones makes the team, right? That yeah. makes everybody <laughs> happy. i got to imagine that's making room for Timmy, isn't it? Tim Jones, baby! Hey, there he is. Hey, Casey. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> I feel like we we're just in like a musical, and you just came out like from, like it's a surprise off stage. Appearance. Yeah, it gets the people going. The people in their car right now, like, oh, he is. He did come to work. I will today. say, I speak to a lot of people about this show, and all of them say that it gets them going when you show up out of nowhere. So good job, man. Good job. Yeah, hey, you must be talking to smart people. I don't know. Does uh, Casey, you, you and Amanda, you guys fell in love with Tim Jones this last few weeks, haven't uh, you? Let me tell you something about him, Jones. Uh, <laughs> you get a kick out of that. He's right. it's great. He's he's been good. He's been making plays. Uh, I didn't. I rewatched the game. I couldn't watch it live. I was doing something, but Amanda was watching in the living room, and I was in a different room of the house. And multiple times, she just yelled at the top of her lungs, "Holy something, something that I can't say on the radio." I'm like, "What happened?" She's like, "Tim Jones." I'm Tim like, "Tim Jones." Oh, I like the fact that Amanda's swearing. First of all, I can appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, a bigger oh. Jaguars fan than you too. She's she's massive Jags fan. But so then I come at like halftime. I'm like, "How's it going?" And she's like, "Tim Jones is like making plays." I was like, "Is Chase on in?" She's like, "No." Oh. It's like, "Is Lavisca doing anything?" She's like. Mm. She's like, Tim Jones, though. I was Tim like, Jones. I was like, all right. So I trust Amanda. Yeah, and he was. Uh, Tim Jones has become that favorite guy. Now, listen, we've seen this in Jacksonville before. They've had a lot of uh, luck with the receiver position and uh, kind of like the guy that nobody expected making the team from Keelan Cole to uh, Alan Hearns. Those yeah. guys have been super productive for this team in the past. Tim Jones, could he be that guy? Or is he just a camp guy that really shined? And by the way, all credit to Tim Jones. That's his job is to go out there and earn a spot and make you think about him. And he did. Yeah. And he actually won over the fan base. But there are times, let's just, I'm going to be the, the dose of reality here for okay. you. And this is from the Sunshine and Rainbows guy and the president <laughs> and owner of the club. But I've learned enough. I've been around here 15 years. And sometimes these guys don't translate to the regular season. Sure. He has been very good. He's done everything he's needed to do from practice to games when the lights went on. So good for him. Does he play a role, though, on this team? Is he even needed on this team? Like, does he get any reps? Because there are five guys ahead of him, most likely, that do things different. Now, some would say LaVisca is the sixth guy, potentially, if that's who makes the team. I don't see that. I think LaVisca has a chance to have more of a role on the team, a game-planning role, because of all the things he can do, than Tim Jones, because he's going to be stuck behind Marvin Jones and Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. Uh, but it's a nice story. We'll see what happens uh, just don't get your hopes up too high because the regular season's a different animal. Two follow-ups, Brent. Two follow-ups like a comment. Number one, biggest story out of camp this year, was it Tim Jones? Oh. Talking about him? Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I'm not going there. I, I mean, I believe the biggest... You mean biggest, like, positive yeah, story? Biggest surprise. Biggest yeah, biggest surprise. Yeah, well, I still am baffled by the fact that this team has so much trouble at the kicker position, five of them in a month. Um, I think the biggest stories are things like wow, Trayvon Walker looks really good, and you picked him number one overall. Uh, but, yeah, from a from an underdog to the rise of, a, you know, what he did in a month's time, uh, I think you're on to something. I still think a guy like Israel Hantwine, number 93, has been really good for them. And I wonder if he makes this team. I think he almost should make this team. He's a nice story, too, if he does. But I'd give you that. Tim Jones, nobody's won the fan base over like Tim Jones. For sure. All right, second follow-up, Brent. Second follow-up, need a comment Sorry, that here. was a long answer. That's okay. That's what we're here for, bud. Second follow-up is this. We have three this. hours. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we got a lot of time to kill. True. I understand that Tim Jones might be down at the bottom of the depth chart should he make the final 53. But isn't there something to be said for what he can provide out there down the sideline that maybe a lot of these other receivers that are above him on the depth chart can't. So when Dougie likes to go either four wide or even five wide, you know, who knows what he's going to throw out there, two tight ends and three wide, whatever it'll be, will Tim also be out there on the sideline stretching that field? 
I if he makes the roster. Yeah, I, I don't think you so. You don't see it. Yeah, I just don't. I, I think for – that's why I'm trying to weather it a little – people's excitement a mm-hmm. little bit because – Because they definitely are clamoring for it now. Yeah, I know. they, I, And that's okay, and that's cool. Again, he that's he did his job, but – I, no, I don't. I see Marvin Jones and Zay Jones and Christian Jones, uh, Christian Jones, Christian Kirk. And I see Evan Ingram. And I know he's playing the tight end, but he's kind of like a receiver. Remember that. I see Jamal Agnew and wrinkle plays and Lavis- LaVisca Chenault and wrinkle plays. And then I see Tim Jones, which means uh, let's knock on wood, but somebody's going to have to get hurt probably for Tim Jones to make an impact in the regular season. Right. I think. Uh, but did he do enough? And is he doing enough in practice to say, hey, put him in and see what happens? I mean, maybe. I, I just don't see it. Hey, listen, the over-under snaps of Tim Jones in a game. Uh, in fact, I think he'll probably be, he has the potential to be an inactive guy on game day. Yeah. But you also don't want to lose him. You like what you saw. So there's a lot of that going on. Remember, if the Jags cut a guy, he goes through waivers. And they have a good feel of what teams would be interested in. And so if they put Tim Jones on waivers, they boom, somebody picks him up like Alan Lazard and... You got great. Now, Alan Lazard came off the practice squad, all those things. So I get it. But you get the idea of it. They don't want to lose a potential young player that they think could be something. Sure. And just think of it from a long-term position if you're bulky and Peterson. I don't even know if they're thinking about this, but Marvin Jones, this is probably his last year. Or or, or close to it, yeah. Well, well, it's last year in Jacksonville. It's a two-year contract. Yeah, the contract so is done. he's probably done in Jacksonville after this. And so... Maybe this is grooming the next Marvin Jones with Tim Jones or potentially has that in play. I don't know. I also think we shouldn't get over the moon about Tim Jones and his impact in the regular season. I think he's a fantastic story. He's what camp's all about. He's what these preseason games are all about. He probably cemented a spot on the roster in that last preseason game where everybody calls it boring. Yeah. And he went out and had three catches for 103 yards. Big game. Casey, I got to tell you, man, if Tim Jones makes the roster, we got to put you to work and produce us a Mike Jones-inspired all Jones wide receiver package bed. Sure. And that way, when they run the all Jones package, we can celebrate in style. Yeah, I work on the all Jones package. By the way, on the uh, Tim Jones scenario, I don't necessarily expect him, if he makes the team, to, like, be out there, like you're saying. I just want him to be on the team. I think he earned it. I'm sure there's – I'm not sure, like, how that fully works. Like, with his contract, he's got to get a bump if he makes a team. I want him to get his bump. I want him to get his cash money. Oh, yeah. And I want him to have an opportunity if he gets it. I don't think he's going to, like, start or anything, to your point. So I'm not on that part of it. I think he's performed well. I think he deserves a spot, and I hope he's on the team. Listen, uh, game checks are big deals. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, that's no joke anytime you get a game check. So to be on that active roster is a big deal. Uh, That 53 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, more so than the practice squad. Per se. All right. Uh, the other part of this, guys, is LaVisca Chenault. Uh, LaVisca is, seems like the really the most polarizing guy we've got here in Jacksonville right now in the fan base. Got to be. At least the vocal fan base. And I've been a defender of this guy. Listen, I've always, I, I, I hammered him last year. I thought he was so disappointing. So that's where I came from. I Last year, I really thought if you've just tuned in to Brent Martineau for the first time in a year, Shame on you, <laughs> and I'm sorry for whatever I did. But I said he was the most disappointing player last year on this football team. I really thought so coming off that rookie year. I also think there's something there. And not a, I've talked to a lot of people over these last couple of weeks, and I'm having a hard time getting people on board with that. But I do think there's something there. He's a young player. He's a second-round pick. You can do different things with him. It's not just go run a route. You can have fun with him. I think offensive coordinators like that. I think offensive minds like that. And he was hampered by a hamstring injury a lot of camp, too. And so he told me Saturday after the game, he's like, that was hard, man. He's like, it was harder than I would even imagine with that hamstring. So where are you guys on LaVisca? It it looks like they're going to keep him. They could be trying to trade him, certainly, but – if he's on this roster, do you like it or not? Yeah, I definitely, if, if I had a guess, obviously I don't know what's going on behind closed doors, but I would just assume they're trying to work a trade there. I don't think they, they, they have a place for him on this team or in that offense. I don't think they believe in him. I think that was shown this preseason. He had limited opportunities to show improve out there, and he didn't necessarily ring that bell very loudly. Uh, I understand keeping him. You certainly have the flexibility. You have the time. You're not in a rush to throw him off the team. you got another year to look at it, but... Again, you got guys like Tim Jones knocking on the door behind him. 
Casey, it makes no sense from a business standpoint just to let him walk. I mean, he's got two years left on his contract. He's pretty inexpensive. You already did invest, and I know it wasn't these guys that invested, but the other part of this for me, Casey, is, listen, Jamal Agnew has been a heck of a surprise. He got mm -hmm. him as a return guy. He can be a wrinkle guy, and he was, and he did a lot of good things last year. But he doesn't have, like, a long career of doing that. Like, there's not a ton of evidence that he's going to be an impact I mean, you drafted this guy in the second round to be an impact player on the bingo card that I made. It, you, I mean, you got to keep LaVisca around and see what – you got to make sure you don't have what you think you have. Shout out to everybody on the stream that just watched me eat my last bite of sandwich as you started bringing me into the conversation. <laughs> so I swallowed it pretty much whole and then took a drink. Well, Appreciate not only that. that, but I stretched nicely for you, and I can't even see you. Did I just, you know I was chewing? Just, no, no, I had no idea. Go to blind. incredible. You're, you're really good at this job. Um, <laughs> personally – I agree with you. I would not cut him because now, and granted, I'm not great at math, but you cut a receiver, and we thought it was going to be two of the three, Treadwell, LaVisca, and Tim Jones. We thought two of them would make it, I think. At least I thought that way. So it feels like you don't need to cut LaVisca unless they're keeping, obviously, an extra tight end or somebody in another position that I'm just not thinking about. So where I'm coming from is you don't need to cut him from a number standpoint, but I would not cut the guy because there's so many – like he he's gonna get he's the first claim he'll get he'll be the first player claimed in my money if he's cut and if he ends up at a place like Green Bay if he ends up at a place like Kansas City you know we don't need that so if those guys want him that bad you trade for him that's one thing but like we I, I wouldn't cut him you know you said something there that's really interesting like I don't play scared right scared money don't make money isn't that what they say yep so but there are times where there are guys on the Jags roster. And I'm like, don't do it. Don't give up on them because I'm afraid what they might look like in another uniform. And I think you're right. I think LaVisca Chenault, who's still a young guy, uh, maybe there's some maturity things even there, learning to be a pro, battling off last year with didn't like the urban fit, had a bad year, had the hamstring going on. But I do think there's something there in that guy. And your job is to try to get it out of him. If he goes to the Rams and plays for Sean McVay, if he goes to the Niners and plays for Kyle Shanahan, if he goes to Bengals and plays for Zach Taylor, if he goes to Tampa and plays with Tom Brady, if he goes to Indianapolis and plays for Frank Reich and Matt Ryan. That would I, suck. You know, like if he goes to Green Bay, to your point, like what's he look like? And I wonder that if he goes to Baltimore and plays with Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson, like I don't, I don't like the sound of that. If Tim no. Jones goes to one of those places, I'm well, like, don't get crazy. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, don't get I mean, crazy. I am. I, I, but if Today. LaVisca goes to those places, I'm like, oh, I feel like they're going to make him into something they couldn't do here. And, I, and you're going to regret it. Like, I get a team thinking that way when it comes to within their own conference. But I think if you're looking at a guy going, I'm not sure this guy makes a 53-man roster with us. And then you're scared if he's going to go to another roster. It doesn't, it doesn't compute for me. Well, you can't play scared if you're the coach. Listen, this is Brent talking, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm not signing checks, and I'm not making these key decisions. Not in my check. <laughs> Actually, it did sign a few years. Yeah, he did. And, uh, but, like, LaVisca out of Treadwell and Jones puts those thoughts in my mind. Treadwell doesn't as much. Jones doesn't as much. And the one thing I would say if I'm them down there in the building is what can we trust LaVisca? And I think that's a real question to ask because you don't want anybody on your team in any business or anything that you don't know if, if you have to ask that question. You want to be able to say, yeah, unequivocally, yeah, we trust yeah. this guy, boom, go exactly. do that. And I think he has shown some things that would make him a little bit untrustworthy. Uh, so he's got to earn that. He's got to go get that. Is this a wake-up moment for him? But I'd rather him wake up on this roster than somebody else's roster tomorrow morning. And unless you get something for him, unless you were to get something, that's fair. And uh, if that were to happen, what makes you feel better about Visca getting traded? What, what's that pick look like a third, a fourth? Well, yeah, probably wouldn't be that a high. Sixth? I mean, even like a fifth round pick or something. Yeah. Uh, sixth round and seventh round picks don't do a whole hell of a lot for me. I'm not seventh round sixth, picks really yeah. don't do a whole lot for me uh, because I feel like it's a throwaway pick. Yeah. And sixth round, maybe I guess you got something, uh, but, I mean, the Jags got six-round pick for Blaine Gabbert. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'd want more for LaVisca Chenault. Fifth-round pick, I think you really can find some players. 
I, I feel better about that. But they're not getting a third or fourth for him. I'm just saying a fifth round pick wouldn't make me feel better if I was scared to see him on the Colts. The Colts are interesting. I'm glad you said that because they got nothing at wide receiver. They got oh, Pittman. They got your man. Nothing. They got Pittman. Well, yeah. But I wonder, like, they're a team that's played LaVisca four times now. And, like, you feel like if there's teams that have good scouting on it, it would come from the division. Yeah. I wonder how they feel. Yeah. And have a kind of feel of it because they need wide receivers. Well, there's one or two other things I really think you had to keep an eye on. What I'd be doing if I was Doug Peterson, and probably they have, and I'm sure they have, is go back to what he did his rookie year. Like, why was he successful that rookie year? And he was. He had a very nice rookie year. That was a good start. Uh, and – then it was a disaster last year. So how do you get back to that form? Can you find that in him? The other thing I would say about LaVisca Chenault is he's not a great preseason player in terms of showcasing for other teams or your team. And here's what I mean by that. I think LaVisca is a guy you game plan for. Like on offense, you say, hey, if we get to second and four, we're going to put LaVisca in the backfield. And we're going to see if we can match him up. Well, you don't do that in the preseason because you don't throw wrinkles in like that in the preseason. And so I wonder what Doug Peterson has in his mind, what Press Taylor ha has in his mind about the potential use of LaVisca Chenault in the situational offense. That even Jamal Agnew, by the way, doesn't give you. Agnew gives you speed at that spot in those wrinkles. LaVisca Chenault gives you physical presence in those wrinkles. And there could be a different for, difference for how they see that being played out. Uh, so that's one other reason why I say, hey, wait a minute. Hold the phone on LaVisca Chanel. I know a lot of fans are off the, the wagon, uh, but he has a chance, I still think, to earn them back uh, here in 2022. All right, we'll talk more about the Jaguars roster. What else is going on this weekend around the NFL? You know, I did have this thought, not just in Jacksonville. Was there a player or team that you were like, wow, what a preseason? And now I feel this about them. I'm probably more relevant to a team. I think it's hard to be just one player and shine. <laughs> Your Jets quarterback. <laughs> Joe Flacco? No. Uh, oh, Mike I was going to say Joe Flacco. No, the other guy, the last guy in. Who's the guy that won the game oh, for? Oh, this guy's st uh, st uh, I forget. Nobody Ste has any. Stebler or something? Stebler, Stebler, yeah. Who the hell is that guy? Yeah, exactly, off the street. But he's like a legend yeah, now in New York. A lot of Jets fans want him on the team. I guess he was awesome, White. like the oh, whole no, game. Mike White was good the other day. I know. He's yeah, good that's not what I'm talking there. about. You should go see this guy, like the way they reacted around this guy. And so there They're are fun Jets fans. Exactly. They're not that intelligent. <laughs> yes. No, I'm with you on that one, Casey. There are fun stories like that. But what like what team has caught your attention? Wait, maybe now. And the Jags could be on that list for some others around the NFL based on the way their defense played in a couple of games. We'll be back on ESPN 690. Happy Monday, everybody. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Partly sunny skies, warm temps near 90 today. We'll see midday and afternoon storms gradually shift west of I-95 through the afternoon. A few showers linger tonight, but mainly inland. Partly cloudy, lows in the mid-70s. And then wet weather continues Tuesday. Partly cloudy with scattered showers and storms. So keep that umbrella close by. Have a great week out there. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sima. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where right now you can get five years zero interest financing with nothing down. Do you know a child who is deaf, hard of hearing, blind, or visually impaired? The Florida School for the Deaf and Blind in St. Augustine is a fully accredited, tuition-free state public school that gives children an edge for a lifetime of success. FSDB is nationally recognized for its educational services designed for students' unique communication and accessibility needs. Eligible pre-K and kindergarten through 12th grade students benefit from small class sizes, advanced technology, and various recreation, extracurricular, and performing arts activities. Transportation and boarding services are free to any eligible deaf or blind student kindergarten through high school, no matter where the student lives in Florida. My name is Trent Ferguson, and I'm a proud graduate of this wonderful school. This place changes lives. To learn more information or to apply for enrollment, call 800-344-3737 or log on to www.fsdbk12.org. Hope you had an awesome summer. I certainly did. We're traveling all over the place trying to play some golf as well and got the exercise in. And 
Oh, the body can feel it sometimes. Summer's over, but that joint pain is still there. Time to do something about it, everybody. It's Brent Martin. I want you to call QC Kinetics right now. You've put it off long enough. It's time to get real lasting relief from chronic pain in your knees and back and shoulders and your hips. QC Kinetics can get you moving again with cutting-edge regenerative treatments, no drugs, no downtime, and no surgery. Lots of people here have done this, and they're living life to the fullest pain-free. Don't assume the old ways of dealing with joint pain are the only ways. Call QC Kinetics today. Stop putting it off. Call now for a free consultation, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. QC Kinetics in Mandarin and in Ponte Vedra, 904-274-5522. Regenerative medicine uses highly concentrated healing properties from your own body to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. Experience the excitement of our card games at Beth Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Whether you're a first-timer or an experienced pro, Best Bet's card games offer winning times for all. Best Bet proudly offers easy-to-learn card games like One Card Poker, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, Pie Gal, DJ Wild Stud Poker, and more. And our knowledgeable, friendly staff are here to help you have the best time. You must be 18 years or older to play at Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Learn more at bestbetjax.com. Not 100, not 200, not even 300. I'm talking 400 pre-owned on the lot, ready to test drive at Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned. All makes, all models, all waiting for you to test drive and take home today. Plus, Arlington's 30-day exchange program comes with your purchase. That's 30 days to love your purchase or exchange it. Your next great ride is waiting for you at Arlington Toyota Pre-Owned. Shop in person, 10939 Atlanta Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com today. Today. Sometimes the mortgage process can be a tricky one, a dead end for some. Not with Carrington Mortgage Services. They have a team that will find a solution for you. That's what they do. That's what they are experts in, finding loan solutions for unconventional borrowers. If you're self-employed or a freelancer, if you have low credit scores, if you're an investor looking to use cash flow to qualify, Carrington Mortgage Services will find a loan for you. CarringtonMortgage.com. Carrington Mortgage Services, LLC, NMLS ID number 2600, equal housing lender. Have you ever noticed that when the afternoon light hits your floors, you can see everything, including dust? So much dust. And that floor dust gets kicked up into the air, compromising the quality of air you and your family breathe. Eesh. Swiffer Heavy Duty Sweeper is the fast and easy way to clean your floors with ultra-thick pads that trap and lock dust before it gets in the air. Just a couple minutes a day. And dust is gone. Swiffer Heavy Duty Sweeper. <sighs> Proud partner of the American Lung Association. I got Park Hill and West Valley covered on Tuesday. At Marita's pool service, the current staffing plan doesn't hold water. Three more neighborhood pools on the same day. She needs more pool technicians to dive into work head first. That's awesome, but uh, now we're shorthanded. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Progressive Snapshot can save you money based on how you drive and how much you drive. So the safer you drive, the more money you could save. Now, if you didn't hear that because you were yelling at another car while driving, let me say it again. You need to calm down. Yelling is just making everyone as stressed out as you are and letting them all know that you definitely aren't trying to save with Progressive Snapshot. <clears throat> and if you did hear it the first time because you weren't yelling at another car, <laughs> nice work. You'd love Snapshot from Progressive because it rewards safe drivers. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California and North Carolina or from all agents. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's true when your business is growing fast and even more true when there's a lot of uncertainty. Inflation is running rampant, supply chains are clogged, and the labor market is tight. What does that mean for margins? But not every business is in the dark. Over 31,000 businesses know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of financials, planning, budgeting, and of course, inventory. So you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place. In 2022, profit is the new growth. So NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your manual business processes, and see where to save money. Know your numbers, know your business, and get to know how NetSuite can be the source of truth for your entire company. NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com play. 
netsuite.com slash play. Hey, it's Brett Morton from Action Sports Shacks. Did you know you can watch our radio show? Yeah, video of a radio show. Just search ESPN 690 Jacks on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, or follow me on Twitter at Brent A.S. Jacks. Watch the show live weekdays from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. or listen on ESPN 690. I, you know, I feel good. I feel good about the starters. Uh, you know, the way they've played the last couple of weeks and and, and really have dominated when they were in there. Um, you know, and these guys today, you know, had chances to, to really solidify some of the, the backup spots that we're looking for. Um, and, and really trying to find some special teams guys that are willing to step up and play special teams. And, and, and that's what these games are all about, is to see who, uh, who's willing to embrace that. But, but overall, um, I feel good about the starters, where they are, um, and, and how they are you know, focused and, and ready to get this thing going. That is Doug Peterson in what we call the news conference, but it was myself and John Osher. No way. <laughs> get them, Brent. Do what you got to do. Expose. Nah, listen, well, you I, just did expose, actually. I did a little bit. Well, like, here's the thing. In our <laughs> industry, spark. right, we got to kind of, you got to kind of puff your chest out. Puff it. When you're like the only ones doing it. It's it. the nature of the business. <laughs> yep. But I don't really spend a lot of time doing that. It's not a lot of the other guys' fault. It's more the companies and the dollar, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, so situational. It's I don't really put it on the other people in town. But it is. It was pretty amazing. We were talking about this a little bit. It's pretty wild, and and the others would admit this too. And it's not they like it. They would have liked to be there, but just the way the industry is gone is sometimes you don't go to events. And I mean, this game, they nobody else in Jacksonville is at this game other than us. Look, we just and, had... And I will say this. Now, we were doing the broadcast, so people were like, well, you had to be there, Brent. You're on the side. No, we would have gone anyway. I mean, yeah, we, we, I yeah. think we have made it pretty clear over the years that we go to all the games. Yeah, there's a commitment there. And, yeah, yeah and, we so, do. and so thankful for that. But, I mean, nobody else was there other than Osher and Jaguars.com. And, and, Unbelievable. I mean, so it's just a showcase is where the industry has gone at times that people aren't going to an NFL game. I think it's even more extreme than that. The teams themselves, you just saw the Portland Trailblazers announce before yes. they pulled it back. That oh, did they pull it back? They did. Their play-by-play -play group originally, the guys calling the game, were going to call road games from home and just watching a TV, which I guess technically you can do, but I got to imagine – it's a way worse broadcast or experience. Well, and then the team finally rescinded and said, no, we're going to let these guys travel now. Just ask uh, Scott and Matt from the Shrimp. They had to call a lot of the away games last season off a monitor, and it was difficult. Huh. That's actually behind-the-scenes information. You probably didn't know that. Oh, until boy. Right now. Sorry, guys. Here's the thing. It, I, I'm like, I'm a, a I try to be as much as I can a champion for the industry, not just like our place. They make it hard for you, Brent. No, but like you, you probably saw me yesterday. <laughs> I think consultants like, hey, if I could take a shot at some of the consultants, man, I'll do it. I was watching the national news yesterday. They did three straight sports stories. Those same damn consultants that helped with the national news tried to eliminate like local sports and TV for oh, like yeah. two decades. Still doing All it, right? trying, and they're still trying. And and then it's these like these companies that own. TV stations, radio stations. You're talking the mega conglomerate. Yeah, companies. like yeah. and 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 newspapers or whatever else. People that would go cover these games. The NFL is like keeping you fruitful. Yeah. The NFL. It used to be. What, you, you've been around this for a long time, right? It was. You call uh, me old. That's okay. I got it. No, you but you old, know, bro. you know the industry in terms of sales, like car companies, and, sure, uh, lawyers and politicians. Yeah, these are the stalwarts. Right? Yeah, these I mean, are the that's, pillars of your advertising. Sure. Well, the NFL is like a pillar yeah the nfl drives ratings yeah I mean, it's one of the only sports that still drives ratings. it really i mean I, I think you can find your niches in a lot of different areas but the nfl and college football too now well, is you a part have, of it you have games that drive ratings the nfl just in general oh, drives, drives conversation oh, and everything man, else it, yeah and so it's like come on man send i mean you gotta you you can't cut you don't want to cut back on nfl coverage no. I wouldn't think. In no. fact, many people have enhanced it. I mean, I would think we have more people covering the NFL than ever has covered the NFL. But this is the other side of the industry that becomes a problem, right? They think it, sometimes some of the companies think enhancing the coverage means farming or vending out more of that coverage. Yeah. And then what you have is the same coverage everywhere by the one person. And see, sometimes I put my, I put my hat on th this and kind of champion it a little bit. And I'm, I'm, I love the inside the business stuff and see where it goes and how far it's come because I've been paying attention to it since I feel like I was 10 or 12 years old. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, you know what? Maybe nobody lost anything. Saturday. Yeah. John Osher and I were there. 
We covered it for the fans that wanted to see it. You got to see it. Maybe we didn't lose anything. I mean, that's what these companies are saying, right? The competitor is like, well, did our ratings go down? Did our sales go down? Okay. I don't know. Did no anybody one's gonna watch the other this? stations this weekend or yeah. not? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, maybe they don't lose as much as I think, or maybe the fan doesn't care as much. But I would say this, like, we got a, as many interviews as we could in the locker room, but we didn't get everybody we could have got. Yeah. So if you have another outlet there, maybe they're getting a couple other people and the fan gets to hear from another guy or whatever. Like, well, we there's no to... doubt a benefit to the fans. Yeah, and that's, well, and that's what we're here for in, in a lot of ways. Well, a comp some companies aren't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a me. I'm yeah, talking yeah. from my vantage point, sure, right? Sure, sure. I mean, so uh, it is pretty wild. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a dangerous thing because also if something major happens, well, then we're the only one. Then we're really bragging. That well, we're this the is this there. the situation <laughs> right. in the country right now, right? You got these local newsrooms closing right and left, and everyone's getting all of their coverage from these national outlets who, by the way, used to lean on the local outlets to fill them in, and that's all going away. So you get a what lot a of world. the same coverage from different outlets. It's not just a sports thing. I think it's everywhere. Though. Yeah, so just so you know, I'm not like – I'm not bad-mouthing other stations in town or anything like that. It's more it just – It kind of feels like you're bad-mouthing no, other get them. No, no, well, I'm not bad-mouthing the people. I okay. think the people would want to be there. <laughs> okay. All right, the, like our media brethren that we see every day. Fair enough. But I do think like maybe it's management or maybe it's uh, company-wide stuff. It's bad like you got to commit to – yeah, man, you got to commit to this stuff. You can't cover, commit to spending a couple hundred bucks to go cover an NFL game. What are you doing? I mean, man? why are you even in the business? That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what are we doing? What are we what doing? What are we doing? So there we go. As my Puff little soapbox. Chest. We were there. Then we were down in Daytona. By the way, that costs nothing to go to Daytona. Fun time. You know, speak for yourself. Somebody paid for gas. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's gas. It's gas in a parking spot. <laughs> there you go. Nice job, Stuart Weber. Hi, baby. Yeah, Stewie. <laughs> what happened so we there? A, we had a big week on Action Sports Checks. So I guess I am bragging about it now. <laughs> I've got to the point where I am bragging Brandon, about stop it. Brandon, bragging Apologies. in the business. They call it proof of performance. That's right, proof of performance. <laughs> Speaking of performance, Casey, you know, this was, I was I told you I said I was thinking of you. This is how I was thinking of you. And then you told me you didn't really watch the game the other day. But so I'm on the sideline for, for the last preseason broadcast. Did you say my name? No, I did say your name last night on Sunday primetime, though. Thank so you. If you're watching. Um, and, and, I love it. Still, no, <laughs> no extra followers, though. Get the Twitter handle in the next time. Come on. You got to give them the plug. It's like, it's, that's our, doesn't matter what's in your paycheck anymore as long as you got 15 likes. Well, you know? I don't have either. Look, I don't Harper. have either. Okay. Clay Harper told you, man, you can make a living that way. You can. But anyway, I was thinking of you. I'm like, man, Casey's probably watching this game right now with Amanda. Because uh, I think I saw Amanda tweeting a little bit. He he's like watching right. Brent like on the sideline. I'm popping up like every quarter because we did more interviews. He's like, he must be so sick of Brent. That's what I actually <laughs> thought. Like <laughs> watching this game, like throwing stuff at the TV. I, you know, it's true. <laughs> it, you know, it is a little bit true. Uh, I will say when you uh, when you popped on with Marvin Jones, I was like, I, I let out an audible sigh. I was like, oh, uh. <laughs> you didn't want to see Marvin Jones? No, I didn't want to see you. Or you, you didn't want to see me? <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the number one complaint we got during the broadcasts. What's that? Like we used too much to, Brent? too many political ads. No, no, too no. Too much Brent. We used to get we used to get a ton. You know, we we just way back. I'm talking way back. We were not as button not nearly buttoned up and not as good. And so we had some moments in the broadcasts. And so you'd get some emails and feedback, you know, during some of the broadcasts and you'd be like, Oh, great. What do we do wrong? Like, right. cause you know, when you're in the broadcast, you have no idea. I can't sure, see it all sure. what's going on, but um, well, those have really died. We've done a good job with the broadcasts overall. And some people might not like a this or that, but uh, we've probably got a handful of emails over three weeks, which is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. And I think three of them, had to do with my sideline interviews. Oh, no. Because they were like, hey, do we have to miss some of the game while you're interviewing? Can't you do that? I'm like, okay, well, what do I'm you not want? I, I want to respond to the people like, wait a minute, you wanted to see that Snoop Connor minus three yard run or hair from Lee. Trevor Lawrence? It was very important to see the run, <laughs> right? Or what do you want us to do? Take up the commercial time and just then interview Trevor like in for those two minutes? Maybe they're fans <laughs> it of was, efficiency. It was such an odd like complaint. <laughs> mm. I, it's so funny sometimes what people like and don't like, but they wanted to see like the game because we go to a split screen, right. you know, or a yeah. picture in picture type thing. Yeah. And I was like, and Brent is in the very small box, folks. I just want to let you know, you yeah, can barely always, see Brent at all. And, and by I, the way, like, I get big Brent on my TV sometimes. That sucks. And, and, and not only that, <laughs> not only, not only that is 
the fact that we're sitting there and we're like, hey, this is awesome. We got Trevor. We got Josh Allen. We got Trayvon Walker. We go Marvin Jones. And we're getting frontline guys for the interview. And I've got emails complaining about it. I'm like, we're totally not on the same page, people. Like, we think this is good. You think it's bad. But we get to control it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about, like, the viewer, which I appreciate. After working in, like, the adepts of the TV control room, I have so much appreciation for what, like, the director does. Oh, yeah. And then you get the email that says, can we can we get them off the screen? Can we get Martineau off the screen? <laughs> that guy's like, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, the director, by the way, always oh, said TV God. especially, I think, has the hardest job um, in, in TV land. Oh, so. no doubt. It's uh, easy to do what Brent does, folks. You just got to read the it thing. It is true. It is true. Literally, the <laughs> words the words are there for Brent. He just has to read them. All right. He gets it. He's got an easy job. <laughs> like on radio, like there's no script. We're just going for it. I'm this, not saying it takes more talent. I'm just saying. There was no script on the sideline. Yeah, I'm talking about your other makeup job oh. in the studio. <laughs> yeah. That one I really do wear makeup sometimes. Um, I could use some of that makeup. You could. You are I'm shiny right reflective. now, my man. <laughs> highly <laughs> reflective. Monday. Sorry to come out on a Monday with the 15 minutes of the industry on you. Look, it's interesting talk. People see how the thing has evolved. They're watching it from the other side. They should know the reasons why things are happening the yeah. way they're happening. Yeah. You should know why you have to continuously see this man <laughs> on the sidelines <laughs> instead of football. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk more about the football side of things. And what else everybody was saying. And, oh, the kicker. The kicker. Have we fallen in love with the kicker? Man. And is anybody else going to shoot me a nice play on words with James McCourt's last name? <laughs> Order in the McCourt. There it is. Yeah, heard that a couple of times. We'll be back on ESPN 690. ESPN 690 pays your bills. Are you kidding me? You've got five chances to win $1,000 every weekday at 8 a.m., 10, noon, 2, and 5 p.m. This is a nationwide contest message and data rates apply. Complete rules at ESPN690.com. <laughs> ESPN 690 pays your bills beginning Monday, August 29th on ESPN 690, Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. Life is short, and if we spend our time suffering with pain and it takes away our joy, that's not a very good way to live. He's right. It's hard to be happy when you're in constant pain. QC Kinetics patient Chad admits the chronic pain in his knee really robbed his quality of life. When I was going to the traditional doctor and getting the pain pills, my smile wasn't as big as it usually is. Going to my high school reunion on crutches, it was awful. But then Chad visited QC Kinetics. He experienced the real power behind natural regenerative treatments. Using healing properties from his own body, QC Kinetics was able to restore and repair damaged tissue, finally giving Chad lasting relief with no drugs, no surgery, and no downtime. And I'm feeling on top of the world because of QC Kinetics. Learn how advanced regenerative medicine can help your body heal itself at QC Kinetics. Call now for your free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. Back in the day, crime was someone stealing something off the patio. Today, it's violent crime. Oftentimes, the bad guys hack into cameras and doorbells, steal your privacy, and break into your house while you or your loved ones are home. Criminals today are much smarter and more violent. You simply cannot fight today's criminals with do-it-yourself alarms. That's why you need a safe touch security and surveillance system with its five layers of detection and protection. Number one, the safe touch sign. Crooks know to stay away from safe touch houses. Number two, cameras using analytic technology that allows alerts the bad guys they are on camera while simultaneously alerting you the homeowner number three entry alerts that notify safe touch before the bad guys even enter number four the exclusive safe touch two-way communicator that immediately alerts local emergency authorities and number five the safe touch central monitoring center that is right here and not in some remote out-of-state location don't delay demand is at an all-time high call and receive professional installation at no charge 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com state license ef Two, three, three. If you've been thinking about a new Toyota, then stop thinking and start buying during the national sales event going on now at Arlington Toyota. And check this out. Arlington's got 500 new Toyotas available, and that makes now the perfect time to slip into a new ride. Plus, you get 30 days to love your new purchase or exchange it and a lifetime warranty with your new Toyota purchase. So stop thinking and start buying. Even better, start your engine. It's the national sales event at Arlington Toyota. Shop in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at Arlington. ArlingtonToyota.com today. 
A new era is here for Jaguars football. New championship winning coach, new superstars, and new optimism. One consistent this fall is Tailgaters Parking will still be delivering the very best tailgating experience at the bank all season. Tailgaters Parking doesn't just talk a big game. They're right across the street from TIAA Bank Field. Offer clean, permanent restrooms, food options, a full liquor bar, and all parking spots are on a well-kept grass lot. Check out Tailgaters Parking at tailgatersparking.com to reserve your spot today. Serving part-time in the Army National Guard has led to a lot of firsts for me. The education assistance I received made it possible for me to be the first person in my family to go to school and graduate debt-free. That education helped get me to the first day at my dream job, a job that I can still hold while I serve part-time. That job, plus the other benefits possible from the Army National Guard, helped me become a first-time homeowner. Also, part of my role as a National Guard soldier means I know that I can be one of the first to respond and help my community if disaster ever strikes. I'm extremely proud that I get to serve my community. And that first step I took by joining the Army National Guard has made all the difference in my life. Talk to your local recruiter or visit nationalguard.com to find out what firsts are available to you in the Army National Guard. Sponsored by the Florida Army National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Sure, humans can be a little weird at times. But take it from me, I'm a dog. And a person is about the best thing that can happen to a shelter pet. So if you want to learn how you can be that person, get down to your local pet shelter or visit the shelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. You can watch us on CBS 47 and Fox 30. You can listen right here on ESPN 690. And you can subscribe to our YouTube and podcast, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. Very well coached. And uh, you have weapons like they have at receiver. Um, you know, they're going to, they know how to use them. And they're, they're going to be able to create space, you know, try to get those, get the, get those matchups. Um, you know, they've got you know, talented quarterbacks there and I mean, guys that can definitely get in the ball. So um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, you know, it's be a fun matchup to have to prepare for. And, uh, you know, these are, the, these are those type games when you're playing against top players, um, you know, in the country and, uh, and great coaches. I mean, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun week. And that's what's, you know, that's what you look forward to in being able to, uh, to build up to Sunday night. That is Mike Norvell, Florida State Seminoles, looking pretty good, sounding pretty good on ESPN 690 after some delays on Saturday, but a nice win for them. A, a nice frustrating win for me in case of... <laughs> 47 to 7. <laughs> I saw it. The line had moved, by the way, to like 42. Do you know that? Uh, yes, I saw 41. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still didn't, didn't make it feel better, though. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> Molly for one of them. I yeah. want that. Yeah, I got. I got that one. You don't always get them, but you got to celebrate when you get them. I mean, as long as we're here, if you want to just talk about some of these picks, because you guys tried to warn me about Scott Frost. We tried. You tried, and I had that game. Nebraska had that game, and then the onside kick. I mean, just a disgrace, this guy. Yeah, and I didn't see a lot of that. But man, what a disaster it's turned out to be. Holy and, smokes! I mean, the thing about Pat Fitzgerald, we all went like he's a really good coach. Right. Northwestern's Northwestern, but he's a really good coach. And so it shouldn't surprise you that it was close. And Nebraska just can't figure it out. It's it's amazing. Scott Frost should have never left UCF. And by the no. way, he's going to the B, Big 12 if he had stayed there and he would have went the Big 12 with a better program. Yeah. UCF is 10 times a better program than Nebraska. It's it's amazing. No, no. they were when Scott Frost was at UCF, I would co-sign. I mean, they're still better. Yeah, they probably win a football game. Give you that. I don't know about 10 times. Yeah, maybe. They are better. Years. I think UCF I mean, the wins the football business, game. So. Yeah, I know. I like what you're doing there. <laughs> but, yeah, if he, stays at, <laughs> if he stays at UCF, yeah, they're in a better spot. No doubt about it. Uh, he's in a better spot. And then you guys tried to clown me on the fighting Illini. Yeah, nah, they you got that one, man. That Wyoming is trash, bro. Yeah, Wyoming was, is not good. I did not see that. Wyoming is missing tackle after tackle. I didn't realize they needed Muma that bad. Muma. Muma. <laughs> Uh, so, st so we got. Hey, we're gonna have to go with James McCourt like uh, cliches here, or right. or or what do we call what? these things? Name word puns, word, word plays, word plays. I, there we go. I, not cliches. I get the. I, I have a feeling someone reached out to you with some of these. Yeah, I got Mr. Pico Boulevard says James McCourt or Pounder. Like oh, that. okay. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's good. I like it. 
Uh, Stone Cold, you know, Steve, he calls in the show, usually from his truck in a, in a tunnel. It's actually McCourt's in session, Brent, not order in McCourt. Hmm. I've heard both. All right. But do you like either one? Those are fine. I just, I wonder about him if he's got enough leg to kick it all the way to the courtyard. Oh. We call like a place in the stadium the courtyard. I'm in get a Marriott sponsorship, Jags. All right. Yeah, look at that. Maybe Jags. put it in the end zone. Jags, so Casey gets doing here? We know you're listening, <laughs> Jags. And by the way, Brad, unrelated, has the best uh, hey, response really so far on social media. The guy in the middle needs a comb for Christmas. He's talking about the video feed. He's talking about you, Casey. <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> who said that? Brad it's said actually that. Chip and Teresa. Brad. They want you to brush your hair. <laughs> Brad the hell, Hopkins. Brad? <laughs> Come on, Brad. It's uh, unacceptable. Uh, follow hey. me on Twitter, though. Come on. <laughs> That's all right. You can say whatever you want. Just follow just me follow on Twitter. Me. Come on. <laughs> Send me DMs all you want. Just just get the follow. Yeah, hey, man. what about James McCourt, man? It's a cool story. Of course. 10 yes. for 10 in a Jags uniform. I'm counting practice. Look yes. go. It's the first time we've ever counted practice reps. Listen, Brent, if he stays <laughs> on this pace, he'll have the most connections in Jaguars history. It's like every other position on the team. Uh, you, McCourt's got to be the guy, right? He won that job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got to imagine. Unfortunately. What do you mean, unfortunately? I wanted Matthew Wright. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're like, you know, I'll go with it. Uh, by the way, it's up to you, Brent. Uh, we can hear from James McCord if you want. It's about two minutes long. I'm pretty sure it's exclusive since nobody else went. But <laughs> let's do it. Um, let's do it because I actually enjoyed this interview. I, th I thought okay. he was really good. And listen to, like, how it all went down this week. And I think I could tell being there in person with him in this interview but you might be able to pick up, like, this is an emotional time for him. I mean, this is oh, really a legit opportunity here in Jacksonville, and he might have just seized it and earned the job for week one. Here's my conversation with James McCourt. How good does it feel to come out, you get your first practice, you go eight for eight, yeah. and you make it, take advantage of these kicks here today? That feels really good, to be honest. You know, it's a lot of hard work and stuff has gone into this. Um, but these guys have made it really easy. Logan and Ross have been really helpful, and, I had a really good vet group over in LA also with Dustin, Josh, and JK. So the transition, you know, it's been it's been good. So and you know, I gotta keep building and stacking the days for sure. Do you kind of feel like hey, you got an opportunity to get put in a position and you I mean you did everything you could do, at yeah. least with it? I think so, you know. Uh, during this whole pre draft process and everything, uh, Coach Zoner talked about you have a certain amount of tokens as an NFL kicker and you gotta use those tokens really well and they can run out really fast. So you know, going into these this this week and the pre last preseason game, you know, I kind of realized that there's an opportunity here for the taking. And, um, you know, I think it's really important in these situations to put your best foot forward. And, yeah, it's, you know, it's there's a lot of pressure and stuff that goes into it, but you got to enjoy it at the same time. And that's what I did today, and I felt good about it. How wild of a week was this? It was pretty wild. You know, um, I was on my connecting flight out of uh, L.A. I was in Denver. I got a call from my agent. He was like, don't unpack your bags. Like, you're going to Jacksonville. But I was fortunate enough, I was headed to Fort Lauderdale, so that's where I'm from originally. And I got there late, la late la that night and uh, just drove up to Jacksonville early the next morning, did my physical, and basically hopped on a flight again, so um, up to Atlanta. So it was definitely, it, went, it was going really fast to begin with, but, you know, these guys really helped me settle in and show me the ropes and everything. So from there on out, it was pretty smooth. With all that, if you make it, if you're the guy, I mean, kicking in that week one regular season opener, what would it mean to you? It would mean everything to me. Um, again, it's just more opportunities out there, and just got to take it one at a time. You know, uh, regardless of the situation, these next couple of weeks, um, it's one kick at a time mentality, and that's the only way you can go to it. So, yeah, just take the same approach I did today, and hopefully it'll lead to more success. Hey, good for him, man. He kicks a good ball. Like, you can really see it. You can tell, like, from practice in that, he, he whatever kicking a good ball sounds like, it <laughs> looks and sounds better than the last couple of guys they've had in here. And I just think, that could be a fun story if he be, is their long-term kicker, if he does well. This whole week will be a really fun story to be able to tell around, yeah. around how we got going. And how random that they ended up finding him the way they did, as opposed to, like, scouting someone straight from college, bringing him onto the team, or, like, really lusting after yeah, someone in free agency. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the way, they were, so, they were still so uncertain, or they actually liked the Verity kid and had him on their, their radar, that they pick him up from Indianapolis once the Colts wave him. And, and think about how hard it is for some of these guys. That guy, Verity, he goes from Indianapolis to Atlanta, has never practiced with the Jacks. Yeah. He's never met them. <laughs> and he's kicking for them on Saturday, and unfortunately he misses like a relatively shorter kick. 
And so there goes his spot. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you talk about uncomfortable. It's like, just go walk into somebody's business meeting down the street. Yeah, just pop your head <laughs> and in. And be expected to perform. Pres you present. <laughs> you Here's know? the deal. You go it's in there, like... present for three and a half minutes, and come back out. <laughs> That's it. Good. How does that go? <laughs> uh, anyway. It uh, looks like James McCourt will be the kicker, and he's uh, from South Florida, so that's pretty cool. St. Thomas Aquinas kid, uh, and, and he, I think, will be the starting kicker for the Jags. Jags are going to make some moves in the next five minutes, so make it official. We'll share those with you. It's not all the moves, but it's some of the moves. It's coming out next on ESPN 690. We are ready to deal. Best Bet St. Augustine is now open. Experience the best in poker, simulcast wagering, and fun card games for all levels at Best Bet St. Augustine. Best Bet's newest card room features 49 gaming tables, a state-of-the-art sports bar, delicious wings, a full-service bar, and freshly made sushi. Open from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. Monday through Friday and 24 hours on the weekends. Best Bet St. Augustine is located at 800 Marketplace Drive, right off exit 311. For promotions, go to bestbetjacks.com. Sometimes the mortgage process can be a tricky one, a dead end for some. Not with Carrington Mortgage Services. They have a team that will find a solution for you. That's what they do. That's what they are experts in, finding loan solutions for unconventional borrowers. If you're self-employed or a freelancer, if you have low credit scores, if you're an investor looking to use cash flow to qualify, Carrington Mortgage Services will find a loan for you. CarringtonMortgage.com. Carrington Mortgage Services, LLC, and MLS ID number 2600, equal housing lender. Make this the summer event. What fuels your summer driving? Is it the adventure of the open road? Maybe it's just the security of knowing you're in a safe and reliable vehicle. Get all of the above and more from Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Arlington. Our lenders are standing by to make you a new car loan today. There's still time left. Come into 9600 Atlantic Boulevard for a test drive to remember. Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Arlington. Across from that Regency Square Mall. For seniors, staying healthy can be complicated, but one of the easiest routes to good health is prevention. No matter what our community's current COVID-19 infection rates are, getting your booster shot now is a smart way to protect yourself from severe illness later. Elder Source encourages people 65 and up to get a safe, free COVID-19 booster. For more information, visit myeldersource.org or call the Elder Source helpline at 888-242-4464. Celsius Essential Energy is Jacksonville's official energy drink of summer, and Jacksonville summers are fueled by Celsius. If you see ESPN 690 out and about this summer, come grab an ice cold Celsius Essential Energy. Live fit. Ray Maliazzi here for eBay Motors. You're driving along and some nimrod cuts you off. You hit the horn. <laughs> Jeez, it sounds like a goose in distress. Time to head over to eBay Motors. They have horns for every make and model, not to mention horn pads, steering wheels, wiring, and more. 122 million parts. You can even go for an upgrade. <laughs> that looks like Mr. Cutoff Man needs a new seat cover. Try eBay Motors, pal. Get the right parts at the right prices. eBay Motors. Let's ride. Dak Prescott here. Why do I choose proven quality sleep from Sleep Number? Because better sleep elevates my game. Only my Sleep Number 360 smart bed helps me fall asleep faster, keeps me cool, and effortlessly adjusts for my best sleep. The result? 28 minutes more restful sleep a night. That's more focus, more edge, and more highlights. And that means more wins for all of us. Save 50% on the Sleep Number 360 limited edition smart bed plus free delivery when you add a base. Ends Labor Day. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. Sleep Number, the official sleep and wellness partner of the NFL. What's up? It's Casey. Check out the podcast Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 wherever you get your podcasts. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson remains hospitalized after being shot twice yesterday in his lower body in an attempted carjacking or robbery attempt. Robinson posted on Instagram that his surgery went well. The team has not ruled out his return this season. 
This first day of the U.S. Open is a big one. Serena Williams tonight begins the final major of her tennis career before retirement with an opening round matchup against Danka Kovinich. The early round matchups certainly favorable for Serena, a 23-time Grand Slam champ, to be successful this summer. Notes ESPN tennis analyst James Blake. It is a great opportunity for her, just uh, straight by the, by the book of a match up for her to get started in this event. Kovinich is uh, about who you would handpick for her to play in this first round and then possibly Contavite in the second round, someone that really has not had a, a very successful summer either. We can dream. First round coverage of Serena tonight, 7 Eastern ESPN TV. Dodgers put right-hander Tony Gonsolin on the injured list with a right forearm strain. He's anchored the rotation for L.A., which has the best record this season in the majors at 88 and 38. Brought to you by Capital One Auto Navigator, where you can find a car, get pre-qualified instantly, and see your real monthly payment without impacting your credit score. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Terms and conditions apply. Find out more at CapitalOne.com slash Auto Navigator. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anajar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks. Hard to know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a chance to really evaluate the whole thing. We've got a couple days here to do that. We'll, we'll get in tomorrow and watch the tape with the players and make the corrections and all that. And players will be off on Monday. And, you know, we have till Tuesday at 4. But, you know, it's always it's always tough at this time of year, you know. And you just it's what I told the guys in there. You know, it's a, it's a tough it's a tough part of our business. And, um, you know, a, a lot of guys today, you know, I think, you know, made a statement, made a, made a statement for, you know, a possible roster spot or a practice squad spot. And, and those are all things that we have time to evaluate now here in the next couple of days. That's Doug Peterson. I'm not sure he meant a lot of guys, but I think he might have said one guy, <laughs> and that's Tim Jones. Tim Jones is making this roster. I think that's pretty clear after the news of Laquan Treadwell today. Brent Martineau, Aaron Schachter, Casey Kurtz here on a Monday. Hope you had a good weekend, everybody. So far, by the way, I'm holding up pretty well. I thought I'd run out of oxygen a lot more, losing the voice a little bit. Casey's got you pumped up. Yeah, he does. I mean. That's what I'm here for, the energy. I got more stamina the than I thought. excitement, the uncombed hair. I just, as I here. listen to Doug talk about uh, the team and the time of year it is, I always think it's fascinating this time of year. I'm trying to think of another industry or job where you go to work or you start out a project and you know by the end of the project you're losing close to half the team that you're working on the project with. Yeah, that's a good and you're call. bonding with these guys. You're spending so much time with these guys. You're making great friends. Some of them are already your friends. I got one. Go ahead. Semester of college. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I, I guess. But it's not – I wouldn't think the college bonding is as, is as thick as a football team bonding. Yeah, I mean, it's not a common goal. You know, they, well, we're all trying to pass, and then once you realize you can't, sure. you hit out at the uh, drop deadline, and then everyone else is. But you know, these teams struggling. make activities; these coaches make it so that you guys really like spend time growing as a brotherhood together. Uh, but the whole the cutting things—I don't know if either of you have ever been through a um, a downsizing at a job or a corporation. I went through one with this company actually uh, a while back, over ten years ago, and it was a weird thing. Everyone came to work. We knew it was coming. Our GM was really transparent with us over a couple of months. He was. And you didn't know who? Well, that was the thing. He was preparing us with all this information. He was like, uh, hey, guys, change is coming. We can't stop change. Change is coming. It sounds like a Michael Scott Dunder Mifflin scenario. No, but this was real. And I thought it was really <laughs> helpful, you know, especially after talking to some friends who have been through downsizing when it was like sudden. You come to work and suddenly everyone might get fired today and then everyone's freaking out. He was preparing us for this change culture. And then the day comes. And what happened basically was that HR would walk through the building and they tap you on the shoulder and be like, if your meeting is coming up in five to 10 minutes. That's horrible. Oh, yeah. And Get then your you, playbook. You go have the meeting. That's right. And you, a lot of the sales team was already packing their stuff into cardboard boxes, whether they were staying or not, just in case. Like I had a friend uh, who ended up staying and he didn't unpack his cardboard box for three or four months after that. But, you know, just Gotta sitting there right. waiting for the tap on the shoulder. And, and after you get tapped, you still don't know if you're gone. You head down to the boss's office and you have a conversation. Either you're getting your severance or you're getting your new assignment. But like the people who don't get tapped are just waiting to see who the team is at the end of the day. And so I'm thinking like sure. that's about the closest I probably came. If you consider me the Trevor Lawrence of the bunch, which, you know, I do. <laughs> but I'm sitting there looking at the, uh, the, huh. the, the Treadwells of the bunch and the Armsteads of the bunch going, man, it's been good to know you. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. I guess I'll never see you again for the rest of my life. There is a nature of that. Who am I in this? 
You know, I was. I, it's funny you said you said it in a different way, but I was actually thinking of that too. It's like got to be such a weird deal when you know you're walking into that building, you know, on Monday morning, and you don't know if you're going to make the team. No and you idea. Know, you know if you're on the bubble. You have or a not, feeling. Right? Well, if you're on the bubble, but a lot of these guys are just kind of hoping and guessing. Right? Yeah. What's a What's a worse feeling to know you're about to get cut or to be on the bubble and literally have no idea? Be on the bubble, not have any idea. At least if you know it, you can start dealing with it. There's finality there. Yeah, because, like, for the guys that know they weren't going to make the team, let's just say, I'm trying to think of somebody, because some of these guys have been on the team for a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I mean, some of them, let's just say Benji Franklin. Maybe he got a feeling at some point, although I think he was kind of in the mix, to be honest, but maybe he got a feeling at some point that he was going to make the team. And so, therefore, you're just like, hey, let me just go put whatever I can on tape. Let me go put whatever. So there is, like, a there's a different avenue to take. You, you can go all in. And now all of a sudden you're like, all right, hey, these things still matter. You can talk yourself into it because I, I think I, I might be gone. Because you can do the numbers game as well, right? I mean, Benji Franklin probably was a long shot to make it. And then there's also practice squads. Like, it's important for guys like Franklin to still play really well because they want another opportunity. Hang out on the practice squad. Yeah, they want a, a little bit of a check. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's for somebody else. And so I think there is – I think you just change, Casey, the way you think about it. But it's easier because you can make that move earlier. Like, if you're Treadwell today, that's a tough deal now. I mean, you've done pretty good things. You think you're kind of on the roster. Your buddy's with the quarterback. You got a good rapport with him. You do some good things like the dirty work stuff of blocking in the run game and special teams. And you walk in today and, and you're out because Tim Jones had a good couple of weeks. Yeah. You know? Tim Jones, baby. I think that's tough. Like, that's probably a tough thing because – he and he in his mind, I guarantee you, he would say that like he's better than Tim Jones. You I mean, know what I mean? These guys have well, to believe yeah. they're better than the people. Well, I don't think for. so. I don't know. Like Benji Franklin's not sitting there being like I'm better than Tyson Campbell. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I, if he's realistic about it, he's just not. I mean, uh, there was a reason Tyson Campbell was taking 33rd overall. Yeah, Shaq Griffin's been playing in the league for yeah. six years. Darius Williams won a Super Bowl. Like at least from a starter standpoint. Sure. Now, the Xavier Crawford who's fighting for a spot, he might say, yeah, I'm better so than this bubble guy. Bubble versus bubble guy. I yeah. believe that, yeah. But, I mean, but Treadwell's the guy who's played in the league, was a first-round pick, he's been around, and he's like, hey, you know, Tim Jones had a good couple of weeks, and he's a nice kid, and good for him. He did a good job, but I'm better than him. You know what I mean? Like, if I was, if I was Treadwell, that's what I'd be thinking. Yeah. And, you know, now you just got to go sign on with another team and move around again and all those things. So, yeah, I think it's a tough deal. Do you think it hurts more when one of your better friends is still on the team or still has one of those jobs, even if it's not the team you got cut from? Yeah, I, th I think so. Like, I, I think this is an interesting experience, to be honest with you, with Trevor. Because Trevor, it, it is well known. I mean, Trevor's made it known mm -hmm. that the Treadwells and the Lawrences are like each other and they get along and they hang out a little bit. They biffles. And so I think that that probably is a tough thing. That's a new thing. You don't do that in college. Nobody gets cut. If yeah. you're hanging out with the, the the 12th receiver at Clemson, he's not getting cut. He's just the 12th receiver at Clemson. Yep. Here, I'm not sure Trevor even built too many of those relationships like last year because of Urban and his head spinning and everything else. But eventually, you built this relationship with a guy like Treadwell, and I'm not saying he's the only one. It's not like he's got one friend on yeah, the but team. It's one right? that's known. But sure. I, I just think, yeah, I think there's some. I always wondered this in, in that situation with a guy like Linder, on the Bortles front. Those two were tight. I mean, they were like best friends. Biffles. And so, with all the stuff that was going on, you know, and the the eventual ouster of Bortles and Linder was still a big part of it, and then you got. Uh, Minshew and you got Foles and you got uh, and eventually Trevor last year. I always thought that was kind of interesting because his best For bud, Linder. yeah, because his best buddy is is is, is Bortles, who's a quarterback, and all these guys, that, all of us are asking how much better these other guys are than oh, his best yeah. friend. Yeah, and he's got you know to speak what I mean. On it. Yeah, you're it's right. A, I think that's a weird deal. It is a weird position to be put. Like in. if if you're asking me, listen, if I brought my best friend in here to do the show and they eventually said, hey, let, hey, Brent. Look, Guy's not good enough. We got to bring Aaron in, you know? I mean, I'd agree with it, sure. But I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, but this guy, I mean, you know, that'd be a hard. I would think that'd be somewhat of a hard thing. Yeah. You well, know what I mean? Uh, let me, I mean, let I me, know this guy since third grade. I think he's good. Let, like, me, you know? <laughs> I just, let me stop you for a second for some breaking well, we news. Aaron. I do want to make the audience aware that Casey just got a new follower on Twitter. I just read that in the chat. Did so Casey, I? There you go. 
But back to the conversation, Brett. Wow. Do you think it's do you think it's acceptable for and he didn't, but do you think it's acceptable for Brad at that point to go, I don't really think I'm the person you should be asking on this because of you know, my love for this guy, or does he have to be more professional than that? Yeah, I think because I know be. how he reacted, but I'm kind of curious if it would be acceptable if we could see humans be human for a second. Yeah, I think he knows these guys all know it's the nature of the business, mm. you know. And hey, I, th I think Charles, they, thank you. there's some things that players are just uh, like we can't relate to them, and, and some things are just almost like it's it's not as human as it is for us, I think, in our everyday lives, and they're just forced not to be they know the roster is going to change I they of, know it's a business and they also like their clock is different i say this all the time nobody how these guys get like almost brainwashed to have this 24-hour rule and once it's done they just move on to the next week while if i fumbled three times in the game before i'd still be thinking about it like that's not what they do they are just like brainwashed from a clock standpoint to say hey by tuesday we're on to the next week I believe that when it comes to games, because that blame at some point gets put on their own shoulders and you can't wallow in that. But I don't know if I believe it's so much about organizational decision making. Yeah, I think you can't. Yeah, it's the same deal, right? I mean, we can disagree with management about what happened. But don't you with feel X. like you're more likely to hold a grudge against management than you are against your. Well, maybe not. I, I would hold a grudge against myself more than I'd hold a grudge against management for longer. But I'm not a, a good example. I have mental health issues that are unaddressed <laughs> right here. I just think it's easier Man, to be I mad be at laughing, probably, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna write in the note. It was all your fault, Brent. Uh, I just think it's easier Yo. to be. <laughs> I just think it's be easier to be mad at management than it would be to be mad at myself long term on most things. Yeah, but that's just me. I don't I, know. By the way, I think those things do permeate. Yeah, it's, like it's, people it's, hold grudges. There. Yeah. Well, not only that, but it's why people say, "Hey." If you pay X guy, this will do well in the locker room, mm. right? Because they know how that guy works. They respect that guy. If you pay this guy, that might not go so well in the locker room. Yeah. And that's where things got out of whack in Jacksonville. The paying of certain players and not others, according to the Ramseys of the world right. and everyone else, is like, well, what about me? Yeah. Right? Look what I'm doing. And you're paying... And so that's how things start to manifest. And some people handle it better than others. Some but way you, worse. You, you, know, you can't assume that all 53 guys are going to handle it like Trevor Lawrence is going to handle it. Well, they won't. You know? Right, yeah. So uh, I think, yeah, it's a fascinating – I always think the locker room to me, the, the NFL locker room especially, probably most locker rooms, but the NFL especially, is, is just this fascinating – fascinating melting pot of so many things you know why i love and, nfl and i think it's unpredictable i think that's why you got to get a little lucky if you're a gm you can't feel all that you can't know all how it's going to work out you got to hope some of it just falls into yeah. place a little bit it's one of the only sports where everyone needs to kind of pitch in and work together like i i realize Bro, teamwork is everywhere but like on the nba you don't need all five starters or or however many are on your roster ultimately to play well together for you to have a great team Hockey. Like you can be led by superstars. Baseball, granted more players, but you can have a couple of guys above the fold who are, like, really carrying the team. And football, it really does fall apart when people don't like each other on the field. Yeah. Casey, you bring up hockey. Like, I would say the reason why football, I think you have, first of all, you have more players than most teams. Actually, than all teams. Yeah. Yes. Right? 53 so, versus so, Well, 11 on each side even, but yeah. yeah. Well, just in the locker You said room. everybody, bro. That's fair. You have more than hockey, more than basketball, more than baseball. And so, and you also, I would say, although baseball is a little bit like this from maybe it's political, maybe it's socioeconomic, maybe it's all these, like hockey to me has similar guys, I would say. So not as a diverse Canada and the culture, culture petri dish. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? like, like going to rinks and drinking hot yeah. chocolate, you know? And I then, see what you're saying. It's a little more diverse in, uh, in these now other locker baseball rooms. is different because it's, it's really global. Oh, yeah. Baseball is about as global as you can get in a locker room. I mean, hockey has actually a little bit of a feel of that, too. So, I guess both of those do. But football, I'm t I don't know. Like, when the political stuff was going on years ago, I was like, my gosh. Like, I can tell. Like, who's – I could probably predict who's voting for who here. What are these conversations like? <laughs> and some of them are in the same room, and we knew how crazy it was in the political cycle of just banter in workplaces and social media and how strong – some people felt about one thing or another thing. Yeah. And so I always relate that to, like, the locker room. Like, wow, man. And then you bring up all the socioeconomic things and other background things of, of the sport, and it's already a violent sport, and it's such a cutthroat sport because 
The one other thing about football is this stuff's not guaranteed. At least in baseball and basketball, those guys are like, hey, I got my money. At the very least, I got my money. Yeah, safety, security, sure. You don't do that in football. Not even close. Although it's starting that way. Yeah, it's starting. But the game checks mean so much. So, yeah, it's fascinating, man. I I don't even know. There's got to be some books about the NFL locker room out. And if there's not, it would be great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it would really be a a great uh, for our psychology 101 (laughs) portion of this show. We should do that. We should try and talk to a sports psychologist regularly about the things that happen in some of these games. It would be good. We'll have to find one. Somebody asked me recently about a sports psychologist. I don't really know many. In Jacksonville, like I've done, I've worked, uh, I have worked with any, I've done, um, I've talked to some in the golf world. Mm-hmm. I know they're prevalent in the area or at least contribute to the area because we have so many golfers, but I don't know like of a, I mean, I've been covering sports here for 15 years. I don't know of one person that I can think of that's like, they specialize in sports psychology in Jacksonville. Well, I have a printer so I can print up like a fake certificate and we could just pretend like I know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah, about. I'll be the guy. By the way, all this talk about the roster. Have we told everybody what happened with the roster? You actually haven't, so that's why <laughs> I, you teased it. And I then, teased it. And I like you just it. totally went after uh, Benji Franklin. I was like, is he going to tell the people, or are we just going to keep going that. after? Well, I tweeted uh, it out. I was like, I'm going to put everybody's name on here, and so I was like, oh, I already said it, but I really didn't say it. So thanks for hanging in. If you did, all right, here it is. Terrell Adams uh, released the linebacker, which might have been a little bit of a surprise, but good for um, obviously a Shaq Quarterman. He's going to be hanging around. It looks like. Yep. Uh, we don't still, they call him double A because nobody really knows how to say this guy's name. Azueya Aluatahi. That's a good effort and by you, nobody well is done. going to question whether That's I said that right. Good, good effort. The defensive lineman, he uh, is uh, is out. Raquel Armstead, to me, that's not a surprise. I want to talk about running back in a bit. Rudy Ford, to me, that is a surprise. Uh, Rudy Ford uh, is out. Special teams ace. He's not going to be here in Jacksonville. Benji Franklin did get waived despite making some good plays in camp. Casey McDermott, who's been around for a few years, he's out. Brandon Rusnick, he's out. Uh, is the uh, secondary uh, kind of more of a safety, I think, than uh, than but can probably mix in a corner. Chappelle Russell, linebacker, waived. Special teams guy. So again, opens the door for Shaq Quarterman to clearly make the team, which I think we thought anyway. And then Badara Traor, I tweeted about this guy this morning. I thought he had a shot, but he missed like two and a half weeks of camp because of injury. I think they like this guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes back to the practice squad, uh, but I think the injury really hurt him in camp. And then Laquan Treadwell, that's the guy we've been talking about. And uh, I think I've seen now the Jags are then down to 68 players. Uh, And they have to have, you know, Io, uh, Io Lola, the young man from uh, London, he they get a special exemption for his roster spot, so they can actually I think have 54 players on their roster oh, that's spot interesting. Uh, because of the international player. That's a new thing in the NFL. So, granted, it's on the spot. <clears throat> you just read through those names. I'm not sure if you've had time to actually mentally process them, but who's left, in your opinion, the biggest question marks that we may hear about before the end of the day tomorrow? Oh, so, the yeah, so who's tomorrow. left to possibly get cut? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think now what's interesting is they lost McDermott and they lost Trey or I'm wondering about Will Richardson and the offensive where, line, well, yeah. because he's been hurt. Could they stick him on injured reserve? Uh, he has not played great when he was out there before the injury, in my opinion, but obviously these guys didn't outplay him. Uh, where does that leave Will Richardson jr? I'm curious about, okay. Rock Armstead is, is gone. Makai Sargent is still on the team. And I would say for now, I'm still not convinced they're keeping all those guys, and I think they're looking to replace somebody as their fourth back. Oh, okay. So, so they may go out and trade or pick somebody off of waivers. Well, yeah, Andre? off the waivers. Yeah, uh, he's still out there. So, obviously, you got James Robinson, you have ETN, and you have Snoop Connor. I don't think they're going to give up on Connor. although I will say this, and I don't know if you guys agree, I haven't really seen a whole heck of a lot from Snoop Connor in, in, in this last month. I'd agree. Uh, I mean, it's not like, wow. Like, I, so I think they're going to go get a veteran guy, and Makai Sargent, he's okay, but I don't think that's – I think they're going to try to upgrade that spot. So I even said this morning on social media, my guess was like, hey, they could go to the 53-man roster or 54 in this case because the international player. The Jags could maybe just have three running backs to start, and then they would make another move eventually, especially sketch. on this offense. Yeah. But you think oh, no, I'm not saying they're going to get to the opener with three. 
I'm just oh, saying right just now when they the tomorrow when they break. Happens. Yeah, yeah. They'll sign somebody over the weekend or something like that. But that's an easy position to just add. And over the years, like, you don't have to pick up a whole lot, especially if you're a veteran guy. It's like, okay, go run block, you know, go run. <laughs> and so it's not like you need – it's like you're a quarterback trying to pick up the offense. So we're looking – I'm looking at tight ends. Uh, you got the the four that everyone thinks is going to make the roster. That's – do you think they're going to the season with just the four? That's the easiest – isn't this crazy? You know what the easiest position to pick on the Jags was was the tight ends? Yeah. Like it was a lock. There was no competition for those four spots. Character yep. development here in Jacksonville. I mean, that is crazy. It is. Can you? Am I wrong on that? Nah, those are the boys. I mean, it's been this way since the beginning of camp. It really I mean, hasn't changed. Barring somebody gets cut from somewhere else, that's good. To, to, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you one more thing about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was not good English. Casey, Casey short circuited. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, huh? I know. I was trying to <laughs> type again and talk. Um, there we go. The easiest, it's the easiest thing to predict because even in his news conference, like in the last week, Doug Peterson's like listing the four guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he wasn't shy about like it. Like he wasn't like saying, man, yeah, you know, we got a good battle going. <laughs> None of that. He would never mention the other guys. Urban Meyer could never name the four tight ends from last year. <laughs> he made everyone walk around with Still name tags. Still has no clue. <laughs> I mean. Drafted Luke Farrell. He's like, ah. Oh, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Hey, Bob. That's like, crazy, what? though. Okay. So you asked me some other ones. Um, I Keep an eye on the tw number 22 is Xavier Crawford. Got a lot of reps, like second team reps for the Jags. I think he's interested. Josh Thompson, I think, is going to make the team unless they try to go in different directions. Now, listen, just because you make tomorrow at four does not mean you're ex not expendable. I mean, over the next 10 days, they could pick up other guys. But I do think uh, the Crawford, now that they get Benji Franklin out, that opens the door for Crawford to me to be almost like a lock. And Rudy Ford's out. So Thompson's, Thompson's probably in. Uh, I know people didn't like, you know, Winger didn't even dress the other day. Like he was, he's the third guy on this team. I think we talked about this on we Friday, did, but yeah. like he's a lock to make this team. Yeah. Like heads and shoulders above people. Knees and toes, baby. And by the way, look good throughout the, the spring in camp. Yeah. It's just, I don't think people care how he looks, they do. you know, you yeah. either love him or you don't. Unfortunately, he's taken on that. Uh, so am I missing anybody on the bubble? Oh, oh I'll, t I'll give you one other one. And I, said, I think this is a fascinating one. Number 93 and number 97. Well, Israel Antoine is the guy I keep mentioning. And again, my eyes tell me that this guy made plays like every practice. And he, he was, even if you watch the game the other day, he was close to the quarterback a couple of times. He didn't actually have a sack, but he was close to the quarterback. So like he, I think he's a good player. Is the only lineman they've cut double A or had the, the, that's the, it. Yeah. For now. And so got a couple of those, coming. but Jay Tefeli. Oh, right. Does he remember? I thought he was safe when the whole thing happened with Malcolm Brown. And I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. It's interesting you brought that up right now because I never would have remembered this. So on the broadcast, when I came in in like the third, fourth quarter, the first thing I said to Amanda was, I was like, why is Tefeli still in? Well, that's a good point. If you're playing but, deep into the fourth preseason game, yes. that's not a good sign for you. But if you watch the broadcast, I mean, which, he was playing decently in the game. Yeah, but against who? But the broadcast team that was not Brent Martineau, Brian Sexton and Bucky Brooks were like singing the dude's praises. So then I was like, what do they know that I don't? Mm. So like, I was very confused by the whole situation, but for face value, I took it as you probably shouldn't be in there in the last minutes of the fourth quarter. Yeah. That's not usually a good sign. Now I will say this. Some guys, you just don't have a lot of bodies. Remember I, we were talking chase on the other day. Yeah. Well, chase on dress, but he didn't play. He was more of an emergency guy, which also shows you he was a lock yeah. to make the team. Right. And which we had told you that. But we thought from a body standpoint, you're going to have to get in there. Well, fortunately, they stayed healthy. They had the Jameer Jones playing and uh, Barry, I think, 56, who was on the other side. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting to watch how that takes place. Let me go back real quick before we break on Tefeli. Mm -hmm. It's a fourth-round pick just last year. That's a pretty high pick to give up on, all right? But the scheme change, I was told in the spring, it might not be a good fit. And, and you lose some guys in a shuffle like that. Sure. And so Tefeli was one of those guys that was kind of on the radar of, okay, how's he going to transition? Then they cut Malcolm Brown. I'm like, well, that must say good things, or they want to see more from a business decision, cut $3 million, keep the draft pick, makes sense to me, right? But I'm telling you, this Antoine kid, 93, 
he has I think he has pushed the envelope on Tefeli. And I'm fascinated to see what happens tomorrow at four o'clock or by then with number 93 and 97 for the Jacks. If it does come down to one position and they can't keep both from a numbers game standpoint, you know, what we need to do before we leave here today, maybe at five o'clock uh, last, last year, our number one social on Facebook viewed and interacted with photo right. was the stupid notes that we drew up on who we thought was making the team last year, Brent. You really? Austin, and you just typed it in your notes and screenshotted it, and I posted it on Facebook, and it went nuts. Really? So we need to do that again. Well, let's do it. We'll do it by and, and well by the end of the show. That's about that. What I was hoping for. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Sometime in the football at five hours, what you getting at? That's what I'm thinking. Football at five, we can scribble on or, some Or, you know, we could do the whole silent bit in the commercial break. That doesn't bore anybody. And then just post it afterwards. That's fine, too. <laughs> nah, we got this, because we want the people to jump in. We got to go to break. <laughs> we got to go. We're way late. We'll be back on ESPN 690. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Partly sunny with midday and afternoon storms on this Monday. Showers and storms will gradually be shifting inland through the day. And a few showers last tonight west of I-95. Otherwise, partly cloudy with overnight temps in the mid-70s. Have a great Monday. From the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Corey Sima. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beard's Diamonds, where right now you can get five years zero interest financing with nothing down. Well, that ding-dong doorbell company is at it again, admitting to giving out customers video footage over 11 times without the customer's knowledge or consent. This is outrageous. It's inexcusable. It's a breach of your privacy, freedom, and security. When a security company teams up with big tech companies, it means a privacy invasion of your home. It means your information is being sold and distributed without your knowledge. Safe Touch is on your side. Safe Touch equipment is installed by pros safe touch doesn't collaborate with any big tech company safe touch keeps your family secure without invading your privacy safe touch allows you complete control of all your video footage and security and you can be sure with safe touch that your doorbell and camera footage is safe and controlled by you and only you choose safe touch to fight crime and keep your privacy at the same time call safe touch today and check out what real security is all about and get free installation when you do safe touch security doing what others can't for over 35 years call 888-723-8682 or visit safetouch.com state license ef233 this year cgc water treatment is celebrating 75 years in business happy anniversary to them put their experience to work for you discover how good your water can be with a new Connecticut softener and drinking water system i've had mine for a handful of years now absolutely love it at the house Connecticut's twin tank not electric softeners are the most efficient softeners available and their drinking water systems remove up to 99 percent of contaminants if you're not filtering your water you are the filter. Don't be the filter. Call today and save hundreds, even thousands, on a complete home solution for city and well water. Financing available with approved credit. And because the professionals at CGC Water are committed to being your go-to water experts, you can trust their master plumber with all your plumbing needs as well. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com. Right now you can take advantage of the $75 drain cleaning special. Call for details. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jackson. Jacksonville Jaguars, and I'm a proud customer of CGC Water Treatment, your local independent Connecticut dealer. In Florida, it's not if the storms are coming, it's when the storms are coming, and that's why you need the chief. Jacksonville's chief meteorologist, Mike Burrish, with a proven track record of keeping local families safe. Rain, heat, hurricanes, flooding, tornadoes, we get it all. Just more reasons why you need the chief. Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish, backed by the First Alert Weather Team. Only on CBS 47 and Fox 30 Action News Jacks. Hey, does your car still only play CDs? No Bluetooth? No CarPlay? You've got an old, old car, my friend. You know what's better than an old, old car? A less old car. Get a car or truck that's new to you with a great used car loan from One to One Financial, Jacksonville's hometown credit union. Get pre-approved for a loan and shop at any dealership in town. Get a low, low rate and get rid of that old, old car today. Apply online at one to onefcuorg 
Federally insured by NCUA. If you want to hit the road this summer in a fuel-efficient ride that's just right for the journey ahead, then listen up, because you need to rent a Toyota from Arlington Toyota. If you've tried to rent lately, then you know rental companies are short on inventory, but not our friends over at Arlington Toyota Rent-A-Car. Arlington has a whole lot of rental stock ready to rent at a great price. Plus, renting a Toyota is the best way to try it before you buy it. Arlington's e 2022 models to rent. Just go to Arlington.com, reserve your rental, and discover just how good Toyota rent a car can be. On your heart, get set, go. Join us September 10th at the Jacksonville Fairgrounds for the First Coast Hard Walk. Join the mission to stop the number one killer of men and women in the U.S. and walk towards a healthier life. Register now at firstcoasthardwalk.org. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Of course I use Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean tough messes off my stovetop and bathtub. But then I discovered I can also use it to easily clean my patio furniture and even my shoes. I'm hooked. And when wipes won't cut it, I use Magic Eraser Sheets. They're thin and flexible erasers, perfect for everyday messes, like gunk on my counters and sinks. They really are magical. The reviews are in. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and Sheets make cleaning look easy. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops, like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. It's the Blitz Scoreboard Show every Friday night at 9 p.m. on ESPN 690. Join Brent Martineau, Casey Kurtz, and the Hall of Famer Kevin Sullivan for scores, analysis, interviews, and live video of games on the ESPN 690 social media platforms. So I've been ready the entire time for this question and had thought about how I wanted to answer it. And I had come to the conclusion, I'm going to say, I've been immunized. And if there's a follow-up, then talk about my process. But thought there's a possibility that I say I'm immunized. Maybe they understand what that means. Maybe they don't. Maybe they follow up. They didn't follow up. So then I go the season, them thinking, some of them, that I was vaccinated. I'm assuming that's Aaron Rodgers on Joe Rogan. That is Aaron Rodgers on Joe Rogan. That was a thing again this week. I, I actually thought when I started to see that, that it was like something that just popped back up from like a year ago. Oh, welcome to the internet. It's really interesting behind the thinking of Aaron Rodgers there. Because isn't he basically trying to outsmart everybody? Yeah, he's trying to be deceptive. Yeah. He's trying to be misleading without... He's, he's trying to be able to lie without when he gets caught saying, well, I didn't lie to you. You just assumed. Yeah. He did, yeah. though. It's kind of underhanded. Y you know... What's really interesting about him is I think for a long time over the last decade, Rodgers has been viewed as a cool cat, right? Gunslinger. Yep. Terrific player. Funny guy. Kind of fun. Yeah. He has beautiful some, women. Sure. Has some great moments. And this is even pre-Jeopardy stuff, so don't even throw the Jeopardy stuff in here. But I really feel like in the last couple of years, and I'm not, I don't dislike Aaron Rodgers. I just think now he's become that guy that's basically I'm smarter than you. Well, he became and a target. And nobody likes the I'm smarter than you guy when he when he forces it in your face. Yeah. And doesn't he kind of become that guy? Like from a foot, how many football players, how many athletes try to do that? Not many, but he seems like he has tried to do that. I just, I don't think it would have went the same way if people felt like he was was not trying to deceive them. Like, I don't think he gets called a know-it-all or uh, too smart for the room guy or whatever you want to call him. I don't think he takes on this thing that I agree feels like is happening. Uh if it's some innocuous other thing, like Jeopardy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think, uh, I don't listen to what these guys have to say to the point where I, you're going to influence me. So I really don't care what <laughs> Aaron Rodgers has to say about vaccination. Like, it never crossed my mind. I mean, obviously it became such a big topic, but like for my life or maybe it's my views or whatever it is, like, I don't really care what he has to say about it. Yeah. But a lot of people well, it's obviously not changing do, your right? behavior. Yeah, yeah. But again, like, I don't think people were listening to Aaron Rodgers going, well, I want to hear what he has to say, and then I'm going to inform my decision on whether I'm going to do something or not. 
I think it just comes down to whether you think he was trying to get over on you or not. And if you're the part of the population who don't, and there are a bunch of them, as a matter of fact, uh, Matt's in our chat. He's like, I don't think it was to lie, but to really be like, none your business. Uh, I would disagree with that only in that he could have said that. He could have said it to he the could reporters. Have just said that, yeah. yeah, and he didn't. He chose to take a road that sounded one way when he really no, meant another. Because if he says it's none of your business, then yeah, then like it's you assumed. know there's something there. Yeah. Well, it ended up being something there anyway. True. And 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 now you have the the addition of the optics that you tried to lie to everybody. I think he's just calculated. He I, is calculated. He's not a dumb guy. He's a smart guy. I think. Like, well, he he's looking for the drama, low key. He, yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Calculated is sometimes smartest guy in the room too. Like you can blend that disagree, together, yeah. right? And and so there's sometimes you can misplay it and overplay it. And I think he kind of did or has a little bit of that um, more recently. I, I just don't think he had to become center stage on this issue, and he's kind of put himself center stage on this issue over the last year. I do think... And the, he's not... By the way, why are you still talking about it? Yeah, that's the other You know part what I mean? It, right? Like, why still? You know what it's going to do. So to your point, Casey, maybe Loki does want the attention. I do think he I mean, likes trolling. played the sound. Yeah. It was all over. I mean, he, I mean, Barnhan played the sound before us. But so. look, way before this conversation about vaccinations, he was out there telling people to mind their business and trolling people over his relationships because they were giving him a hard time about it. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has forever been the guy who heard what fans were saying and reacted when everyone's uh, telling him to ignore it. So, I mean, this can't be shocking to anybody. What's crazy about Aaron Rodgers is he's doing all this just to make us forget he's only won one. <laughs> all yeah. the disappointment. You know, I grew up liking Dan Marino. I have nothing against guy winning just one Super Bowl. Um, how about the other? How about Still Brady? Fact. How about Brady's late night Saturday news conference? Yeah, man. There's some weird stuff happening over there. He, he had Botox scheduled. That's <laughs> what it was. But you know, so what is take up? a hit for two weeks. So, so there's two things going on, right? He, he's like, hey, I'm 45 years old. I got a lot of bleep going on. Yeah. Which is, you know, and he said it in a serious tone. He wasn't kidding around about it. So, it's a weird thing to say, though. So he's obviously got some stuff happening. I mean, that sounds like it's home stuff, right? Yeah. Um, it does. Maybe the tabloids are right type of stuff. It's definitely personal. Something personal. But then out of that news conference had we not seen Brady in so long on a th that all of a sudden he looked like a totally different person to some people? Like, that didn't grab my attention, but I saw the comments, and then I looked a little closer, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess. I didn't notice it until somebody addressed it. Yeah, somebody had to address it, but yeah. basically if you look at that video from Saturday night, I mean, he looks like his – I guess people are bringing up the Botox stuff, right? I'm telling you. He had this. He had it planned because he he was going on TV. Just you know, get a little lift, yeah. And then he had to take two weeks off because he couldn't get hit and mess up his <laughs> this face. This all goes back to the mask singer. <laughs> so he's getting Botox yes. to wear a mask. Yes, <laughs> makes no sense. I Beautiful. mean, you actually on that show, you show your face for like ten seconds, maybe Beautiful. less at the yeah. end. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. I meant, I meant the broadcasting part of it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. He knew he was yeah, had that deal yeah. coming, so just a little, little lift, <laughs> little lift action. But I don't know, like, out. has anybody ever noticed that stuff before with him? Because he's kind of got a chiseled, he's getting kind of chiseled face, so he's in good shape. Yeah, he's never looked like an old guy, no, even though he's, you know, the oldest face. guy in the league, essentially. I don't know. That was kind of bizarre. The whole thing is weird. Is. His whole well, demeanor is weird. Yeah. The whole two weeks is weird. The 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 mass Singer the tangent, which hasn't been confirmed or unconfirmed, is weird. The whole retiring and unretired like the whole thing the dolphins tampering thing like everything around this offseason for brady has been an absolute utter disaster i got a bet for you aaron okay you might not take it let's see brady does not play the full season with the bucks oh i don't think that's a i think that's a a pretty decent take just based on his age alone and the fact that the Bucks are outside, down to, like, I'll your say, cousin playing offensive line this year well i'll say outside of injury like i'm saying he takes himself out oh I'll take that bet. At, so least, at least a game, he takes himself out. For, for like, mental health or, like, Just anything. I've got more stuff going All on. All of this together. I say Fox he has a new dance singing competition yes. he needs to be a part of. <laughs> yeah. He's the leadoff and mass dancer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. All right. Yeah, put it on the board. Sounds good. Brent, by the way, your interest is still going up for that $5 bet. You owe me, like, 17 and some change. This 17. Is, this has become like quite the investment. Inflation. Um, I, you know, here's the thing about Brady should have stayed retired when he retired. Probably. That's what I'm looking at right now. Well, like, why did he come back? With all because, the trouble. Well, because he can't be fully invested. 
Like, you can't play the game, and you know the way he is, the way he operates. Clay Harper shared some of the stories. Yeah. Like, he's all in. Mm -hmm. And it is it is pretty apparent that he is not all in right now. Maybe that's what's taxing him so much as he's trying to be. Yeah, this must bug the hell out of him, right? But he's also maybe trying to save some things or help some things or uh, fix some things. Sure. You know, that nobody else knows what's going on. Whatever the personal stuff is. To be honest with you. The way I looked at that news conference, aside from everybody talking about the face and the Botox or the this or the that, was that one line where he said, I'm 45 years old and I got a lot of bleep going on. I kind of felt like like he made himself vulnerable in the spot. I kind of felt bad for him a little bit. There's because human I, in there. I, well, because I think in that moment you realize, and I bet this is concerning inside the Bucks building. They'll never admit it, but I think it's concerning, is that you understand that he's not all in. Or invincible, like he's not immune to all this. Stuff. Yeah, the perfect life, living million dollar whatever with the supermodel and winning all, all the it. Super Bowls. It, it humanizes him to a point, probably hasn't even been humanized in the past. Um, but I even think from just a foot, the greatness of Brady has been on display for over twenty years. And we always say, when it goes, it goes quick for an athlete. Will it ever go? Will Father Time catch up? Well, part of that is you've got to be all in. A lot of people retire because they say, listen, I just don't want to do the camp anymore. I don't want to, from a baseball player, I don't want to be in spring training anymore. I just want to play and that's it. I don't want to do all the stuff that it takes to play. I'm starting to wonder now if Brady is all in enough, whether whatever it is that's distracting him, if he's going to be all in enough to be as good as he's been, even if Father Time necessarily hasn't caught up with his fastball and his right arm. Yeah. And well, that could be a problem in Tampa. Definitely. Or for really for anybody who is going through it. To your earlier question, why come back then? Because you already retired and then you decided to come back out. Obviously, you think you got something left to prove or you got designs on that championship. He thinks he can do it. They certainly have a talented offense. Yeah. And I think this too, right? It's obvious Giselle over the years didn't want him to play at times. She's like, all right, why who are you would? still playing? Like right? if, she, if she loves him as a wife, she's looking at her husband get beaten on the field and away for months at a time like who would want that and so then he retires and then he goes back and i could see that probably causing some friction internally sure. yeah so if that is the case i mean who knows what the case is but i would if i'm a tampa bucks fan now listen you're playing with house money you won a super bowl a couple years ago it's been a great couple of years but i've started lowering my expectation a little bit in mm. tampa mm. i don't think that's i'm not sure this is going to be another Tom Brady esque kind of season. You're Market fine. Casey. Market. I already put it on the board. You All got right. uh you got Kyle Trask, so you'll be all right. <laughs> Make a Blaine Gabbert. <laughs> no, you'll you be Kyle just Trask. fine. We'll They'll be get back the on the SGN six ninety. Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Max. When you look at a schedule, it reveals more than even the schedule what you really think about that team. Bad teams, their schedules always look brutal because they're no good, so you don't think they're going to win many games. Good teams, you look at the schedule, oh, it's not so bad because they're favored in a lot of those games. I guess I would also take the under on the Jets, but just. Like, I think five and a half games is right. I'll take the under. GJ and Max, followed by Greeny. Mornings on ESPN Radio and on the ESPN app. All offers with approved credit and not in conjunction. See dealer for complete details. Make this the summer event. Here we go! What fuels your summer driving? Is it the adventure of the open road? Maybe it's just the security of knowing you're in a safe and reliable vehicle. Get all of the above and more driving a brand new car, truck, or SUV from Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Arlington. What's more adventurous than Jeep Gladiator? Drive yours today and enjoy 0% financing. Aside from Gladiator, we have a nice selection of Wrangler, Compass, Cherokee, and Grand Cherokee. All models are available. Bring us your trip and we'll pay you cash for it whether you buy from us or not our lenders are standing by to make you a new car loan today there's still time left come into 9600 atlantic boulevard for a test drive to remember no hassle no haggle just fast and friendly service you can count on jacksonville chrysler jeep dodge ram arlington 9600 atlantic boulevard across from the regency square mall Men, if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction or PE and frustrated taking pills that don't work, Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that effectively treat your problem. 
98% of patients experience immediate results during their first office visit. And for a limited time, your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Rabinsky. The physicians at Prime Men's Medical Center offer the most advanced treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Now men are lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. Guys, to eliminate your frustration in the bedroom, call Prime Men's Medical Center now to take advantage of this exclusive limited time offer. Your initial consultation and first treatment are totally free, and you'll see instant results right in the office. Call now, 904-664-8214. 904-664-8214. That's 904-664-8214. Experience the excitement of our card games at Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Whether you're a first-timer or an experienced pro, Best Bet's card games offer winning times for all. Best Bet proudly offers easy-to-learn card games like One Card Poker, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, Pi Gal, DJ Wild Stud Poker, and more. And our knowledgeable, friendly staff are here to help you have the best time. You must be 18 years or older to play at Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Learn more at bestbetjax.com. If you're a veteran looking for direction, purpose, and community in civilian life, we've got your back. Warrior Week at Camp Southern Ground will give you the tools and training you need to thrive in life after military service, all at no cost to you. Get started today at campsouthernground.org. Celsius Essential Energy is Jacksonville's official energy drink of summer, and Jacksonville summers are fueled by Celsius. If you see ESPN 690 out and about this summer, come grab an ice cold Celsius Essential Energy. Live fit. Count on Lowe's for Labor Day savings to kick off your fall. Tidy up your yard with an Ego Leaf Blower starting at $199. These battery powered blowers provide power and performance, clearing leaves and debris with ease. Plus, save $50 on a Charbroil Performance Series 4-Burner Gas Grill, now $2.99. This Lowe's exclusive can fit up to 30 burgers. Shop Labor Day savings now at Lowe's. Grill offer valid through 9-7 while supplies last. You've never knowingly feed your dog sawdust, but it's one of the most common fillers found in dog food today. Even the ones labeled healthy can contain powdered cellulose, otherwise known as wood pulp. I'm veterinarian Dr. Marty Goldstein. Your dog needs a biologically appropriate diet. That's why I developed Nature's Blend, a freeze-dried raw food, premium cuts of meat, omega-3 rich seeds, and superfood veggies and fruit. This is my dog, Cleo. She's a 10-year-old chihuahua. Before we started Dr. Marty's food, she was was really not spunky, a lot of digestion problems, joint pain. Nature's Blend is made in North America and is pantry safe. Now she acts like a little puppy. She's running around. For a limited time, save 54% off Nature's Blend and receive a free pack of premium dog treats. Go to drmartypets.com slash good or text good to 511-511. I guarantee it with a 100% 90-day return of your purchase price. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to one additional text. Text off to opt out. How long does it take to tackle? a home project. With Angie, you could cross it off your list before this ad is over. Just tell us what you need, indoor or outdoor, repair or redesign, and we handle the rest, sending a top pro to get it done. You don't have to lift a finger, except to tap the screen or click the mouse. Plus, Angie is free to use. So bring us your next home project and we'll bring it home. Download the app or go to Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com to get started. Rates are on the rise, but with Rocket, you get an advantage. You can lock your rate for 90 days while you search for a home. If rates drop within three years of buying your home, you'll get exclusive savings from Rocket Mortgage to refinance to a new lower rate. We'll help you lock it and drop it so you can buy today. That's the Rocket Advantage. Call 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. Must lock purchase rate between 719-22 and 930-22. Call 1-8337-ROCKET for covered fees, terms, and conditions. Equal housing lender license in all 50 states and unless consumer access. Org number 3030. Hey, everybody. It's Brett Morton from Action Sports Shacks, there's a good chance you have a smart speaker, so use it with the SPN 690. Stay up to date on the Jags and all things sports by telling Alexa or Google to play ESPN 690. It's as easy as that. Make sure you listen weekdays, 3 until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. I think he's going to start practicing real soon, Greeny, uh, some football activities real soon, but I would be stunned if he plays opening day. I just don't think that's possible. I think it'll probably take him two or three weeks of practice time before he ramps up and gets back on the field. So I think you're going to see Joe Flacco against Baltimore and quite possibly against Cleveland in week two. 
first I thought that was like Peter King, but I don't think it was. It's got to be Samini. Rich Samini. Oh, Samini. Come on. Flacco about Revenge Zach game. <laughs> I had no idea they played the Ravens week one. As Joe Fly said it the other week, I was like, you got Flacco against the Ravens week one. You got Mayfield against the Browns. Uh, Mayfield against the Browns week one. And then you got possibly Watson against um, the right. Texans in week 12. Man. That's pretty good. Yeah. Lore. Like the NFL needs more storylines. <laughs> They're doing a good job. Well, there. I'm sure the Flacco storyline will definitely have people locked into Jets Ravens. Is Joe Flacco elite? Discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> I once called him. I listen, coming off that season, I don't know how you didn't call him elite at that coming that, off that I mean, season. That's where the whole argument came from. Apparently, it wasn't a very long argument. He was a one hit wonder, I Who guess. Is, well, uh, not really. He was better. Than he was, he was never like bad. Like, I wouldn't put him in the top tier. I can't believe he he's good. still playing. Yeah. I know right? the answer is going to be Joe Flacco. But, like, the epitome of that discussion is Kirk Cousins and Joe Flacco. Like, they are the line. Yeah. No, you're right. But that's the question the, is, who is more the line? Is right. Who's, who's more elite? Yeah. yeah. That's a great point. I mean, you look at some of the metrics, though, and the stats. Like, I saw another one today. It was, like, Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and maybe it was Brady. And Kirk Cousins was on the list. Tell you what. And there's a lot of those lists where Cousins is on it. Yeah. And nobody. Like, he, he seriously might be the most underrated player in the game. I struggle and, to call and, him and underrated. People, yeah, and people won't like his numbers are dope. I'm with you. He throws a lot and he connects, but he it doesn't. It's not worth anything to anybody. He doesn't play defense too. You can't blame him for that. True, but like it's not all about the defense. Sometimes it's about getting to the end zone. Well, that's true. I can't. I, I, I mean, who else is underrated in the NFL? It's hard to be underrated in the NFL if you're any good, especially these days. Yeah, everyone's got their eyes on you. Yeah, true. But, I mean, where will Cousins go? Well, quarterbacks don't matter in the fantasy world, right? Not at all. But Glenn but says uh, Carr is more underrated. I would agree with that. He just got $40 million a year. Well, well he's not underrated while, from too. a contract standpoint, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he was throwing 4,000 yards every year. You know, I would say that's a good argument, but I'm not sure now. I think there are a lot of believers in Carr. Don't you guys think so? Well, Dude, now I bet is, my yeah. whole year's salary on him winning the MVP. <laughs> so what you uh, yeah, which really isn't much. But, but last year at this time. <laughs> Last year at this time, would you have said True. David Carr is an underrated guy, a great quarterback? No Derek. Derek. David Carr is unemployed. Sorry. Derek he's Carr is a great quarterback. Network. Derek Carr is a great quarterback, and he's totally underrated. No one gives him any props. Would you have said the same? I think last year was kind of a proven ground a little bit. Yeah, I think yes. Glenn's True. point is a good one for last year, but it's 2022. Fair enough. <laughs> and by the way, Kirk Cousins might have been a good one for last year, too. Mm. Call a guy who gets 90 Matt million over three Ryan. years underrated. Matt Ryan, go on. Underrated. <laughs> Let's hope not. Also, Robert Woods, very underrated. I'm with you Two on of that, Brent's man. Favorites. Hey, with uh, you on that. Real quick here, Ravens are planning to release safety Tony Jefferson. Baltimore drafted Kyle Hamilton in round one, signed former Saints standout Marcus Williams. Uh, Wait, is Jefferson the guy that wasn't wearing his contacts? Was that that guy? I don't know. You didn't see that story? No, what did I miss that? There was a guy on the Ravens. I think it was him. Might not have been. He said he hasn't been wearing his contacts for years uh, during the like during the games, he couldn't really see anything. And then he tweeted during the camp. He said, "Man, I put glasses on. I started wearing my glasses again. It's I incredible how much I can see." <laughs> I didn't. He see played that. in the league for like two years and couldn't see anything. Oh. And like played like I think that was him. Jags. I mean, could the Jags get some upgradable help at safety with a guy like Tony Jefferson? It was they... Tony Jefferson, by the way. They couldn't see. Yes. <laughs> No wonder they cut him. Well, he's been he's on the team for years, now. and then admit he couldn't see anything the whole time. They're like, well, you got to go, fam. If he's got glasses now, he's worth picking up. So. Oh, my goodness. You know what's interesting to me is we have this group chat just about daily. Mm -hmm. There's some interesting things on there to begin with. <laughs> the three of us. But I said yesterday I came close to living out my dream job, and oh, you yeah, guys yeah. showed no curiosity. No, 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 no. I was very curious. I, did. I didn't want you to spoil any of it. I want to react to it for the first time on the radio. Do we have enough time to talk about it yeah, before it's the be, break? Uh, it's, it's probably going to under-deliver. But Casey, do you have a, a, a thought on what his dream job would be? It has to do some with Bucky's. <laughs> Did go to Bucky's twice in Is the last Brent week. Is Brent now making the candied cashews at Bucky's? <laughs> he's told me multiple times if he gets canned from this uh, career choice, he's going to slide over to Bucky's. Straight to the beaver. By the way, like you can make some decent money over there at Bucky's. You know, I'm sure you've gotten the, the 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 whole application and everything. But okay, so here's the deal. Yesterday, I'm I kind of my mood starting to lose my voice, but I'm like, I better do these quick because I had some spots to do mm. um, for the week. And uh, some stuff, high school football wise, everything else we're working on in the fall. And so I actually took it when I do my spots at home. I don't know where you have a setup, but I, have a, I do it in my closet. Yeah, me too. Because I get 
you know, from a, what's that word called? Acoustic. Acoustics standpoint, it's better, right? Yeah, well, you've already got stuff hanging in there, so yeah. you don't really have to hang anything to dead the sound. So, so that's what I, where I do it. I just go, <laughs> go in the closet and boom. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm going to be in here for a little bit. So I just like put a chair in there <laughs> in the closet. Yeah. And I was in there for like 25 minutes voicing things. This is how I did the radio during the pandemic. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I mean, I'm going to go in there for like two minutes or whatever, and that's it. All right. And do a spot. But I mean, I was like doing like a lot of cutting a, a lot, lot of, of things stuff. yesterday. It get hot in there, huh? <laughs> it got hot in there. <laughs> but I came out of there and I realized I was like, that is the closest I've ever been to living my dream job. Which was? Is sitting on a porch in Montana and just voicing things. Oh, voice acting. All right. So that's the old school easy job. Everyone used to want these jobs because... You're right. You'd get like a script in the morning. I mean, I've been emailing voice guys for the last 20 years. It's like you, you throw them a script, they cut it. There's barely any time there before they return it, and suddenly they've made a few hundred bucks. You're not wrong. That's a really great job. It's a cool job. And it's, I just always envision the guy that's got like these great pipes mm -hmm. that's doing that job somewhere in Wyoming and Montana, like on a porch. It's often like something <laughs> like, like that. I mean, you're not that far off. These guys can live anywhere. Yeah. And often do, although those jobs are really going away. So I know you guys wanted, like, my dream job to be at Bucky's or one of those stops like along the highway. I feel you your dream job to <laughs> be at Bucky's. <laughs> no, he the wants reality to be Bucky. is my yeah. dream job <laughs> probably will be at Bucky's. <laughs> but I really want to be in Montana. Look, maybe you could work at a Bucky's in Montana voicing commercials for the rest of the Bucky's across the country. There Just we really go. mush them all together. Blend it all together. Yeah. In that costume Delphonic put me in. <laughs> Here we go. There you go. Probably own one of those anyway. I think Kaylee actually does have one of those. Oh, boy. <laughs> really? Got a little too far with that love of Bucky. We'll be back. Football at five. Go over the roster cuts. Who else to expect? And some uh, bigger topics around the NFL. Like, who do you believe in more after the preseason that you really didn't? I think I have a good one. Oh, okay. We'll be back on ESPN 690. Hi, I'm Mike Combs, professional contractor and TV host. I love helping people, but when it came to improving the water in my own home, I needed help and turned to the water experts at Kinetico to make it right. My water was causing visible problems throughout my home, and it got me thinking about the problems I couldn't see. Protecting my water using appliances and pipes, preventing stains and hardness buildup, and having clean, great tasting drinking water are all important to me. But choosing the right water treatment equipment can be tricky. That's where Kinetico comes in. A Kinetico water expert will test your water for free and recommend the system that fits your needs and budget. Improve the quality of your water and your life with the Kinetico water treatment system. I'm so glad I did. This year, CGC Water Treatment is celebrating 75 years in business. Call 904-552-1242 or visit cgcwater.com for your free assessment. CGC Water Treatment are proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars and your local independent Connecticut dealer. All offers are with approved credit and not a conjunction. See dealer for complete details. Make this the summer event. Drive the car, truck, or SUV you'd rather be driving. And save all month long at Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Westside. Wrangler. Compass. Gladiator. And Grand Cherokee. Choose from a great selection and get the one you want. Charger. Challenger. Buy now and get 0% for 72 months. Save big over the life of your loan. See our inventory at Jack C. CJDRWestside.com. Our lenders are ready and waiting to make you a new car loan today at the best rates available. If for any reason we don't have exactly what you're looking for, we will factory order it with all the options and accessories you need. Take advantage of summer savings while they last. Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Westside. Easy to find, easy to get here. I-295 and Commonwealth Avenue. Westside. Who's monitoring your security system? Do you even know? What if I told you you were being monitored in someone's house? Can you imagine someone working from home with all your information? Your family's security is dependent on how fast a worker responds to your alarm from their house. Unbelievable, right? Think again, because the largest company in America is doing just that. And pay attention to their ads. They now have teamed up with big tech. There goes your information and privacy. Plus, you're possibly being monitored from someone's home. Now you know why I have a 
Safe Touch Home Security System. The Safe Touch Monitoring Center is right here and fully staffed at their disaster resistant monitoring station. Have you driven by the other guy's monitoring center? Don't bother. It's empty. Call now and find out what makes the Safe Touch five star security and surveillance system so outstanding. And right now, get free installation. Don't just assume your family is safe. Know they are safe with Safe Touch Security. Call 888 723 8682 or visit safetouch.com. State license EF233. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. I'm Christine Lisi. Washington Commanders running back Brian Robinson remains hospitalized after being shot twice yesterday in his lower body in an attempted carjacking or robbery attempt. Robinson posted on Instagram that his surgery went well. The team has not ruled out his return this season. Live coverage of this day one of the U.S. Open continues on ESPN TV. Tennis's final major of the year expected to be the final major for the legendary Serena Williams before she retires. The 23-time major Grand Slam champion faces Danka Kovinich in her opening round match tonight. And there are four keys to how far Serena advances at the U.S. Open, according to ESPN tennis analyst John McEnroe. Her serve, her movement, how well she uses the crowd, because the crowd's going to be sure. amped up, and the nerves of her opponent. That's what it's all going to get, you know, we're going to see if Serena can rise to the occasion. She's done it a million times before. God, I sort of expect it's going to happen again, and she's going to make some type of run. I'd sure like to see it. Coverage of Serena's opening match, 7 Eastern ESPN TV. Dodgers right-hander Tony Gonsolin placed on the 15-day injured list with a right forearm strain. When it comes to hiring, you don't need to be doing all the searching, screening, and interviewing yourself. What you need is Indeed, the end-to-end -end solution that makes it easy to attract, interview, and hire quality candidates. Visit Indeed.com slash credit. Now, your chance to win $1,000 as ESPN 690 pays your bills. Fueled by Celsius Essential Energy. Essential Energy. Live fit. Are you ready to go? Three, two, one. Text the word TALK to the number 70123 before 15 past the hour. That's T-A-L-K. Your next chance to win is tomorrow morning at 8. This is a nationwide contest. Message and data rates apply. Get the complete rules now at ESPN690.com. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 app. Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau. It was a hard month. It was a hard month being out of football, you know, trying to get healthy with a hamstring. Hamstring and nothing to play with, I say that for sure. Um, but it felt good. It felt good to, you know, be able to practice this week. Well, that's my last interview with LaVisca Chanel. <laughs> I don't know, you may, you may travel to Carolina at some point in the future. Listen, LaVisca, nice kid, man. I, I mean, I, uh, I'm still not sure I even love this move or not, but it's interesting to see the reaction around it. We've been talking about this really for the last couple of weeks, but even today, especially where it's a polarizing thing. You've said it even on the chat, right? It's yep. polarizing, Aaron. Brent Martineau, Aaron Schachter, Casey Kurtz back on a Monday. Jack's trying to make some moves. We wondered if this was in play, right? Could they trade him? Could they find a dance partner? And, well, Ian Rappaport has just reported. Jags have not confirmed yet, uh, but uh, we're going to go with Rapp right now, and uh, they have traded him to the Carolina Panthers. And a couple of things to note here. We're going to take a look at the Panthers depth chart in a moment. But Casey brought this up and we're both thinking on the same page, which is scary. Uh, One in the same, Brent, me and you. Trent Baalke has made what is two trades. Are these the only two trades that he's made? Uh, who else has he traded? Anybody else? Well, even if it's not the only two trades, you're still talking about two out of the top three picks in 2020. Yeah, Henderson. That's right. And so that's another thing to dissect in a moment. Henderson. Uh, he, they traded to Carolina last year for Dan Arnold Yeah, with Carolina. So even if he's had a couple more trades in there that I'm not thinking of, but those two notable trades with Carolina. So he's got a dance partner with the Panthers. Oh, and does. that happens a lot. Yeah, you see Brown Philadelphia, there's been a lot. Um, yeah, Malcolm Brown traded four, right, with yeah. uh, the Saints. And over the years, we've seen Baltimore Ravens trades with the Jags. And so you do, you do find like-minded people yeah, or people buddies. you can work with or, oh, yeah. or whatever it is. So LaVisca Chenault is off to Carolina. 
Uh, Josh Norris says, um, Josh Norris, by the way, is, is a fantasy football guy, and it just popped up on my um, feed. I don't normally quote Josh Norris, but he says, legit the worst wide receiver in the NFL last season. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit harsh. I mean, that's a little tough, but what's your reaction? I guess it shouldn't be that surprising to all of us. I'm not super shocked by it. I don't know what they got in return. I hope it's something reasonable, even though it wasn't going to be anything crazy. Uh, Casey brings up an interesting point. They got Dan Arnold in return last time around. Worked out nicely. Could they bring in a player or will it be a pick? My guess is this one's going to be a pick. I just don't know who you'd bring in as a player from Carolina that will really impact well, you. The interesting one is, and I haven't seen this anywhere, but they drafted Terrace Marshall from LSU, who's a receiver, and they're either not happy with it or he wants to get out of there. There's been some smoke on that. So, again, I'm not saying I've seen that, but I'm I'm wondering. That. Any chance on Robbie Anderson? Hopefully not. But, I mean, do they just say, hey, let's give a new change of scenery for both these guys? The money would be way lopsided on that. Uh, Robbie Anderson, Anderson got paid a lot. He's making like 10 Well, they to could eat some of the million. money. Yeah, they'd have to. Uh, so you, you could get creative. Robbie Anderson, you know? Well, because here's the here's the thing, guys. Like, what do you do? Well, yeah. Now what? Now now you've you've cut Treadwell. It, first of all, this maybe one of the strengths of this football team was the depth at wide receiver and some of the battles you had. Tim Jones emerges, so that even helps it out more. Are you just keeping five receivers now because Jags just released Treadwell today, and now they trade Lavisca Chenault, which leaves you with Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, and. Jamal Agnew as your top four, and then Tim Jones as your fifth is the way I see it. I mean, Jamal Agnew was a return guy until the Jags started to use him on offense last year. Well, you, like, he was very limited on the offensive snaps in his entire career. You did mention they may not be done building out that running backs room. They may have a deal in place or, or maybe even have an eye on one of these young go-getter at wide receivers who are uh, hanging out there a la... Denzel Mims or, or somebody else who's out there. I will say on the Agnew front, not that this really means much, but when I talked to him after the game the other night, uh, he told me that they see him and he believes he's going to be a down-the-field wide receiver, not just a gadget guy. Yeah, well, he showed that he could. Listen, he had some of the nicest plays of any Jacks receivers last year. He did. I just, here's my thought on, on Agnew. And I'm not trying to slight the guy at all, but I got to go with, like, what I've seen, like, what you have in a resume. I mean, the Lions aren't a very good team, and they didn't use them. You know? It's not like they had, like, this plethora of players. I do know the Lions are bad, yeah. And so, and they didn't use them in that role. The Jags use them in the role. Did they just find something that the Lions didn't know? Or is this something now you can rely on? I hope the Jags found something. I just don't know if you can sit here and fully convince me that, hey, don't worry, Brent. We've got Jamal Agnew. Yeah. Like, there's not enough evidence to say that. And receiver is a position where you lose guys. This this team historically has lost Allen Robinson. Last year, DJ Chark. So the depth does matter at receiver. Now, the other part about this, I would say from a Jags thinking standpoint, I'm going to roll out Marvin Jones, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk. No doubt. Those are the top three guys. All right. When you look at the fourth receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, you would say... Jamal Agnew, right? Yeah. Now, you're not putting Tim point. Jones ahead of him. Not yet. No, I'm not. Okay, well, I'm going to go. He is him, though. I just wanted you guys to give me an answer so I could then say this. Oh. Their fourth receiver is Evan Ingram. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? As far as options go, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, he's more receiver than he is tight end. Sure. So if Doug's looking at this thing from an offensive perspective, it's like, okay, we're going to move this guy all over the place. Like, he can do a lot of different things. If we need him to play here or there or everywhere, he can. And so maybe that's the way the Jags are looking at this, and maybe they only keep five because of that. They keep four tight ends. They end up getting four running backs eventually, even though I think they could cut, you know, down to 53 and, and only have three backs. But uh, this might be a five-wide receiver room, and some teams do that. Where two days ago or yesterday, you could argue they could keep seven. Well, if you're going to go down to five in the wide receiver room, do you then load up on another position group? Well, of course. Yeah. So which one, at Might least be on the offensive offense, line. are you looking at? Okay. Might be offensive line. And we haven't gone here yet, but we should probably go here about Walker Little. And do they make another trade at some point? But let's stay on LaVisca Chenault for now. Casey. Yes, sir. Where does he fit? I mean, you just talked about who they drafted. They got Robbie Anderson. 
where else does where does he fit in Carolina's plans from a receiver standpoint? Why did this make sense for them? Like it's I don't know, man. It's interesting because DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Terrace Marshall. So I told you there's something there with Terrace Marshall in terms of either they don't like him, Terrace Marshall wants out. Not gonna lie, I don't know the full story, but I know there's smoke there. Robbie Anderson He did not want to play for Baker. He did not want to play for Baker Mayfield. And was vocal about it. He wasn't that good last year. Now granted, nobody really was on the He wasn't that good before he got paid. There you go. He had a half a good season with Sam Darnold, and then he got paid ten million on it. 12 million on it. But with that being said, those are your three clear receivers. So LaVisca slides in either in front of Terrace Marshall or behind him, depending on how you want to do that. And then the next option would be Rashad Higgins, who used to play for the Browns. Yeah. He's all right, it's but high. he's not better than LaVisca. And then after that, you got Shai Smith, who was a rookie last year, and some other guys that nobody knows. But you're, I think, he's, I think he starts. I think he starts over Terrace Marshall because – you got DJ Moore and you got Robbie Anderson and you have Terrace Marshall who kind of do the same thing and that's go deep. That's not LaVisca's game. So I think he gives them something that they don't really have and that's why he's attractive to them. Yeah, I, listen, I can see that. Uh, if I was another team, I would take a chance on LaVisca depending the compensation and say, I think we can be a little versatile here. I also see the Jags saying, hey, he's an 8-12 to 12 snap a game guy at most the way we see this playing out. And I've kind of got that guy with Agnew. It's a different way. One speed versus physicality. Yeah. But we kind of have that guy. And by the way, we also have ETN where we can do a lot of things and Christian Kirk move him around. Zay Jones move him around. Evan Ingram move him around. I mean, they've got a lot of guys to move around. This actually might make it cleaner and easier from the Jags game planning thinking standpoint to not have another guy like, okay, what do we do with him? You know what I mean? Yeah. And and by the way, a lot of offense coordinators want as many as you can get, but they still don't try. I think this all came down to trusting what you were going to do with them. And yeah, we might like to do this, 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 but will he execute it properly? Again, he ran a lot of wrong routes last year. He just didn't look like he was mentally in it. Uh, but he's a young player that I think is a skillful player and is a little bit different than a lot of players uh, that play his position. So I think I can see why Carolina wanted him because now, hey, let's try this. Yeah, why not? But I can also see why the Jags were like, listen, we're just not going to use him. We don't trust it. Let's get something for him. And it's very interesting now you take, go back to your point, Aaron. Yep. Go back to that, what is that, 2020 draft? Yeah. So mm-hmm. they pick, they pick Henderson, CJ Henderson out of Florida with the ninth pick. They pick Caleb on chase on with a 20th pick. And I don't know what number in the second round LaVisca was. 40. Ninth. It would have been whatever, ninth. So is. like 41st or something like yeah. 47, whatever. And two of them are gone. Yep. And one of them. And the other one, you were telling, you were questioning whether he belonged on the I roster. I mean, he's here, but he's not even going to, like, yeah. we don't want him on the field because he's taking away snaps from guys that deserve it. So, like, you, your first three picks from a draft coming off a year, you pick ninth overall, two years later are not. From black and by the way, credit that draft to who you want to credit it to, whether it's the guy picking or just the draft pool because that year was all wonky no, to no, begin no. with. But they're not the only no, team. When you miss on C.J. Henderson, that was your that was your bat. I'm just saying they're not the only team who got embarrassed with their 2020 draft haul. There are a few teams out there right now who are looking back at 2020 going, what happened there? Yeah, but it was a pig pile on top of everything else that Jags have done wrong in the draft. And to me, I always go back to this draft. I say this all the time, and I think I'm right. All right, there are some things I'd say, and I'm not going to admit that I, or, or, or go uh, belly up to the bar and say I think I'm right. Mm-hmm. Although kind of quietly, I always think I'm right. <laughs> but where's Step at? Let's uh, but I think I am right here. This was right after they lost Jan. It was right after they lost Ramsey, and they got emotionally attached to going to replace those positions, and they went and got C.J. Henderson and reached for him. And by the way, even if a – Akuda would have slipped to him, who Detroit picked in the top five. He just like earned his spot the other day. Yeah, like he hasn't yeah. been like great he's either. He's battling to even make the starting lineup a couple years later. That's what I'm saying. There comes some standouts. Like really, I mean, Mackay Beckton and all the all these offensive linemen at the top of that draft, and and the corners I, weren't good. We were debating for months which one of these five offensive linemen, which one of these future Hall of Famers, was going to go before the other, and almost all of them have been busts. 
And and then the chase on one was, you know, for Jan, basically, right? Let's we got to go get this guy now. And they said, oh, he was a, we would have taken him at number nine. And, well, that certainly hasn't materialized, but he's still on the roster, at least. And Jack Stryan, he was a lock to make this team. They look at him as as a depth play right now at pass rush, but he's got a lot to prove. It just, I guess, is an exclamation point. I don't even know where the final exclamation point ever goes anymore now with some of the Jags' futility. Yeah. But this further enhances some of that and add another explanation point to the sentence on the Jags' futility of the last decade in the draft. And hopefully it's the last one because there are signs that point to the last two drafts of really turning it around. But they really might lose after this year their top three draft picks from 2020. What scenario do they they not? Well, because I haven't given up on Chase on yet. I just don't think he's going to be on the field enough to there's, make plays. Yeah, there's just not room for him. Like, he's he's just, I think it's going to be like a, you know, we got better guys situation. It could be. It could be. I'm, I'm just, Which I I'm guess, holding out Murphy's Law or Hope or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. But, like, yeah, it's bad. But to be honest, if Trayvon Walker's really good and Josh Allen's really good and you re-sign him, then it's not as bad. Yeah, you don't really as want him out there, yeah. with, like, some of these other moves. Like well, you one. recovered nicely, yeah. Oh, listen, be honest with you, the Jags could have recovered nicely out of a lot of this stuff. I mean, they get Tyson Campbell, right? Yes. They they get uh they they add Christian Kirk in free agency and Zay Jones, who looked to be pretty good right now. They found Jamal Agnew, just a lucky find. So replacing LaVisca isn't really a problem. It's just a matter of are you okay with potentially wasting what he could be and and shipping that off? And then from like you said, the Jason standpoint. I still don't have enough depth. I mean, Jason can even be a depth player. Who cares where they drafted him? If he can be a contributor True. and get a handful of sacks, then you'd feel pretty good about it sure. because you're right. You got Trayvon Walker. You're going to hopefully re-sign Josh Allen if things hit this year. So, uh, but it, it's hard not to look at that draft now and be like, are you kidding? Like we knew how important that draft was. And of course, some of that stuff was Ramsey written all over it too. You already had the bad taste in your mouth that you lost Ramsey, but you got an extra pick out of it. And you turn those picks into that yeah which is bad now you got etn out of that too i think right that was their second of the first rounders mm -hmm. the next year hopefully that pans out but uh was to felly no it was ben barch was the other pick i think on the ramsey stuff yeah it was. so it's like etn chase on and ben barch left that are left I mean, at least they're still on the team <laughs> <laughs> True. By the way, uh, Carolina Panthers fan Brian Middleton texted down to him over at OKV. Uh, he replied, it could be worse. Oh, that's a good attitude to have about your favorite football team. So. You, you mentioned uh, Barch, Brent, and we were talking, we, we, we lightly before you, you went back to Visca, discussed about possibly overloading maybe the offensive lineman room to give it a little more depth if you're going to only go with five wide, wide receivers if you feel like that's what the Jags are going to do. One of the rumors over the last couple of days has been that Dallas has been real high on Walker a little, trying to kick the tires on this guy. Do you think the Jags are interested there at all? Yeah, that's a good – now, this is pretty interesting to keep an eye on, right? Um, it's another one where I don't like losing potentially good players. I just don't know how good Walker Little is. The Jags have a hard time getting good players over mm. the years. Yeah. No, let's be honest. This is, I'm not ripping the organization right now. It's just fact. They've had a hard time. I mean, Walker Little felt like this value pick in a way because you got him in the second round. A lot of people had first-round grades on him, but he hadn't played in a bit, the COVID year, all this other stuff. And you thought he might be like your future left tackle until he pushes Cam Robinson to get this mega contract. Uh, yeah. Which, hey, you know what? You got the best football out of Cam Robinson. Now you got your left tackle settled, you think. So he slides over to the right side. <laughs> Jawan Taylor, well, he's a sitting duck. He's gone. He hasn't played that well. And he's going to beat him out. I mean, I don't think the Jags have uh, – the Jags, they've got to go Jawan Taylor at this point, it looks like, right? Well, it seems like he's won the battle at least through camp. Yeah. And, and so where does that leave Walker Little? But I don't want him in Dallas. Well, like, that's the thing on him, right? That like, helps you. Like, getting a third-round pick, a second-round pick, or whatever pick, how does that help the Jags? I'd rather have Walker Little on my team. I disagree with that. I'm with Brent on this one only for depth's sake. I mean, if you're talking about the quarterback being the cornerstone of the organization, needing to feel safe – needing to trust his offensive line. That consistency is going to matter more and more. A guy like Walker Little can have you feeling safe back there. He has that first-round pedigree that Brent was talking about, some of the scouts seeing. To 
throw him away for what a fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. Are you really going to even get the value back for that no, guy? I don't disagree with fourth, fifth, sixth. Brent, you just said second. If you can get a second round pick for Walker Little, oh, go a for depth it. player for a second round pick, you go for it. Yeah. Well, and it feels like it's a wash because that's where you picked them. Right. Yes. Now, granted, if somebody gets hurt, yeah, it's going to be unlucky, but we're not sitting here building the roster for if somebody gets hurt. Like, yeah, you want him for depth, but if Dallas is seriously going to give you a second round pick, you you fly Walker a little private there to make sure he gets there safely. Wrap him in bubble wrap. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I get what you're saying there. Like, I think all GMs would do that, but I'm not worried about the pick. All right. This is one thing I always wrestle with with the Jags. I've been here 15 years and they haven't drafted well. <laughs> what the hell do I want more picks for? That's a fair point. <laughs> It's you know, like, I mean, get what, it right why on the, the hell field. do I want them to draft more people? Yeah. I, I just, like, to okay, me, it doesn't he, add up know. to success just because that's the way everybody else does it. To be honest with you, I can make the case that Jags have had better luck probably picking up free agents and spending their money. Then trade the pick for somebody else who plays the sport. I don't know. <laughs> but if they're going to give you a second round pick, you go. And I think everybody would. But let's, uh, how about a third round pick? Now you now you're saying no, hold the phone? That's I'm saying hold the phone. It's weird because I didn't realize this was a real thing. Brian Middleton brought this up like last Monday. And I this is exactly what I said. Second round pick, you send him. Third round pick, I can't give up on him for a third round pick. It's not worth it. Yeah. Second I, I think uh it's John Shipley from SI who had uh something on Walker Little over the weekend, possibly being on the block or and how good do we think Dallas is going to be? Like, you go into then, you're like, oh, this might be a decent second. No, they're going to be atrocious, but oh, they're, they're on the hunt the for a tackle. They oh, stop it with the, the NFC East. East. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy crap. Third place, NFC East is All right, my prediction. But let, let, me, let me just finish my thought on about it. Don't, so I'm not as worried about who might be the second round pick or third round pick in 2023. I'm worried about your franchise quarterback having enough good offensive linemen. If you. you build that into a strength, where you've got a guy, by the way, just because Jawan Taylor may have won the job out of August doesn't mean you're going to love him by October. I mean, that's fair to say about Jawan Taylor. Very fair. I mean, Cam Robinson, you better love him. You just paid him. You better be right there. Well, you weren't happy with Taylor last year. What makes you think this year is going to be that much? And different? I'll give you one more thing. Like, Will Richardson, as your swing guy, look out. Like, that ain't, that's not going to be good. Because it, like Will Richardson hasn't been good this this month, so I don't feel good about that. Plus, he might even be hurt anyway; might not even start. So, I don't see the Jags trading away Walker Little. I don't think so. And I will like, I'm not willing to go. We'll never know. And if I'm Trent Baalke, I'm certainly saying it was Urban Meyer. But I think that was Trent Baalke's pick to get Walker Little. And I'm not saying it was even a bad pick yet. But at the end of the day, if the guy doesn't play for two years and he was your second round pick, like 45th overall, it's probably not that good of a pick. Yeah, you're not there. But I, I know what Trent would argue. Like Trent would sit here and be like, yeah, well, he made our two other guys play the best football they've ever played. Yeah, but you also so don't keep value a roster in that. spot just for that reason. Well, you don't, but it just worked out that way. So yeah, there's did. probably more value internally to what Walker Little has given you than anybody on the well, outside that's what I'm would, saying. would like, give him. Like maybe people are looking at him going, oh, we like this guy. He could be a starter on our team, but are you going to get value back as the Jaguars as much as you're getting with him in the building? I don't think they're there yet. But, uh, you know, like Casey said, when you're talking about a second round pick, that's a different story for sure. Um, maybe we don't know this yet because we haven't seen Peterson run the real offense here in Jacksonville. We've only seen the... Uh, the vanilla style, but I know a lot of the trend in modern NFL right now, whether your offensive line is healthy or not is rotations, right? It's you're not going through a hundred percent of the snaps with your five. You're, you're rotating a few guys in and out of there depending on the play call. So uh, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if Walker little gets used, even if he's not starting, how often he's out there. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I think he's going to be, nah, out there. They, I mean, they, they might bring him on like an extra heavy, crazy jumbo, whatever, but I mean, they're, they're going to play their guys unless somebody gets hurt. And so, uh, and, and it's really looks like right now the Cam Robinson, Ben Barch, uh, Luke Fortner, Brandon Sheriff, and Juwan Taylor are your starting five, which leaves most likely Walker Little out. Uh, but I'm just, the point of this conversation for me is, yeah, there might be some sense in the trade if you can get good value, but I'm really not worried about next year right now. It's time to win. And he makes your team better being on the roster than you carrying a third round pick around in your pocket for next year. And I would I would keep them and maybe you consider it again in October around the trade deadline when teams get even more desperate and you've seen your guys play and, and how it looks. 
Or maybe you even wait till the end of the year. Yeah. And then you can still make a trade for Walker. You still Little. get that draft capital just a lot closer to the draft. But I'm, I'm, I'm worried about right now. It's screw worrying about the next draft. I mean, <laughs> Jackson had so many freaking draft picks. Uh, and, and I think Walker Little could be a valuable part uh, at some point still. Before we go to break, we know where Jimmy G is going to play. Oh, what happened? The 49ers and Jimmy G are finalizing a new contract that will make him the highest paid backup in the NFL. According well, to how, what do, have we seen a length or anything like that? We have not. But it, Trey Lance is the starter. Jimmy G is the backup. According to Ian Rappaport, that's been decided. And he will stay in San Francisco. So this is interesting for multiple reasons. Number one, you had that Tuesday deadline before they got hit with a massive number. So you got to imagine if they're working out a deal for him to be a backup, it'd be incentive laden where he's going to get paid, but not like a starter. Although if he hits the field, I bet you watch that thing jump up. Yeah, there's got to be super incentivized, right? And then the other part of it is it's got to be the kind of contract that another team can trade with them this season. Wait and not have to get beaten up by the money that's out there. Schefter saying the contract contains no trade and no tag clauses, assuring that Jimmy G will re remain in San Francisco this season and have the freedom to leave in 2023. Wow. Wow. They're just going to pay him to sit. Why? They don't believe in Trey Lance? What's what's the reason? I mean, it says they believe in him. Oh, they cool. said he's their guy. Oh, no, I cool. Mean, Except you're also giving Jimmy G all this money to watch. They couldn't find anybody to trade for him. Well, okay. so, that is. Yeah, but so they couldn't find anybody to trade, so they redo the deal. And then... Well, it doesn't matter. They redid the deal to keep him as backup. I mean, it, this is more like this is more the reason why at the time they paid Nick Foles to be the backup in Philly for five million dollars, which was a lot at the time. Now you got like, Geno Smith making seven. But that worked. So I'm telling you, there's a plan in San Francisco. Those they are ready to win. And if Lance does not deliver in the first six weeks, the locker room's going to go to Kyle Shanahan's office I'm and be you. like, what are we doing here? I'm with and you. then they're going to pull Jimmy G out. Here we go. Uh, one year restructured deal is worth six point five million oh. in base, fully guaranteed. He has another five hundred thousand roster bonuses, playtime bonus. Nothing. He can get up to sixteen million. All right. With all the bonuses. So that's kind of a number, but I still think that's a lesser number than they would have got hit with tomorrow. Yeah, what's what was he going to make? I think twenty three was, was that big. number. It was so big. why would he do it? That's what I don't understand. Because I guess they were just going to release him and he'd make nothing. Yeah, nothing, but then he would have signed with somebody. Maybe he didn't have a trade partner he liked. But maybe. they might They might win. I mean, and no one's going to agree with me, but, like, he's in a better situation if he wants to win a Super Bowl than, like, going to Seattle on a free agent I don't deal. think he's thinking about the way, Super Bowl as a maybe, backup hey, quarterback. Maybe he smells something's up, too. He might think he's better, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe he smells something's up with that, with Trey I'd Lance. i buy that. And, and it's like, listen, I'm going to get a chance this I'd year. i buy that. You know? Especially because that team is filled with all these – Hot that's to a, trot receivers. That's an odd deal, man. Just from a person, like that's a tough pill to swallow. Oh yeah, they traded for you. They tried to replace you, <laughs> then they couldn't trade you, and and now you're like, yeah, okay, I'll just stay. So like, I that's think, an odd. That's mental gymnastics at its finest. Two things stand out to me. Number one, you got to believe that San Francisco, as an organization, was candid and upfront with this guy to get this deal done, or else you have something a little more messy, a la Baker Mayfield and the Browns. So that's number one, because what you heard from Debo Samuel uh, in the offseason was the opposite. He said this team was not forthcoming with him, did yeah, not, true. was not candid with him. So I thought that was interesting. Number two, though, you got a guy at Jimmy who's looking out there at his options going, I don't really like the way the, the tree leaves are blowing out here. So, you know, to your point, Casey, a better situation. I don't think it's about the Super Bowl. I think it's about him not wanting to end up in Seattle or something. By the way, if I was, if I were to make a, if I was a TV producer with HBO, I'd see if we could shift from in-season hard knocks, <laughs> Arizona, to the other NFC West team in San Fran because I think it, will, call. it could get fascinating Good in San call. Francisco by the middle of the year. All right, we got to take a break. We come back, we talk more about everything going on. LaVisca Chenault traded to the Carolina Panthers. The Jags continue to cut down the roster. Moves are being made. What else could happen for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Walker Little, could they move him? Could they go acquire some? Do they need a position where they feel like they need to go acquire a, a talent at a certain spot or do the Jags feel pretty good about the rest of it that allowed them to get rid of LaVisca Chenault and most likely not get anything back in return other than a draft pick we still haven't seen compensation for that maybe that will come out in a bit we'll be back on ESPN 690 <laughs> Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. 
Scattered showers and storms with some heavy downpours into this evening. Party cloudy later tonight will drop into low to mid 70s. A mix of clouds and sun for your Tuesday. Scattered showers and storms continue, most numerous in the afternoon, with highs in the upper 80s. From the CBS 47 at Fox 30 Action News Jacks, First Alert Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where right now you can get five years zero interest financing with nothing down. Sometimes the mortgage process can be a tricky one, a dead end for some. Not with Carrington Mortgage Services. They have a team that will find a solution for you. That's what they do. That's what they are experts in, finding loan solutions for unconventional borrowers. If you're self-employed or a freelancer, if you have low credit scores, if you're an investor looking to use cash flow to qualify, Carrington Mortgage Services will find a loan for you. CarringtonMortgage.com. Carrington Mortgage Services, LLC, NMLS ID number 2600, equal housing lender. Hey, boss, here's the latest in the Cooks R Us newsletter about the rise in Safe Touch security sales this summer. Great. More Safe Touch houses. That's just what we need. Oh, it's no wonder. Listen to this headline Safe Touch provides peace of mind for when the kids come home from school. Ah, never home alone. See, this is why I hate Safe Touch. They're like a big tattletale. But imagine being a parent who can't be home all day. Just knowing Safe Touch security will notify you when your kid gets home safe and sound. That's got to be big. I don't like kids. Never home alone and never away from home. That's why safe touch signs are popping up all over the place. Yeah, yeah, which makes our job even harder because we got to stick to the crooks or us golden rule. Stay, Stay away, away from, from safe, safe touch, touch houses. houses. I'm just numb to it by now. Crooks know to stay away from Safe Touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. All offers are with approved credit and not in conjunction. See dealer for complete details. Make this the summer event. Come in for summer savings. There's still time at Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Bay. Meadows. Get 0% on brand new Ram trucks or Jeep Gladiators. They can get the job done. We've got a great selection just waiting to drive you home. Bring us your trade and get paid. Jackson Hill, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Ram, I-295, and Bay Meadows. Out and about, you own it. In the know, you own it. On the course, you own it. At Community First Credit Union, you can own it all. Bank how and when you want to, and wherever life takes you with Community First. Get free checking with rewards and free digital tools that make managing your money simple and life simply better. Go ahead and own it. Add an account today at justbeyourself.com. Community First Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. It's where I take my family to play golf, and you can take yours as well. The Golf Club at Southampton. It's the home of the Action Sports Shack Stream 18, and it can be your golf destination. Enjoy your golf experience by calling 287-PLAY, 287-PLAY. Play some golf or maybe practice some golf at one of the newest facilities in the area. Grab some lunch or dinner, too. Southampton has it all. 287-PLAY for tee times and more. The Golf Club at Southampton, the home of the Dream 18. My home course. Make it your home course, too. Oh, 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 all right. When was the last time you changed your spark plugs? Replacing your spark plugs can restore the efficiency and performance of your vehicle. Stop by and get a $12 O'Reilly Auto Parts gift card after mail-in rebate when you purchase four or more select Iridium spark plugs. Get better performance with new spark plugs from your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. It's bedtime at the home of Sirius XM, but Conan O'Brien is still awake. Turns out you don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen to the app anywhere, in your room, by the pool. At the and Monday Brad Paisley the just really needs his beauty sleep. Shh. Conan, I just really need my beauty sleep. Maybe really expensive boat, like a yacht. Hmm. The waves could rock you gently to sleep. Don't encourage him, guy. Oh, sorry. Night, night. Everything you want to hear lives here on Sirius XM. Get the Sirius XM app now. And you've got a lot on your mind. Getting pre-approved, your credit score, closing costs, now rising rates? Phew, it's so much. But with Rocket, you get an advantage. You can lock your rate for 90 days while you search for a home. That's three months to shop for your dream home without worrying about rising rates because yours is totally safe. And it gets even better. Let's say rates drop within three years of your home purchase. You'll get exclusive savings from Rocket Mortgage when you refinance to a new lower rate. So what are you waiting for? 
Rocket has your back if rates rise in the short term and if they fall in a few years. So you can lock it and drop it with Rocket, your partner, to help you buy today and be certain about tomorrow. That's the Rocket Advantage. Lock your rate now. Call 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. That's 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. Must lock purchase rate between 719.22 and 930.22. Call 1-8337-ROCKET for coverage. These terms and conditions. Equal housing lender license in all 50 states and unless consumer access. Org number 3030. On your heart. Get set. Go. Join us September 10th at the Jacksonville Fairgrounds for the First Coast Hard Walk. Join the mission to stop the number one killer of men and women in the U.S. and walk towards a healthier life. Register now at firstcoasthardwalk.org. Listen to ESPN 690 anytime, anywhere, on any device. Whether you're at home or on the go, get the latest on the Jags, FSU, the Jumbo Shrimp, and Action Sports Jacks on odyssey.com. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y.com or on ESPN690.com. Sure, humans can be a little weird at times, but take it from me, I'm a dog. And a person is about the best thing that can happen to a shelter pet. So if you want to learn how you can be that person, get down to your local pet shelter or visit the shelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. <laughs> this moment of uncontrollable laughter was made possible by a 32-year-old man with little to no coordination attempting to execute a simple cartwheel. His name is Sergeant Warner, but young James, our laughing friend here, simply calls him Dad. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hey, welcome back. Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. Are we going to officially change the name of the show like next week? I, I believe that's your call, Brent. Shh, keep it down. <laughs> we don't want to give away too many secrets. I believe it's your call. Can I give away a secret? It has nothing to do with sports, but I'll admit it to you guys on the air right here. Uh, I don't know where you're well, going with well, this. Well, here's the thing. It's <laughs> very scary. I've been very short time, but okay. this could get scary. We'll slide over the dump button. What you, we got, Aaron? You may have already noticed, but as of yesterday, your old buddy Aaron was officially out of deodorant oh. at the Schachter house. <laughs> Really? And, uh, so I are your wife's. <laughs> well, you know what? I could have, and I didn't. Fresh and pottery scent, man. Sometimes it's deodorant never smells better. great. I'm glad you guys haven't mentioned it, because I can definitely smell that I lack deodorant today. No, actually, Casey showers in the dark and uses women's deodorant. We've Both things approached are this topic before. Both uh, he's got a weird pH balance, so I kind of get it. It's fine. And oh, he good. needs a comb. <laughs> Maybe you should borrow your wife's brush. Look, okay. I got hit on the chat today, too. We're all getting beat up. Well, what happened to you? What someone, ha someone said I need to... Focus more on talking about shampooing and physical fitness than <laughs> bad takes on Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> that was both hurtful and accurate. How dare he? Here's the thing. You haven't, I like that you can take it. You haven't made it till people are, like, making fun of you. Oh, that's a bad thing. Listen, well, this, this guy thinks that he beat me up worse than I beat myself up. He clearly hasn't heard me talk to you guys off the air. So. He clearly <laughs> hasn't. So, I mean, what, what kind of deodorant guy are you? I mean, I, you I to... like uh, the uh, Old Spice new versions, not the old version. I don't like the way the old stuff smells. What's like a cool, like, is there like a cool kid deodorant? <laughs> like, do, do the millennials, like, wear a, have a different deodorant than, like, say, us older people? I don't think they do. They but, don't. Uh, uh, no, they don't? Hey, real quick. No, they do Surprise, not. they don't. I know we'll get back to deodorant, but <laughs> uh, Delphonic says put the new name of the show in an envelope. <laughs> we can keep that alive. Oh. That's good. Maybe we should do that for the week. You can all guess. Uh, I can tell did you. Did they even know uh, the old name of the show? <laughs> like, was there a name? That's why we're going to, like, maybe yeah. give it a name. <laughs> Spoiler alert, you're going to know the name of the show now. It's the show you are, it's the name you already think the show's called. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I know we're going deep here. Uh, but put it in an envelope is a great idea. The best sports it was radio a good show idea. You Jackson. guys, uh, it's. That envelope thing went better than you guys thought it did. The envelope thing <laughs> He's still debating sucked. that, huh? By the way, Delphonic, I, the piece of paper that he wrote is still right here. Let me get yeah, it. Yeah, it's, oh. it's in, like, the museum of ESPN 690. It's one thing I love about being <laughs> a sports fan. You can be a hoarder and just call it memorabilia. And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> it's totally fine. Yeah, that is true. Hey, uh, no, it's an undisclosed draft pick. Well, yeah, it's a pick in 2023, sorry. Um, so undisclosed, 
which could, means could be a first rounder. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if Lavisca should all goes to the Pro Bowl, yeah. it's two first rounders. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, instead, the Jags really got screwed. <laughs> That's what that would be. But, I mean, I think the way these work, <laughs> there's the envelope. Yeah, <laughs> is that the envelope? Yeah, it is the envelope. It's the paper you wrote on. I know. That's when Shaq Griffin joined us at Jags Report Yeah, by Live. the way, I just want everyone to know I was holding up the thing that Brent said Nathaniel Hackett was going to be the coach. And I also <laughs> want to report in for the radio viewers, it's a picture of himself. <laughs> That's what I wrote All on. we had available to us in the studio was just <laughs> uh, headshots and headshots of Brent Martin. I don't know why my dad thinks I got to be on the side of a bus to have made it. My picture's <laughs> everywhere. It's all over the place. <laughs> if you're not on a bus, you ain't nothing. Yeah, he hasn't called me in months because I'm not on the side of a bus. <laughs> that sounds like some personal drama. That's, that's, that's more of like something I thought Aaron would bring you up. You know what but. I mean? <laughs> We're trying to figure out his deodorant. He's got a lot of personal drama. It's Old Spice. I saved the drama for my mama. Undisclosed draft pick for, uh, for LaVisca means I would think it will be triggered by performance. Makes sense. So what's the – I mean – Again, you're not going to be happy with this. Like, I don't think this is going to take the Jets, Jets are taking fan. an L on this. Hmm. Well, being that he was a second round pick, I agree with you. You're not, you're not getting back more value than, than what you drafted. I think the Jags are probably taking an L here. But what if you look at it in terms of like, let's say we make it through the end of the season and fingers crossed the wide receiver room makes it out unscathed and you go, chances are we really weren't going to see LaVisca Chenault this year. Now you get an extra pick to play with, whether it's you're actually going to draft with it or move that asset to, to upgrade. Well, there's an old song. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk so away, right? True, yes. And uh, maybe the Jags are folding. They yeah, when it run. sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I love it. I just asked, I asked the Jags to confirm the Chanel thing like 40 minutes ago. And, of course, they just released it and they said yes <laughs> right now. It's a good confirmation. Oh, it's efficient. Thank you. 40 minutes later. <laughs> Almost 41 minutes later. Uh, I guess they didn't want to confirm it before then. By the way, <laughs> not just two out of the top three picks from 2020, but six out of 12. Oh, goodness. No longer even in the league, I think. Like that draft, I'm, I'm talking 2020 is looking. You're trying to defend the Jags here. Bad. 2020 Shh. all around, I'm saying. I think, because wasn't that the year they weren't allowed to, so teams weren't allowed to scout the same way that they previously had? That would explain. Well, there's yeah, some of that. Yeah, so you're right. I'm just thinking that yeah. a lot of these teams are really. Yeah, like that's a good call. Getting the getting the blowback from that. Hey, interesting kind of subplot to this. Are the Panthers a playoff team now? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> because they added Lavisca. Well, like the I NFC. Mean, listen, I mean, Baker may. Out of the guy, but you know, like Baker's there now. Baker. Took the Browns to the playoffs. I'm a Baker believer now. Are, are, is Carolina? Better than they're not better than the Saints or the Bucks, but you, there's an well, yeah, but you can still get three wild cards there. Yeah, good. who else do you believe? Like Packers, they win the division, sure. I will say Panthers have some playmakers, right? Right now, you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm not like, wait a minute, I'm but I am man. like, you, they're capable of scoring possibly if everyone's healthy. But the Jet, I mean, but I mean, come on, until they see McCaffrey play the whole year, that's what I'm saying. Trying Nobody's buying the any, going, if they're right? healthy, yes. I mean, I it's a fair question, they have some players. And by the way, you talk about sense of urgency. Rules got that. Like, oh, yeah. He's got to win. He's, he's going to get fired if he doesn't, yeah. And so I, I still feel like they're a little hodgepodge, and they don't look organized in what they're doing sometimes. I don't Especially really understand. Like they should have made the Mayfield move a while ago, a while sure. ago right? And, I mean, and, and they were undecided on quarterback. I think they were looking at a few different shiny objects. I don't really understand what they're doing on defense on that team, to be honest with you. Before we go to break, I want to ask you uh, the guys this question. Should The Jags acquired Dan Arnold last year, and I thought it was an excellent move. And I still, we you know, know me, I love Dan Arnold. Yeah, president of the Why Dan Arnold Foundation. Why haven't you guys got me a jersey yet for Dan Arnold? We're, 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 we're working like on like 7.45 an hour. I will say this, though. I was a little disappointed that Arnold was playing, like, in that game the other day. I'm like, come on, man. It's your number two guy. Yeah. But you have to play some tight ends, I guess. Yeah. But still, like, I don't know. I don't know if they like Arnold on this team as much as I like Arnold. I oh, hope they it's do. It's going to be tough tomorrow at four for you, Brent. No, be ready no, for no, that. No, no, not, be no. ready for something like that, Aaron. No, I just don't. I don't know if he's going to get as many snaps and the catches as I want him to get. Well, yeah. now they need receivers, so he might. But anyway, I that was a good move, like to get what you got. Now we can all talk about what you gave up, um, but you got something that has some value. Should the Jags? Is there any position out there a Jags should make a trade for? We couldn't have said kicker in the past, but they're not going to do that, and they already got their guy now. 
I mean, should they go upgrade a position by trade? You look at, I was they're not doing it at quarterback. They seemingly have their offensive line and a backup all set, yeah. maybe even a couple backups because of Shatley. You go wide receiver. They feel like they're all set at wide receiver, I would think, well, right now. Mm -hmm. I think That's going to play. Coming. Well, if you're going to get a front-line guy, though, who's he going to bump out? I don't know if you're getting a front-line guy, but now, like, are they going to keep Jeff Cotton? I think they might just keep five guys. Then I think they're looking. I they, think you yeah, have to you're be looking. looking. But I'm asking from, like, a trade standpoint where you go get and give up, like, a fourth-rounder. And, I think I, again, if offense, Robbie Anderson didn't come over in this deal, then I doubt you're going to get any. I think. I think on offense, the only thing you're looking at to upgrade in a trade would have to be that running back room only because you, you don't really know what to expect from James Robinson. You hope everything goes well. It's one of those injuries that you don't necessarily see guys bounce back from, and he's coming back quickly. You got ATN, who you have high hopes for, but he's also coming off an injury. It feels like you could use some help in that room, although there, there's probably enough guys out there in the way. Well, there's already wire. enough, and Kenyon Drake is available, right? So Sony Michelle, I believe. Sonny so, Michelle, yeah, there's plenty of guys. See, they're going to pick up one of those guys, sure. in my opinion. Uh, like a guy with veteran experience mm -hmm. that they're going to take a shot at. And so they don't need to trade. I just for don't it. understand where else you would trade for, a, at least on the offense. I don't see it. And I, honestly, I don't see it on the defense. You've, you've got some numbers there and your depth's pretty good on the front line. Um, you're not going to trade. Most likely you're not going to give a fourth round draft pick up for a backup guy. Yeah. The Jags really don't have anywhere else to go unless somebody gets hurt the next two weeks, like a safety or something like that. Then they would need. Yeah. But um, I don't see the Jags making a trade for a player uh, in this instance. Uh, maybe the trading could be done uh, for now. Let's take a break. We come back, put a bow on the show. And I do have this one question for you guys to think about over the final couple of minutes. And it might lead into Action Sports Jacks OT with Casey Kurtz and Brian Middleton. It might. Don't count on it. Is Tim Jones really this good? Count on it. <laughs> count on it. He's I mean, him. I mean, it's, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, Tim Jones said all this stuff in motion today. Yeah, he did. <sighs> we'll be back on ESPN 690. <laughs> Back in the day, crime was someone stealing something off the patio. Today, it's violent crime. Oftentimes, the bad guys hack into cameras and doorbells, steal your privacy, and break into your house while you or your loved ones are home. Criminals today are much smarter and more violent. You simply cannot fight today's criminals with do-it-yourself alarms. That's why you need a safe touch security and surveillance system with its five layers of detection and protection. Number one, the safe touch sign. Crooks know to stay away from safe touch houses. Number two, cameras using analytic technology that alerts the bad guys they are on camera while simultaneously alerting you the homeowner number three entry alerts that notify safe touch before the bad guys even enter number four the exclusive safe touch two-way communicator that immediately alerts local emergency authorities and number five the safe touch central monitoring center that is right here and not in some remote out-of-state location don't delay the man is at an all-time high call and receive professional installation at no charge 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com state license ef Two, three, three. We're ready to deal. Best Bet St. Augustine is now open. Experience the best in poker, simulcast wagering, and fun card games for all levels at Best Bet St. Augustine. Best Bet's newest card room features 49 gaming tables, a state-of-the-art sports bar, delicious wings, a full-service bar, and freshly made sushi. Open from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. Monday through Friday and 24 hours on the weekends. Best Bet St. Augustine is located at 800 Marketplace Drive, right off exit 311. For promotions, go to bestbetjacks.com. Sometimes the mortgage process can be a tricky one, a dead end for some. Not with Carrington Mortgage Services. They have a team that will find a solution for you. That's what they do. That's what they are experts in, finding loan solutions for unconventional borrowers. If you're self-employed or a freelancer, if you have low credit scores, if you're an investor looking to use cash flow to qualify, Carrington Mortgage Services will find a loan for you. CarringtonMortgage.com. Carrington Mortgage Services, LLC, NMLS ID number 2600, equal housing lender. Not 100, not 200, not even 300. I'm talking 400 pre-owned on the lot, ready to test drive at Arlington Toyota pre-owned all makes all models all waiting for you to test drive and take home today plus arlington's 30-day exchange program comes with your purchase that's 30 days to love your purchase or exchange it your next great ride is waiting for you at arlington toyota pre-owned shop in person 10939 atlanta boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com today 
Hey, does your car still only play CDs? No Bluetooth? No CarPlay? You've got an old, old car, my friend. You know what's better than an old, old car? A less old car. Get a car or truck that's new to you with a great used car loan from One to One Financial, Jacksonville's hometown credit union. Get pre-approved for a loan and shop at any dealership in town. Get a low, low rate and get rid of that old, old car today. Apply online at one to one fcuorg Federally insured by NCUA. Now that the kids are back in school, I can see the beating the house has taken. The carpets, the tile and grout, the area rugs, and even the sofa needs a good cleaning. If your home needs some cleaning, give Zero Res a call. Right now, get 50% off tile and grout ceiling. Zero Res spelled forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. My heart was racing just making spaghetti. I could have waited to tell my doctor, but I didn't wait. I was short of breath just reading a book. I could have delayed telling my doctor, but I didn't wait. They told their doctors and found out they have atrial fibrillation, a condition which makes it about five times more likely to have a stroke. If you have one or more of these symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue, or lightheadedness, this is no time to wait. Contact your doctor. Brought to you by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops. Like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. Hey, it's Brett Morton from Action Sports Shacks. Did you know you can watch our radio show? Yeah, video of a radio show. Just search ESPN 690 Jacks on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Or follow me on Twitter at Brent A.S. Jacks. Watch the show live weekdays from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Or listen on ESPN 690. Well, some of these guys have really taken advantage of their situations and their opportunities, and, and, and Tim was one of those guys, and, and even... You know, Treadwell being a veteran player, you know, he, he uh, uh, showed up in the first half today. And it was really good, really good to see, you know, some of these young guys take advantage of, uh, of uh, the extended, you know, extended play time. Well, that's my number one question now. Is the young man out of Southern Miss really that good? Number three on the depth chart. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are the Jackson going to trade away Marvin Jones next? Hey, we got Tim. He is him. They trade away LaVisca <laughs> Chenault. They cut Laquan Treadwell. And while I'm also not saying, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they just got rid of those two players. I mean, a week and a half ago, we would have put Tim Jones as the seventh guy on this depth chart. Not all of us. Close. All right, let's go three weeks ago. There. <laughs> seventh guy in the depth chart. But it work. And and by the way, congrats to him. I think it's awesome. That's what this time is all about. Yeah, I man. said that. That's what the Saturday's game is all about. And but he bumped two guys. Uh, you talk about going out the there roster. and earning it. Not it's only no does different. he have the talent, but he went out there and showed it where it counted. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. If let's just say the way this all shook out, maybe Tim Jones doesn't show out. And so Laquan Treadwell makes the team. And LaVisca, does he still get traded? Hmm. Probably not. Pro uh, see, I kind of think he does. Why is that? I think they were trying to trade LaVisca no matter what. But I think Jones basically took Treadwell's spot. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, Again, just a different skill set tells me that, most likely. You think they were I think either he trading Visca or he was going to just be on the roster? Yeah, I don't think they were going to cut him. I, I mean, they only know that, and they it would be too hard in hindsight to even ask him if you really believe him, yeah. you know? But... I don't think uh, – I just don't think they would have just cut him. Uh, so, we'll see. Tim Jones, though, I mean, I give him all the credit in the world, and I still don't know how many passes he's going to catch. 37. How much he's going to play. <laughs> Put it on the board. And by the way, to be honest with you, you don't want him to play a lot because that means somebody got hurt. Yeah, that likely. means you're not seeing your best guys out there. Or he's him. And you find out he's one of your best guys. He can't even. I mean, he could move into the four hole. The book of Tim. Behind Jamal. I mean, ahead of Jamal Agnew. He could. But that's it. Well, I mean, he's not sniffing one of those top three spots. He better not. I mean, quite frankly, you have. <coughs> oh, Brett's going down. Who's Brett, to say? Man down. Who's to say <laughs> wow. he's not him? That took a whole show for that to happen, surprisingly. Um, you're paying. 8 million, 17 million, 25, 35 million to those front three guys. 
I mean, you hate to waste the money, but if it turns out that uh, one of them, I'm not going to name anybody by names because we're talking hypothetically, but let's talk about one of those receivers maybe underperforms what you had hoped or starts to slow down in a way you didn't see coming, and then suddenly Tim Jones is out there with the rocket burners, and you're like, all right, I can get used to this. Trevor headed downfield with this guy on a regular basis. He's him. Mm, he's him. If you let him Tim make Jones. plays out there and he earns his way on the field, Brent, you just got to respect it. Mm. Listen, I'm – I respect it, but I don't. The Jags aren't doing what we thought they were doing if Tim Jones is playing a lot of snaps. You Just don't know say that. that. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Um, Tim Jones, going to make the team. We'll see what happens tomorrow. The team is not fully set. They do have, I should go over this with you, uh, make sure you, you have the latest. The Jags uh, parted ways with Terrell Adams linebacker, Azuaya Alufahe, who I said two different ways. I kind of like the first way I said it. Go back go two back hours of the show. The <laughs> Raquel Armstead, Rudy Ford, Benji Franklin, Casey McDermott, Brandon Rusnick, Chappelle Russell, Badara Treor, and Laquan Treadwell. All released or waived, let go in some capacity, depending on how technical you want to be. They trade away LaVisca Chennault for an undisclosed draft pick. So a lot of moves on a Monday, and the Jags still have some more roster moves to make. It looks like they're huddling up or at least having more discussions about the secondary, maybe some guys up on the defensive front, and we'll see what shakes out uh, by 4 o'clock tomorrow. Should be exciting. We will see. That's it on a Monday. I made it. We made it. Go get some deodorant. I am definitely going to go get some deodorant. This is a problem right now. Action Sports Shacks OT coming up next. Casey Kurtz, Brian Middleton. We'll see you on TV tonight, CBS 47, Fox 30, and back right here, 3 p.m. on ESPN 690 tomorrow afternoon. Have a good night, everybody. I did a site visit, and the space is absolutely incredible. Estee's Reiki Clinic is opening another studio across town. But there's a lot to wrap up. But we staffing an entire office, office requires more than just deep breathing. And at least four new practitioners. Indeed can help them hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Long weekends are all about getting a little you time. And at the Home Depot, you time means you building, you drilling, you doing, you recharging, you saving, and you going back for more. Do Labor Day your way and get a free 18 volt battery with select Milwaukee Power Toolkit purchases at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Men, if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction or PE and frustrated taking pills that don't work, Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that effectively treat your problem. 98% of patients experience immediate results during their first office visit. And for a limited time, your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Rabinsky. The physicians at Prime Men's Medical Center offer the most advanced treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Now men are lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. Guys, to eliminate your frustration in the bedroom, call Prime Men's Medical Center now to take advantage of this exclusive limited time offer. Your initial consultation and first treatment are totally free, and you'll see instant results right in the office. Call now, 904-664-8214. 904-664-8214. That's 904-664-8214. Make this the summer event. There's still time left to take advantage of our summer savings event at Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Arlington. If you need a really great pickup truck for work or play, we've got it. Choose a new Ram 1500 Bighorn and get the right one for you. Drive a new Charger or Challenger. Our lenders are standing by to make you a new car loan, perfect credit or not. Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Arlington. 9600 Atlantic Boulevard. Across from that Regency Square Mall. 
A new era is here for Jaguars football. New championship winning coach, new superstars, and new optimism. One consistent this fall is Tailgaters Parking will still be delivering the very best tailgating experience at the bank all season. Tailgaters Parking doesn't just talk a big game. They're right across the street from TIAA Bank Field. Offer clean, permanent restrooms, food options, a full liquor bar, and all parking spots are on a well-kept grass lot. Check out Tailgaters Parking at tailgatersparking.com to reserve your spot today. Ready to elevate your lifestyle? You can do that at iCryo in St. John's County. Recovery is an important part of staying healthy. The cryotherapy chamber, red light therapy, the sauna and compression, just some of the ways you can do that at iCryo at the Pavilion at Durban Park. IV infusions, body sculpting also available. Get the student pass for 99 bucks. And if you have an event, invite iCryo to come out. They have mobile IV services as well as compression therapy for recovery and hydration. Download the iCryo app or visit iCryo today in St. John's County and elevate your lifestyle. Celsius Essential Energy is Jacksonville's official energy drink of summer, and Jacksonville summers are fueled by Celsius. If you see ESPN 690 out and about this summer, come grab an ice cold Celsius Essential Energy. Live fit. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904-600-4000. That's 904-600-4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. Breaking news, Jimmy G's not going anywhere. ESPN's Adam Schefter is reporting quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers agreed to a restructured one-year contract that keeps him in San Francisco this season. The contract contains no trade and no tag clauses. He'll be the number two QB behind Trey Lance. He will have the freedom to leave in 2023. This first day of the U.S. Open is a big one. Serena Williams tonight become, begins the final major of her tennis career before retirement with an opening round matchup against Donka Kovinic. The early round matchups are favorable for Serena, a 23-time Grand Slam champ to be successful. Notes ESPN tennis analyst James Blake. It is a great opportunity for her, just uh, straight by the, by the book of a match up for her to get started in this event. Kovinic is uh, about who you would handpick for her to play in this first round, and then possibly Contavite in the second round, someone that really has not had a, a very successful summer either. We can dream. First round coverage of Serena's match tonight in one hour ESPN TV. Dodgers put righty Tony Gonsolin on the injured list with a right forearm strain. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. If you're a renter, make sure you're protected. Renter's insurance includes options that cover stolen property, personal injury, and living expenses if your place is damaged. Quote renter's insurance at Progressive.com. Monday Action Sports Jacks Overtime ESPN 690. You know by now, but if you're just jumping in your car and you don't know, LaVisca Chenault traded from the Jags. Cut downs on the roster. We'll give those to you as well. Start, bench, remove, all coming up in the next hour. But as we like to do, if you're jumping in your car, Brian Middleton keeps you updated on the traffic you need to know. Leaving downtown, I-95 southbound this evening. I'm checking in with FDOT, and they're letting me know that we have a broken down vehicle at Emerson blocking the left lane, causing some slowdowns in the area. Right now, it's about 16 minutes to get from the top of the Fuller Warren down to the Beltway. And then heading through Arlington, east Beltway southbound, your slowest between Monument and Atlantic. Give yourself at least 15 minutes to get from Heckscher over the Danes Point down to JTB. With Jacksonville's most frequent traffic, I'm Brian Middleton. Thank you, Brian Middleton, for the update on the traffic and thank you for showing up on time brian middleton first it's character all, development you love to see it first of all don't uh 
Don't thank me, huh? Thank my uh my backup, not my backup. Who's the, the you the called tag him team? a backup? You called him a backup though. Tag team, whatever you call him. You called him a backup. Listen, you know who I can't call a backup right now? Me. Lavisca Chanel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where oh, you're okay. going. Okay. No, 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 no. I was gonna say your boy Jones. Is it Tim- Timothy Jones. Uh, it's it's him, Jones. Him, 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 Jones. Yeah, him. He's yeah. him. Yeah. Okay. He is yeah, him. Yeah, Tim yeah, Jones yeah. is him. So yeah. It's Timothy a good... Jones to Mafias. Look, bro. You you're getting people up out of there, man. It's a good transition. Hey, while I talk about this fixture camera, because I didn't have time to do it. Oh, okay. But anyway, we want the people on the stream uh, to be you updated. You can't pull that clip. You can't pull this clip. You can't pull this clip. But. What you need to know is this. Brian Middleton mentions Tim Jones. That is because Tim Jones performed for this team in the preseason, made plays in all the preseason games, forced the hand of yeah, Doug Peterson. Yeah, he did. And has found himself, as we believe, on the roster for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why do we believe that, you may ask? Well, Brian Middleton, Casey Kurtz, Action Sports Jags Overtime. We believe that because earlier today, Laquan Treadwell was cut by the team. He will not be with the Jags. Um, and that made us think, okay, it'll be LaVisca Chanel. It'll be him, Jones. But we found out just a little bit ago that would not be the case either. LaVisca Chanel was traded to the Carolina Panthers. We know it is a undisclosed draft pick. As it sounds right now, it will not be a player. It will be a draft pick for LaVisca Chanel. And I didn't want them to cut him completely because I thought that was a waste. I'm surprised, though, even as much as we talked about a potential trade for LaVisca Chenault, I'm still surprised to see it happen. But nonetheless, Trent Baalke finds his favorite trade partner in the Carolina Panthers. Look, this is what I do know, okay? And he's on his way there. This is what I do know. High draft picks, right, that leave Jacksonville win Super Bowls. Not all of them. Not all of them. Hey, listen, I'm not worried about the ones that didn't do it. I'm worried about the ones that did. The one. Listen. Okay. I can point to two off the top of my head, and I think I'm missing the third one, and you could correct me, but I know about Jalen, I know about Fournette, and we're just going to uh, add Fournette. Visca to it. Visca, come on, keep pounding. Let's go. Well, you would also be adding C.J. Henderson because he's already been traded from the Jags. I'm not worried Panthers. about him. He's, he's, a, he's a one-off. He's on your team. I know. He's a one-off. He doesn't count towards my argument right now. Okay? Fair enough. Fair enough. So the Jags now are – all of a sudden thin at the wide receiver position when you trade one and cut one you've got your three starters you've got jamal agnew and you've got tim jones and that's that's what you got i mean mean, that's what you're rolling with unless you keep a jeff cotton jr you keep a kevin austin which i'd be surprised by both if you didn't really get a player back that's a receiver from carolina which all things reported say you haven't then you're you're rolling with those five guys it surprises me i'm surprised to not see a sixth it is. Uh, you're right. They'll figure, they'll figure something out. And guys are getting cut and waved left and right. Um, Sony Michelle is cut from the Dolphins. He doesn't play a wide receiver, but he's a quality player that plays running back. Could that be a guy the Jags look at to bolster the running back? That maybe. But what I'm getting at is a lot of guys that you know their names are being cut and will continue to be cut until 4 p.m. tomorrow when the rosters have to be set. So could the Jags still find a guy to make impact at the wide receiver position? Potentially. Running back position, almost likely. So... We'll have to see how those things play out, but... How did uh, you guys uh, feel about it on the main show? You know I always get about a 30-second recap from you. Yeah. At the start of this show yes. of what happened for the past three hours. How, how did the guys feel about the, the players that have been cut thus far? Uh, just outside of LaVisca, I think Treadwell is a little bit surprising just because... I don't know if surprising is the right word. It, we thought, in a consensus, me, Brent and Aaron, that it was LaVisca and either... Tim Jones or Laquan Treadwell would make the team. Okay. And now you're yeah. telling me that it's neither LaVisca nor Laquan Treadwell and Tim Jones is making it. It's surprising. So I think there is a little surprise there. But I think with the trade, I'm not surprised he got traded, but I'm surprised it happened. Does that make sense? Not really. Not not really. It, not you're, entirely. You're surprised it happened to Carolina? It you're just happened today at the moment it happened. Like, if, oh, okay. if we would have took it okay. down to the yes. wire, I would have been like, okay, I, I get it. That. But they've made, they made their decision. Yeah. Like, if this trade doesn't come through, I'm guessing it gets cut. That's, do you, do that, you think that came down to this last this last preseason game, or do you think they already had it up, had their minds made up on some of the guys they cut and then, you know, LaVisca? I think, I think you're looking at a regime that didn't draft him. The, I mean, Trent Baalke didn't draft him. Doug Peterson wasn't here. Uh, Trent Baalke's on the staff, but he wasn't the GM. He didn't draft him. So you've got that working against you. You've got working against you that 
He didn't practice for most of training camp. Yeah. He didn't play in the games. I mean, I'm not going to say that he's getting cut because of the Falcons game. Like, that's just not realistic. So I'm guessing it was they didn't really know what they had. You had one pretty decent year in a rookie season, and you had one pretty bad year in a second second year season. So I think when you look at all those things considered, then you got him, Jones, who consistently makes plays for you, performs in practice, performs in the games, and Doug Peterson said, you know what, I'm not stuck to this guy, LaVisca Chenault. It's not, it's not on my record what happens to him, and we like Tim Jones better. So we're going with Tim Jones over LaVisca Chenault. That's what I think happened. But I guess I'm just more surprised that they're going to keep five receivers with one of them being Jamal Agnew, who is very capable of being a receiver, but is a punt return guy. You know, you're not going to like weigh on him for big time receiver plays. Maybe they are, maybe he blew them away, but again, coming off the injury, I'm just surprised how the whole thing shook out today with Treadwell getting cut and LaVisca getting traded, I guess. Well, I know that as far as, uh, you know, with Treadwell, Treadwell, you know, uh, I, I saw his tweet. I saw it in a couple of articles talking about his future is bright. And, you know, I'm glad he feels that way. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not – who am I to say your future is not bright? He'll get picked up. What do you think about his ceiling now, right? It, it's not – Treadwell. Our problem. Treadwell. Yeah, Treadwell. It's not our problem now. You know, Jack, it's not the Jags issue now to even – think about that but you know he came in what like 20 I think it was 2016 uh you know spent the time with uh with the Vikings yeah Minnesota made him a first round pick uh Atlanta for a cup of coffee and then came to Jacksonville and it just it hasn't seemed to work out anywhere yeah um for where he was drafted and he's in his what his sixth season now yeah he's he's been in it a little bit I I see what you're getting at I think I don't think it's an off the field thing. Like from all reports, he's not a bad dude. Like he doesn't do dumb things. Like right. you know, he's on the headlines for the wrong reasons. He obviously had a really good relationship with Trevor Lawrence, well documented, and we'll see how that plays out as he's now not on the team. But I think with Treadwell, it's just too inconsistent. Like there were times mm-hmm. last year he made plays and we we're like, "Hey, Treadwell," but to be reasonable, the only reason Treadwell got on the field is because they didn't have a receiver that could do anything. Jamal Agnew is making plays. He gets hurt. Marvin Jones was being uh, locked down. Isn't the right word, but I'm going to use it here. He was being locked down by the number one corner on the opposing team, and they were daring some other receiver on the team to make a play. Spoiler alert, nobody did. That's why LaVisca Schultz not here. And so Treadwell comes in and makes a couple of plays, and you're like, okay, you see why he was a first-round pick. But then he has some drops. He dropped the ball in the end zone, I won't forget. He dropped the ball on the sideline that I won't forget either. So I think it's just for him, so far, it's just been inconsistent. Seems like a good dude. He definitely has talent. I just think the inconsistencies are there. And they, not that they had to do him any favors, but they did him no favors in terms of Christian Kirk's a lot better, right? Zay Jones, better. Marvin Jones, better. So you make those moves. They like Tim Jones, as we found out, and they like Jamal Agnew. And I think it's just, it's one of those things. Could he come back on the practice squad? Maybe. But... I wonder with teams like the Bears, with teams like the Packers, there's a plenty of teams that don't have any receivers. Mm -hmm. I think this guy might get picked up. But for me, it's just the inconsistencies because he has the talent. He's a first-round pick. But it goes to show, like, how much leeway you get as a first-round pick. Like, you're just going to keep getting opportunities. And he he wasn't bad. He was not bad here. I said last year at the end of the season, I said he shouldn't be just put on the team for what happened last year, but he should have the opportunity to earn his spot this year. And he did. He had an opportunity. It just didn't work out for him. And the Jags got better at the wide receiver position overall as a group. So that plays into it. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, Brent, this one comes in from a, a listener, Brent Martineau. Uh, he said, question for the broadcast on, why do the Panthers keep taking players the Jags don't want? <laughs> so that, that one comes in from a listener, Brent A.S. Jax. Uh, it's a good question, man. And uh, giving up players that uh, will help out the Jags, like Dan Arnold. I, you know, I don't, hey, I, I don't know. Again, uh, you know, the head, listen, I won't even call him by his name. The head coach of the Carolina Panthers wow. is on okay. the one of the hottest seats. He really is. It's, it's almost urban level hot, but it's but he hasn't done this, the stupid stuff off the field. So I don't want to equate you know, Matt Rule, you know, to Urban Meyer. But but the level of hot seat, he's there. 
You know, and I and I don't know how much in the decision making process he has at this point in time in picking up people and um, picking up players and uh, forming together. You know, who's going to be on this final fifty three? Um, but you know, they think that they can make things work. And honestly, Casey, I say it every time. I, I've said it multiple times this off season. For the first three weeks, when Christian McCaffrey was a hundred percent, the team looked like world beaters. Huh? It's Sam true. Darnold looked like he was the guy, uh, and he just needed a new, you know, environment. Um, and the team was three and zero, and so that's why I texted you when you were like, "Congrats on your uh, on your new whiteout." With the sarcasm, I could read it with the sarcasm that you meant behind that text message. Um, listen, if Christian McCaffrey can stay healthy for fifteen of the seventeen games and be at like eighty percent in most of those games, who knows what that means for the rest of the guys around him? He made a quarterback look amazing. OK, he, did. he can make a wide out. He can take focus away and make a wide out, you know, have a little less pressure on on them that coupled with, you know, like DJ Moore and whatnot. I think that they got an idea of how they want to use them. But I don't know why they keep picking up players that the Jaguars have shown that, hey, look, this may not be who, yeah. who we think they are. So that's yeah. a good question, though. Yeah. So thank you for the listener questions uh, from Brad Martin. It was another, a jab, but it was a question. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, another one on the. <laughs> Just on the comment, I think this is more for Brent, and okay. uh, they don't realize we're on, but I'll I'll take it. Uh, it's not really a question. You just wonder if this is in the works before Treadwell was cut. I do wonder that. Mm. But at the same time, when it's one player for a conditional pick, like how much was there to work out? Right. <laughs> you know, like, I feel right. like they had a pretty good idea about it uh, before they did it. By the way, that's going to stem off a bigger conversation with Carolina because I'm I'm interested in that. It's also going to stem for other moves around the NFL because Jimmy G, that decision has been made. He'll The spoiler alert is, I'm not going to keep you hanging, the spoiler alert is he'll stay in San Francisco for another year. We'll tell you more about that. But I do want to give you this, if you are just jumping in. Uh, we mentioned Laquan Treadwell was cut or released or waived, whichever you prefer, but the Jags say officially released. But uh, was not the only move in terms of names you know. Rudy Ford, the safety, also released by the Jags. Uh, Raquel Armstead was waived, if you prefer that, over-released. The running back, that leaves them with Snoop Connor, James Robinson, Travis Etienne, which I think there's going to be a move made there. I have no inside information. I think they bring in a veteran. I don't know if it's Sony Michelle. I don't know if it's Kenny and Drake. I don't know who it is. I think they make a move at running back. That's just kind of my guess. Uh, a couple others, Benji Franklin, Casey McDermott, Brandon Rusnick, Chappelle Russell, Tyrell Adams, all uh, being waived and or released by the Jags today. So those are the moves, but obviously the highlighted ones are the ones, if you're watching on the stream in the title, Rudy Ford, Raquel Armstrad, and then uh, Treadwell. And then during the show, we find out the trade of LaVisca Chanel. Busy day. Busy day here in Jacksonville. And it's only going to get busier. It's only going to get busier by tomorrow at 4 when we know – the official roster who will make it and then what happens from there because as we said earlier we'll say it i'll say it again though just because you're on the 53 and you're number 53 of 53 I, that doesn't mean you're safe because when we see some of these other guys getting cut and not making rosters jags had the first waiver claim right yeah so other moves can be made and probably will be made i'm telling you they're gonna do something at running back i have a strong feeling about that a lot of the other positions though I don't know, man. Like, O-line, if you keep Walker Little, you feel pretty good there. You feel pretty good a lot of places. I just wonder what other moves could be made outside of running back and maybe wide receiver depth. We'll have to see how it plays out. I talked about Jimmy G. We'll tell you about the new contract. We'll talk about the Carolina Panthers, Brian Middleton's Carolina Panthers, LaVisca Chenault's new home. Do I, do I dare say they could make the playoffs, Brian Middleton? Who, the Panthers? Yeah, the Panthers. That's the NFC, sure. There you sure, go. that's fine. And that's exactly why. So we talk about all that. Start, bench, remove also before we get out of here at 7 o'clock. By the way, coming up at 7 o'clock, inside Seminole Football with Mike Norvell. FSU 1-0 on the season after a 40-point win on Saturday. We break it all down over the next hour. Action Sports Shacks Overtime. Brian Middleton, Casey Kurtz. We'll be right back. Board on the Dream 18 cards. We sold out of Dream 18 cards and we're raising more funds for local charities through the Dream 18. Coming up next, it's a Dream 18 golf tournament, September 19th at the Golf Club at Southampton. Registration is now open. We'd love you to be a part of it. 
buy a foursome or maybe just play on an individual basis. Maybe it's a T sign. Get your company involved. Here's how you register. Action Sports Shacks, Dream18.com. September 19th at the Golf Club of Southampton. Play on our Dream18, Action Sports Shacks, Dream18.com. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Scattered showers and storms with some heavy downpours into this evening. Party cloudy later tonight will drop into low to mid 70s. A mix of clouds and sun for your Tuesday. Scattered showers and storms continue most numerous in the afternoon with highs in the upper 80s. From the CBS 47 at Fox 30 Action News, Jack's First Alert Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where right now you can get five years zero interest financing with nothing down. If you work remote, Staples has you covered. Stylish office decor to turn my finished basement into a complete workspace solution. Staples has you covered. A desk that's all business, but not too businessy. Staples has you covered. And now at Staples, take up to 50% off select chairs and up to 75% off select desks. Plus, with 25% off Staples furniture support, we'll assemble your new furniture and guarantee it against wear and defects. Explore solutions for your remote workspace at Staples. Ends 9-3 in-store only. Mr. Clean. Of course I use Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to clean tough messes off my stovetop and bathtub. But then I discovered I can also use it to easily clean my patio furniture and even my shoes. I'm hooked. And when wipes won't cut it, I use Magic Eraser Sheets. They're thin and flexible erasers, perfect for everyday messes, like gunk on my counters and sinks. They really are magical. The reviews are in. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and Sheets make cleaning look easy. If you've been involved in a slip and fall accident and are not sure of your legal options, call the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine at 904-600-4000. That's 904-600-4000 and take back control of your life. Office in Jacksonville. Buying a home? Then you've got a lot on your mind. Getting pre-approved, your credit score, closing costs, now rising rates? Phew, it's so much. But with Rocket, you get an advantage. You can lock your rate for 90 days while you search for a home. That's three months to shop for your dream home without worrying about rising rates because yours is totally safe. And it gets even better. Let's say rates drop within three years of your home purchase. You'll get exclusive savings from Rocket Mortgage when you refinance to a new lower rate. So what are you waiting for? Rocket has your back if rates rise in the short term and if they fall in a few years. So you can lock it and drop it with Rocket, your partner, to help you buy today and be certain about tomorrow. That's the Rocket Advantage. Lock your rate now. Call 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. That's 8337-ROCKET or go to therocketadvantage.com. Must lock purchase rate between 719-22 and 930-22. Call 1-8337-ROCKET for coverage. These terms and conditions. Equal housing lender license in all 50 states and unless consumer access. Org number 3030. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. You can watch us on CBS 47 and Fox 30. You can listen right here on ESPN 690. And you can subscribe to our YouTube and podcast, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks. Watch, listen, subscribe. Action Sports Jacks Overtime ESPN 690. It's a Monday and it's a busy one. LaVisca Chanel on his way to the Carolina Panthers after the Jacks trade him today. Big move of the day here in Jacksonville as they continue to cut down the roster to get to the acceptable number. By the way, I see you on Facebook. I'll relay your message to Brent Martineau uh, about the Panthers. Uh, I'm not him, though, so I will um, I'll relay that message and let him know. How you feel? Brian Middle Middleton, Carolina Panthers fan. I don't know if he Jaguar feels that. Sh- fan. I don't know if he feels Panthers, that strongly Panthers about fan. it. You know what I mean? Don't you know? Tell my whole resume. That's your tell whole, my resume. whole resume, please. South Carolina Gamecocks fan. Yikes! There we go. Georgia, Southern. I would try to say what fan. I mean, what team you're a fan of? But we got till Friday. Do we? Undecided. The season started. Yeah, not for every team. You going to that Utah game? Nah, I forgot to put in. No. Anyway, we continue on with the show though. Uh... LaVisca Chanel traded the big story of the day. The other big story outside of Jacksonville in the NFL is Jimmy G as players continue to get cut from their teams. Jimmy G is not one who's going to get cut. The quarterback that we all, like when this offseason started, right? And all the quarterbacks that ended up moving, Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson, got all these quarterbacks that move. The one that we all thought and I think knew was going to move was Jimmy G. And today we find out after all of this, Jimmy G does not leave. Jimmy G will stay in San Francisco. Mm-mm-mm. And according to Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter, and pretty much everybody on Twitter, 
he will be and I quote the highest paid backup quarterback in the league. I believe the base salary is 6.5 million dollars. Has the ability to earn up to 19 million dollars if he plays and plays well and you know what happens with that. And it will take him through this year and the next year he can walk, be a free agent and go whoever and wherever pays the most or he wants to play. But there's got to be more to this. Brian Middleton, we were just talking about it in the break. Trey Lance, the third pick in the draft, sat all last year except a couple of games he did play uh, due to Jimmy G being out. But, I, I, one, I'm stunned Jimmy G didn't go somewhere. Like, I'm stunned that he was never traded. There's so many teams that still make sense to this moment. And yep. it never happened. And now we know he's staying for a year as a backup. How do you read it? You think there's something there? This is the worst possible uh -oh scenario for Trey Lance this this is the worst thing that could have happened of all of the things that you would put on the table and you'd be like okay Trey listen we know that you know if you're a competitor and you know you're just like you, you want to play such a high draft pick big hype behind you we know you want to play from day one right learn on the road I mean learn you know right there live live action we get that but you got to sit out that's not ideal for most players today, even though there was a time Casey Curse before you were born, right? That was yeah. the that was the thing. It Listen, was. you get drafted. Honestly, you're not playing that first season. And and to be real with you, we'll see we'll see about the second season. But you're going to sit, and you need to learn. You got to get acclimated to the speed of a game. But that's that's not so much right now. You know what I mean? So, but that's not ideal. I get that. And then you could look at potentially getting injured, or maybe just not performing as well as you want. But I think the fact that you have a guy who, by all accounts, the majority of the team liked the players, and he's had success there. Like, nearly the pinnacle of success, but very close by getting to the Super Bowl and getting to conference championship games. You got him to a point where he's like, you know what? No, nah, I'm going to stick around for another year. The first year you're going to start. And if you have any semblance, and I mean any semblance, you, he's on a short lease. I don't care what Kyle Shanahan says. I don't care what, what, uh, what John Lynch says. He's going to have to be on a, short, a shorter leash than what he would have been if Jimmy G was gone, right? Yeah. Of course, he's going to have mistakes. I think everybody's expecting that, including the players and coaches and whatnot. He's still very young, and he's starting this, you know, brand new, right? I mean, not brand new, but he's not going to – He's going to have a lot of mistakes. He's just going to, right? But sure. to have Jimmy G holding the clipboard, huh, ready to go? Let, what if they, Casey, what if they start off two and four and he doesn't look good in those first six games? I'll be honest, and, I don't think he gets to that point. Exactly, exactly. And I think that for Jimmy G, it was a shrewd move. Let me heal up a little bit more. I tell you what, and if you need me, you know I'm here. Yeah. I've worked with these guys already. You know I work. You know I work. Yeah, I've shown that I can do this. I may not drag the, you know, the other 21 guys, you know, to the mountaintop, but I don't mess it up for them more times than that. And that, there's a place for me on this team, and I've shown that I can do this. And I got a couple Super Bowl chips anyway. I mean, granted, I wasn't the, you didn't the play quarterback all, there. Yeah. But, hey, hey, it still shined the same. The Marines still shine the same, Casey Kurtz. It's true. I'll give so you that. And that's, that's where I'm going with it. What you got? I, I love what you said there because people say a lot of things about Jimmy G, right? I don't think anybody's lining up to say he's a top whatever quarterback in the league. And I've been arguing with this, and I'm just like, are you dumb? Jimmy G was the quarterback of a team that went to the Super Bowl. And I, I said that a certain way. I didn't say he led them to the Super Bowl. Right. They, but they in no way, shape, or form won in spite of Jimmy G. Jimmy G was not out there throwing picks in, in bad situations. Jimmy G helped them get to the Super Bowl. He didn't Ryan Tannehill you. Correct. In the Super Bowl, it wasn't fantastic, right? It was. And then the next year, Jimmy G goes off game. By the way, the one that you're the one going in the Super Bowl, it's like 45 to nothing. They killed him. Yeah. They demolished him. Okay, so the disrespect for Jimmy G is wild. But to your point, you didn't dis disrespect him, by the way. I agree with everything you said. No, he's got to be some type of leader. Because those guys played for him and got him to the Super Bowl. When Jimmy G got there, the Jags found that out in 17. It's when he got there and went on that like 6-0 and run with them. Mm -hmm. They were horrible. Jimmy G comes in there winning games. Since then, he's won over that team. I think Trey Lance, and I think most people would agree with me, has the ability to be a better player. 
He probably has better tools. He's more mobile. All of those things. But to your point, if he doesn't perform, there's going to be a lot of people that turn on him. Maybe not the coaching staff. That locker room might be lining up at Kyle Shanahan's door saying, this dude took us to the Super Bowl. What are we doing? The fans might get into it. Might. 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 And here's what's interesting. You said it. Two and four and they go to a bye. What happens? I'll, I'll do you one better. They start the season with the Chicago Bears and the Seattle Seahawks. Two teams that we think could be bad enough to have the number one pick in the draft. Trey Lance has to win those games. Don't let Trey Lance look bad against the Bears and the Seahawks. Because then what? If we think those teams are as bad as they are and he can't beat them, Jimmy G chance. I promise you. I promise you. It's going to be brutal. And, and then what does that do for the confidence? Not, uh, yeah, Lance. I mean, you kill it. And now, are you wait? Did you just waste a whole draft? Like it's, a third overall pick that you traded up to get. It is a. It is the worst case scenario. Only for I mean, I don't mean only for Trey Lance or Shanahan. Like for the organization, but not for Jimmy G. Like I said, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy's like, hey, listen, I gotta heal up. I'm playing with house money at this point, even though six six and a half million for. Jimmy G, who should be a starting QB, I, you know, yeah. God bless him for taking that amount even for one year. Because you're right. There are plenty of situations right now where he could have gotten a whole bag. He could have gotten that multiple times over. And so, uh, but for Trey Lance, I hope, I hope that this kind of pressure, because that's what you want, right? Especially from your starters and then especially from someone you want to be your franchise QB for the next decade. You want him to have this kind of pressure and be like, good. Now, now let me show you. Now, keep the clipboard over there for this whole season and make sure that you're calling the plays in when I look over. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you have my pictures ready when I come over to sit down on the bench after we just scored another touchdown. So that's what you want from Trey Lance. So, you know, hopefully for him and his people, you know, they, they, he rises to the occasion. But, boy, it's going to be tough. It's a tough go. I know his heart dropped. I don't care what anybody tells me. I don't care what he says. Yeah. I know he was like, man. It when he saw that i'll give you that and then just to kind of go into the schedule a little more two two games at the top i told you about you got okay. the broncos and the rams it's gonna be tough there's no other way around it mm-hmm. then you got the panthers and the falcons so in they your should. scenario in your scenario mm-hmm. if he is two and four that means you've lost to teams you should have beat absolutely and san francisco like here in jacksonville i don't know if we can feel that i'm not from san francisco or any of that but they're good. They think they're good enough to win the Super Bowl. And they should. They've been, they went to a Super Bowl. They struggled. They traded for Trey Lance. Last year, they win a couple of playoff games. They're that good. Why couldn't they come out the NFC? Why couldn't they if come out? Exactly. If I'm a fan of theirs, if I'm a player on there with the success, like you just said, the past couple seasons, and not too huge a move outside of the QB position, why not? So. And I tell you what, Trey hey, Lance. Here you go, Trey. Here are the keys. It's going to get tight quick because you're a better team than the Chicago Bears. You're a better team than the Seattle Seahawks. You're a better team than the Carolina Panthers. You're a better team than the Atlanta Falcons. Who we got to pay to get that lineup down here in Jacksonville? Who we got to pay to get that, that first four lineup like that? Hey, I'm not mad at Commander's Colts to start it off at least. You're not mad at Colts? Okay. In Jacksonville, no. They haven't uh, won in Jacksonville in 10,000 yeah, right. years. You're right, yeah. On the road, I'd be like, come on, bro, because yeah. then you got to go to L.A., then you got to go to Philly, which I still think they win the Philly game, but – um, it, it, it's crazy stuff. By the way, if I'm Justin Fields in this scenario, boy, it's not a, even a Justin Fields re- revenge game. But if I'm Justin Fields, I'm like, you took this man over me. Over me? I'm, I'm going to make you suffer week one. Because uh-huh. let Justin Fields destroy Trey Lance, by the way. Like, let him blow his numbers out of the water. Then see what happens. It's going to be. You got that headline plus the Jimmy G. Holy cow, I would not want to be Trey Lance. And here's the thing. If you've been listening to the show a long time, you understand that I've invested hundreds of dollars in Trey Lance cards. We're now looking at thousands of dollars in Trey Lance cards. I really need this guy to be good, right? I don't want to be out a couple G's. So I'm not rooting for the demise. I'm just saying it's going to get tight quick for Trey Lance. It's a long way from North Dakota State. I'm not saying that it's, you know, I'm not saying he can't handle it the big time. I'm just saying it's a long way from there, man. You know what I mean? And again, I hope that, I hope he does rise to the occasion. Yeah. I, I really do. I I don't want to see anybody, regardless if they're on the Jags or not, you know, just fail completely, especially when they have all of these probably aspirations and then they have all these uh, superlatives thrown onto them. And, you know, I mean, because he's, he did look good in college. I mean, he 
he did impress enough people. He has worked hard to a certain degree. But w what I hope is uh, for him is that it doesn't fracture this locker room. Like you said, you don't want the players, like a faction of the players yeah. who are just Jimmy G guys, just like, listen, we already losing. You saw what we did last season. Put him in. Go ahead, you know? Yeah. So it's, that's it's where it's at. So it's, it's where it's at. Jimmy G staying in San Francisco. LaVisca Chenault heading to Carolina. Those are the two biggest stories of the day. Jags in the news. Trading second-round pick of a couple years ago, LaVisca Chanel, to Carolina, who all of a sudden might be wide receiver rich, depending on how you feel about Robbie Anderson. I knew, on... I knew you weren't going to let a whole show go by with the, without bringing him up. He's still there. He ain't retired yet. He ain't. I thought he retired. I thought Baker came in, got an address, got a real estate agent, and Robbie was like, I'm out. Ain't that what he said he was going to do? It's what he said. I'll tell you for a quick second, Brian. We were like, is Robbie Anderson in on this deal? When we when nothing was coming through and we were like, what's the compensation? No. He's not, if you're listening. We're not getting Robbie Anderson. Thank God. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> but I second that. At first we were like, thinking. hey, but now I kind of wonder, but here's the thing. I said this when it when it came through. DJ Moore is special. DJ yes. Moore is a number one. Yeah. Robbie Anderson's a deep threat. So is Terrace Marshall. Like, that's Robbie Anderson's game. I'm not saying he actually is. But I'm telling you, like, that's what his game is. Go long, make the play, right? He's still bad. It's fine. Just trust me. And what I'm getting at is LaVisca Chanel is giving them something they don't have. Like, Robbie Anderson's not throw it behind the line of scrimmage and let him make a play. Because right. he's like, I mean, he, he's just not big like that. LaVisca's big like that. So for the Panthers, I get it because they're getting something that they don't have. I tell you what, don't let McCaffrey be healthy though. That's what I'm talking about. Now you come into the now you come into the light, Casey Kurtz. I'm I, it's a bad like here's the thing. If three NFC playoff teams come out of the South, what in the world? Because the Bucks going. Yeah, I'm about to say the what Saints in the world? probably going. The Saints going. I don't know. I don't know. Could the Panthers go too? Panthers could go. But you got Saints one with, with the surety that you just have, you know, that, that's one. That's NFC's one is bad, man. That. The bottom of the NFC, like that middle yeah. tier. No, it is. You know, we going to find out. Star Venture move on the other side. We'll be right back. Never paint your house again. Hey, Jay. At Rhino Shield, we talk about protecting your home from the harsh Florida weather because we have seen what happens to those cracks when they get ignored. Stucco cracks are more than just superficial. Without repair, they can allow water to get into the walls, causing water damage, mold, and even wood rot. And Jay, some of our customers have been tied up in litigation for up to four years trying to be made whole again. Rhino Shield your home now before you have to go to litigation and you'll never have to paint again. And after 22 years in business, our customers continue Continue to trust us to protect and beautify their homes with the most scientifically advanced coating. With our help, you can have pride in your home again. Call us for one year same as cash, 25% off, and a 25-year warranty. Call 904-519-5055 or visit us at rhinoshieldjacks.com. And remember, with Rhino Shield, you'll never have to paint again. Rhino Shield. What I would tell people is that you don't have to be in pain anymore. Meet Dr. Justin Garzone, medical director at QC Kinetics, the nation's leader in using advanced regenerative medicine to give people lasting relief from chronic joint pain. What's exciting is that I get to see patients with our treatments actually get better. Have you discovered regenerative medicine? It's an all-natural way to use the power of your own body to restore and repair damaged tissue. We're using things that are already in your body, and we're simply concentrating them and then put it in an area of your body that you're having the pain so that your body can start the regenerative process, the healing process. For pain in your knees, hips, back, shoulders, don't assume the old treatments are the only treatments. Avoid drugs and surgery and get lasting relief. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 
If you've been thinking about a new Toyota, then stop thinking and start buying during the national sales event going on now at Arlington Toyota. And check this out. Arlington's got 500 new Toyotas available, and that makes now the perfect time to slip into a new ride. Plus, you get 30 days to love your new purchase or exchange it and a lifetime warranty with your new Toyota purchase. So stop thinking and start buying. Even better, start your engine. It's the national sales event at Arlington Toyota. Shop in person, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at ArlingtonToyota.com today. Hey mama, this is your sign. This is your purpose. This is the time. This is the beginning. This is the hour. This is your connection. This is your power. Let's connect at hey-mama.org. Brought to you by the Northeast Florida Healthy Star Coalition and the Kids Hope Alliance. In Florida, it's not if the storms are coming, it's when the storms are coming. And that's why you need the chief. Jacksonville's chief meteorologist, Mike Burrish, with a proven track record of keeping local families safe. Rain, heat, hurricanes, flooding, tornadoes. We get it all. Just more reasons why you need the chief. Chief meteorologist, Mike Burrish, backed by the First Alert Weather Team. Only on CBS 47 and Fox 30 Action News Jax. Many of us have been fortunate to have someone along the way take an interest in our career or another aspect of our life. To a small business owner, it is important to have an objective voice to provide advice or guidance to help identify customers, answer a legal question, or review finances. As the nation's premier organization supporting small businesses, SCORE is always looking for people willing to offer their time and expertise to mentor current or aspiring entrepreneurs. If you're interested in joining our team, go to the volunteer tab at jacksonville.score.org and start sharing your knowledge today. For survivors of domestic violence in Duval and Baker counties, Hubbard House provides free, confidential emergency shelter and services. Call our 24-hour hotline at 904-354-3114. Now that the kids are back in school, I can see the beating the house has taken. The carpets, the tile grout, the area rugs, and even the sofa needs a good cleaning. If your home needs some cleaning, give Zero Res a call. Right now, get 50% off tile and grout ceiling. Zero Res spelled forward or backwards. It's the right way to clean. The Labor Day event from Dell Technologies is here. End the summer strong by starting up a new season of productivity. Your business upgrade begins with up to 48% off top-rated laptops, like Vostro, taking performance to the next level with 12th Gen Intel Core processors. It's time to push your growing business even further. What's next for you? Upgrade today by calling 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. It's the Blitz Scoreboard Show every Friday night at 9 p.m. on ESPN 690. Join Brent Martineau, Casey Kurtz, and the Hall of Famer Kevin Sullivan for scores, analysis, interviews, and live video of games on the ESPN 690 social media platforms. I know y'all heard that promo. The Blitz Scoreboard Show, Friday night. It's high school football red zone. You like football? Yeah, you're listening to this show. Check. You like listening to this show? Uh-huh. You're listening. Check. There you go. Me, Brad Martineau, the Hall of Famer, Kevin Sullivan. It's high school red zone. We're literally showing you the games live on the stream. You can see the future of the sport. Scoring touchdowns. Game of the week is on. You got to check us out. 9 to 10, about 9 to 10, 25. Then Brent runs downstairs. And then new this year, uh, Friday Night Blitz, the TV show. Yes, the program. It's on Fox 30 from 1030 at 1030 and then on CBS 47 at about 1115. You ain't got to worry about all that. Don't, don't go on TV. You could, but it's going to be on Twitter. We're going to put it on Twitter as well. So uh, if you lock into the Blitz Scoreboard show at 9, you can just keep rolling with us all the way through the show. You get all the high school information you need to know. If you're a scout, you can watch. If you're a fan, you can watch. If you're a parent, you can watch. And if you don't care either way, you might as watch. well watch too. Because what else are you watching on so a Friday night? So they can learn night? how to care, Casey Kurtz. I'm just Educational saying. Educational purposes. I'm just saying, right? I, I don't have a kid playing high school football. I do work here. That would be impressive if you did. It would be, be kind of scary. It would be actually that. terrifying, <laughs> to be honest with you. But the point of the story is you can watch, even if you have a son, a daughter, somebody involved, you can still watch. And that's what we want. Anyway, Action Sports Checks Overtime ESPN 690. Brad Middleton, the broadcast on on the ones and twos. Casey Kurtz on a busy day. 
LaVisca Chenault on his way to Carolina. You probably know by now he will not be a member of the Jags. And it just continues to stab, stamp home how bad a draft it was in 2020. First three picks, C.J. Henderson, Carolina. Gone. Caleb Von Chason on the bench. LaVisca Chenault, Carolina. So what you're trying to tell me is so, Caleb Von needs to get a real estate agent in Charlotte. I would, like, hey, listen. <laughs> I would consider it. <laughs> And meanwhile, the Panthers have secured uh, everyone's number one pick from a couple years ago. There we go. Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, C.J. Henderson. Tough. You hear me? Tough. You know, they just they said if we can't draft them then, we'll just get them three years later. It's fine. It is no biggie. But start bench or move, Brian Middleton, what do we got? All right, uh, Casey, you know that the um, that NFL uh, TV, they actually uh, released their last 10 of their top 100 They've yeah. been doing that for the past. Yeah, so it's an interesting list right here. So uh, the sport questions will be uh, centered around that Okay. for this particular star bench remove, and then we'll do our regular weird stuff for the other ones. Okay, first up, Casey Kurtz, NFL Top 100. Yep. Tom Brady, Aaron Donald, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go probably with the consensus here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to start Tom Brady. This is where things can get wild. I'm going to bench Aaron Rodgers. We can't be swinging around him. It's Aaron Donald. Might be recency bias, but for my money, I know Aaron Donald is disruptive. Aaron Rodgers, bro. So I'm going to remove Aaron Donald from this scenario. You big dummy. Maybe. All right. Maybe. Let's can't find no Aaron Rodgers. I said it. I called him a D-tackle. Okay. All right. I did it. You can't find you Aaron Rodgers. They say Patrick Mahomes a better Aaron Rodgers than Aaron Rodgers. And he ain't even on this particular start bench. Which is wild, by the way. I know you're going to get to it, so I won't spend too much time on it, but what are we doing? Why is he not higher on the list? Anyway, I digress. By the way, Aaron Donald, don't come at me, bro. I don't need to be hit with a helmet after this. It definitely don't come after me. His name is Casey Kurtz. It huh? is. That's true. At K Kurtz on Twitter, you can follow up. <laughs> what we got? Uh, consoles, Nintendo 64, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo Wii. Tell you what, first of all. There's a right answer. There is a right answer, and it's the Nintendo GameCube. We starting it. The Nintendo GameCube, listen, I know that the sales were not great. I know people didn't love it. I love the Nintendo GameCube. I will stand out on the limb for the Nintendo GameCube. If the Nintendo GameCube committed a serious crime, not the people that made it, I'm talking to strictly the system, and the Nintendo GameCube came to me and said, Casey, I need some help. I'm like, I got you, bro. That's how much I love the That's Nintendo terrible. GameCube. Shut up, Chuck. What do you know? <laughs> Uh, I will then bench. I got to I gotta finish this. Yeah. I got to bench. Nintendo 64 is before my time. I don't really like the Wii, though, but you can play GameCube games on it, so I'll bench the Wii and remove the 64. This guy right here. I, I, know, that's unpop I know it's unpopular. Back to the NFL Top 100. All Co right. Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor, TJ Watt. You're going to have to start TJ Watt, to be honest with you. Now, that's the right answer. You gotta play no sound. I know that's because the right there is no sound because it wasn't the right answer right there. Uh, we start right TJ Watt. We start in TJ Watt. Uh, Cooper Cup or Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, we'll bench. Uh, ooh. ooh, Jonathan Taylor. We'll bench Jonathan Taylor. So we'll remove Cooper Cup. You know what? I remember. I remember last season you were like uh, fantasy football. You, I, I Cooper had Cooper Cup, Cup and yeah. it was just thirty points. Twenty-five. It was, it was incredible. Thirty-seven. On my way to not winning a championship. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, your future. By Jonathan Casey Taylor, Kurt. I might have won. What yeah, do we got? Your future, Casey Kurtz. Yeah, a yeah. five course meal cooked by Gordon Ramsay, a one hour conversation with uh, about baseball with Mike Trout, or a round of golf at Augusta with Tiger Woods. Your future, things that are going to happen anyway. Just start bench removing. Start. Ugh. Probably start golf with Tiger. That'd be pretty lit. Uh, I'm a bench Trout. And then I'll have to remove Gordon Ramsay, unfortunately. Yeah. I like food too much, guys. Here's the thing. I love food too, but like I'm I'm fine. Like, don't get me wrong, Gordon. I'm sure you make fantastic food. Uh, not to compare it to the McChicken, but like I'd be all right with a couple of McChickens. You know what I'm saying? You're not hard to please. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Uh, let, let's do a couple more, Casey Curse. We got to get out of here. Yeah, NFL yeah, yeah. Top 100. Back to that. Devontae Adams, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Ramsey. Should I do it? I, I don't even. <laughs> yeah, do it. I want to pull this clip, so do it. Yeah. Oh, God. He's going to come after me. Start Patrick Mahomes. Oh, ben no. yeah. Bench Devontae oh. Adams. Remove Jalen Ramsey. There I, I, you go. I did there it. There you go. Hey. 
I did it for the people. I did it for the people. I wouldn't have done that. But, you know, you the GM. I did it for the people, man. Got the audacity to be mad at Trent Baalke doing GM moves like that. All right, Casey. uh, Next up, better you than me. Uh, Tackle Derrick Henry head on, full speed. (laughs) No. One kidney shot from Mike Tyson, who is now 56. Okay. Is he 56 in the scenario? Yeah. He still rocked that guy on the plane, though. He did. Okay. Yeah. Or being hit by a fastball by a reliever, Cardinals reliever Jordan Hicks. Yeah, he throws like 103. 103.7. Which one, Casey Kurtz? Are you going to start, bench, and then remove? Oh, goodness. I... All right, this is going to be odd. Wait, I'm starting... Wait, the wait, one wait. that is the worst to you. Oh, Derrick Henry. Oh. I, don't, I don't want that. Oh, okay. I mean, you'd have pads on, too. A little CTE. A little CTE. I would die. He would run me over. They don't call him the Yuli Bulldozer for nothing. I mean, if if that shot hits just right, that the, kidney ruptures, it's game over anyway, Casey Kurtz. Which is why I'm benching Mike Tyson. I don't want that smoke either. If I had to pick the three, give me Jordan Hicks. If he accidentally hits you with the helmet on, it's over anyway, Casey Gertz. That's that's a okay. All right. It's a risk you're willing to take. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the smoke with Derrick Henry. I don't want the smoke with Mike Tyson if he's 50, 60, 70, 80. I'll take my chance with Jordan Hicks. Wow. There's a chance he misses also, by the way. Wow, Casey Kurtz, I'm going to wrap it up there, man. That's it for Start Bench Remove. Start Bench Remove on a Monday. One more segment to go, and then we got inside Seminole football. Stick with us. We'll be right back. And if you're struggling with erectile dysfunction or PE and frustrated taking pills that don't work, Prime Men's Medical Center offers breakthrough medical treatments that effectively treat your problem. 98% of patients experience immediate results during their first office visit. And for a limited time, your initial consultation and first treatment are completely free. Listen to a specialist in men's health. I'm Dr. Rabinsky. The physicians at Prime Men's Medical Center offer the most advanced treatments that eliminate ED and PE. Now men are lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer, regardless of age or medical history. Guys, to eliminate your frustration in the bedroom, call Prime Men's Medical Center now to take advantage of this exclusive limited time offer. Your initial consultation and first treatment are totally free, and you'll see instant results right in the office. Call now, 904-664-8214. 904 664 8214. That's 904 664 8214. Hey, Jay. At Rhino Shield, we talk about protecting your home from the harsh Florida weather because we have seen what happens. Stucco cracks without repair, they can allow water to get into the walls, causing water damage, mold, and even wood rot. And, Jay, some of our customers have been tied up in litigation for up to four years trying to be made whole again. Rhino Shield your home now. Or you have to go to litigation. And remember, with Rhino Shield, you'll never have to paint again. All offers are with approved credit and data conjunction. See you for complete details. Make this the summer event. Drive the car, truck, or SUV you really want and save. Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Westside. Get a new Ram truck or Jeep Gladiator and enjoy 0% financing. We've got the right vehicle in stock waiting for you to drive it home. Compass, Grand Cherokee, Charger, Challenger. Our selection can't be beat. Jacksonville Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Westside. I-295 and Commonwealth Avenue. Westside. Children's Home Society of Florida's 38th Annual Caring Chefs is back. Join us Sunday, October 23rd at the Glass Factory and try samples from the First Coast Finest Chefs, Sommeliers, and Craft Brewers, all for a good cause. Buy tickets today at chsfl.org slash chefs. If you've been involved in a car accident and are not sure of your legal options, call the law offices of Anna Jar and Levine at 904-600-4000. That's 904-600-4000 and take back control of your life. Office in Jacksonville. Hey, everybody, it's Brett Morneau from Action Sports Shacks. There's a good chance you have a smart speaker, so use it with the ESPN 690. Stay up to date on the Jags and all things sports by telling Alexa or Google to play ESPN 690. It's as easy as that. Make sure you listen weekdays, 3 until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks Overtime ESPN 690. Couple minutes to go inside Seminole football is on deck. Mike Norvell, 1 and 0. Don't call it a streak. Don't call it a Please comeback. Don't. Oh, uh, 
Yeah, neither one of those. You're right. Those are the truest words you've spoken all show. <laughs> neither one of those are true. Florida State want to know with a a football game I'm excited to see on Sunday night. No work on Monday. Hey, Brian, we're off on Monday, by the way. Um, uh, also I'm to, not, the, to the oh, – well, So, uh, you know, uh, I got a – what do you call it? A compensatory date? Not a compensatory. We just talked about picks. What do they call it when you – uh like you, you can't get the day off, so they got to give you a different one off. Oh, uh, a free a, day. It starts with a C. Yeah, it's a free day. It starts with a C. I oh. don't know. Well, I won't be here. Um, so Sunday night, I'm prepared to watch FSU in its entirety. I'm excited to see it. They play LSU. Uh, you can listen. ESPN 690, right here. Uh, listen to the game as they take on the LSU Tigers. Go Tigers! Without Ed Orgeron, the uh, debut for Brian Kelly. So we'll see if he can uh, flounder. You gonna have an accent or not? Probably. The uh, it depends half-time. on if they win or. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, halftime. That's a good call. Depends on the score. Okay. Yeah, probably. If he's feeling himself. If not, he'll just go back into his normal. Uh, FSU probably wins that game. By the way, I just want you to know that. Hmm. Uh, I say probably because I'm not fully sold yet, but I'll be sold by Friday. Uh, anyway, inside Seminole football coming up in just a minute. The big news of the day. Uh, if you are just jumping in, we appreciate you being here. Action Sports Shacks overtime. ESPN six ninety. LaVisca Chenault heading to the Carolina Panthers after two seasons here in Jacksonville. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to say surprising, but it, di- it did happen, and that's just what it is. LaVisca Chenault will not be here for the Jags. A polarizing move in terms of I think everyone has an opinion on it. Everybody feels differently about it. I think most people uh, in the chat that I've seen from starting at 3 o'clock until right now, there's been a lot of differing opinions. I did not want the Jags to cut this man. I did not think that was a productive move. Mm -hmm. I said, if you get rid of him and he's not on your roster, you better trade him. And they did. You know what, Casey? We may call you up to the front office more often. I tell you what, they need to. But now the question will be, we don't know fully what the pick is. How does it play out? What does it mean for LaVisca? How does he do in Carolina? All those things yet to be seen. But what we do know is him, Jones, otherwise known as Tim Jones, will be on this team Laquan Treadwell, another wide receiver, will not. So now five wide receivers going into the season as it stands right now. The roster becomes official at four, and by official, I mean cut down to the number. We'll see if any moves happen after that. But Ryan Middleton, when you came into work today, did you think we'd be doing the show and LaVisca Chenault would be traded and then a member of your Carolina Panthers? So uh, I knew that the Panthers were looking for – there, there were a couple of like one of the a couple of articles saying oh sources are saying that the Panthers want some veteran leadership at the wide receiver position so they may make a move. So uh, no, I didn't think that they were going to be getting yeah, you cool. know Visca, what we're gonna call them. But uh, but you know it, too live. It was something that um, that was they were looking to do stuff there and it was kind of out there in the in the media. But uh, but hey, listen man, look like I said, Ramsey Fournette. He could be next. Chenault. Bring us a Super Bowl. Chenault. We won't think about Henderson. That's all I'm saying. We won't think about it. LaVisca Chenault on his way to Carolina. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens with Visca. Hopefully, you know, young players get traded. Sometimes it doesn't work out, fall into a bad headspace. Hopefully none of that. At least from this show, we wish nothing but the best for LaVisca. And, by the way, LaVisca has a silver lab, as I have a silver lab. Huh. His dog's name Icy. Mine's name Blue. That would have been a good little combo. He really would have been. Yeah. But we wish the best for Icy as well. So, LaVisca Chanel on his way to Carolina. And up next, inside Seminole football, Jeff Colhane, the head coach, Mike Norvell. They will get you set from an FSU win and a game against LSU on Sunday. We're back tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. I want to eat a spicy chicken in my Tesla. (laughs) Is it too much to ask? Hope you had an awesome summer. I certainly did.